make it interesting. This is sick. It's a four. <laughs> okay. It's a seven bench. Jason Mercier, he went with his instincts, he made the call. There's the professional level, and there's the Ivy League. Double! Sebastian Pauli coming to terms with what he has just achieved. Nicky Corrigan! Stop it! Two main event cycles! Sebastian Mallet has gone from poker fanboy to poker champion. This is why people love the EDT. Hello and welcome again to London and the PokerStars European Poker Tour. We are back in the UK capital for the first time in eight years, specifically Mayfair, more specifically the Hilton Park Lane, hosted by the Hippodrome Casino for the main event. Hope you enjoyed our coverage of day two. This is day three. We're back again tomorrow to see them play down to the final 16 and on Thursday to play down to the final six. And of course, we'll stream the final table cards up on Friday, October the 28th, live 12.30 local every day, apart from the final day when we're live 30 minutes later. It's James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And Nicholas Walsh. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. You can join in the conversation using the live chat on Twitch or YouTube. Alternatively, use the hashtag PokestarsTV on Twitter. Make sure you check out our Facebook and Instagram pages as well. As we tell you what happened on day two, with the EPT returning to London for the first time since 2014. Day two of the main event, we saw a whole host of familiar faces still in the field. Pokestars Team Pro Ben Sprague and World Series of Poker main event runner-up Darius Sammartino headlined our first feature table. And Sammartino got an early double up through Sprague. But both players were eliminated soon after they moved back out into the field. 2015 Monte Carlo main event winner Adrian Mateos and recent UK IPT London champ Martin Jakobsen built up big stacks on the main stage as the bubble approached. Tim Adams and Pedro Marquez were among the players to exit before the money. Then we saw the eliminations of Lucas Scafini and Eugenio Peralta. That saw the bubble burst before we even had the chance to go hand for hand. Julian Sipborn from France bagged the chip lead at the end of the day. And if we look at the tournament top 10, we can see that Sipborn is the only player with a seven-figure stack. He has a cool million. Pedro Garagnani from Brazil sits in second on 930k. Ben Heath from the UK, the other monster stack with 914k. Big names in the top 10. Players like David Doherty, Ola Shemian, Connor Beresford. This is a star-studded field, and we'll see some of those faces in just a moment. Blinds will be 2,000, 5,000 as we get the action underway here on day three with a 5K big blind ante. And because it is day three, the shot clock is being brought into play. 30 seconds per decision. And with the bubble bursting yesterday, they're into the money. We've cracked open the prize pool of 3.6 million pounds. Everyone guaranteed £9,750. Huge scores for the finalists. Six figures from seventh place upwards with more than half a million for the winner. £664,400. Obviously, we've got to wait a few days until we see players receive those monster sums. And, of course, before we hand over that first prize and the EPT main event trophy. So who made it through day two? Who can we expect to see on day three? We have got the chip leader in the house. With Benjamin Pollock, that is Julian Sitbon. There is Adrian Mateos, a former EPT winner. 
once again we find ourselves following Ramon. This guy is consistent. Henrik Hecklund won the super high roller here in London. Still alive in the main event. As our super high roller reg, Eric Seidel. And Ben Heath, third in chips at the start of the day. Plus, former London finalist Ludovic Geilich and Ola Shemian. Beards all around. Shemian is going to be at our first feature table along with the chip leader, Julian Sipborn, and Ben Heath, who's currently third in chips. Monster stacks at this table, Nick. Absolutely. And as you said, a star-studded situation here in London. I cannot wait to see this Cards of Action. This is what we came for, the best in the world, playing for high stakes. Joe, when there are 80 players remaining in an EPT, it's sometimes a struggle to find a feature table that's an obvious pick. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of choices. I mean, there's a table with Mateus, Jakobsen, and Seidel out there. Maybe we'll give those guys their time under the spotlight on the main stage later on. Let's start with the chip leader. Let's start with Heath and Shemian as well and see where we go. And I don't want to be uh, pessimistic, but hopefully those choices still exist tomorrow because a lot of times we got a lot of choices today and then tomorrow, where, where'd they all go? They're out. Stupid tournament poker. It well, looks like we're ready to get cards in the air. A reminder, the blinds, 2K, 5K, with a 5K big blind ante. No, no, it's okay. And action is going to start on Ben Heath. As you mentioned, James, the shot clocks do come into play today, guys. <laughs> so players do have a limited amount of time to take, and if they need additional time thereafter, they can exchange their time cards, of which they have a limited few, to continue to think at which point their hands will be dead. However, I have to say, so far, really, really quick play. Very, very fast play, snappy. Even on the feature table, we saw a lot of very fast poker, plenty of people making their decisions, and I tend to agree with Mr. Benjamin Sprague on this front. At this level, you should know what you're doing pre-flop without having too much concern about being unbalanced. I think everyone expects you to act quickly um, at this level. Yeah. So Ben Heath is open under the gun with King Jack, and... Roman Harabek from the Czech Republic has a dominating hand, King Queen. He has called the chip leader, Julian Sipborn, in the hijack with 8 3. Should highlight, of course, that if players find 30 seconds too little, they are given five 30 second time bank cards, which they can use at any point to extend the shot clock. They will get five additional cards at the start of every day. And crucially, any cards you don't use. Go in the bag with your chips. You carry them over to the next day. Which? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the chip stacks. So we see <laughs> Thomas Sears falling as well anyway. out of the big blind. We go three way to the flop, and it is domination rotation in Ben Heath's favor. How much I'm going to give you? Everybody catches something except for the best you know hand. <laughs> Yeah, it should be put out here. 7-5 <laughs> off in the big blind. Obviously facing a relatively small uh, open here, of course, as we come to expect from the modern game. But with the addition of those antis in there, you do get a really fantastic price just to flop and try and see if you can't connect in a meaningful way. So, Syverson's got a pair of sevens is checked. Heath has got the best hand is checked. Action on Harabek, who has just king-queen high. Backdoor diamond draw, backdoor straight draw, bets into 40k, 12k. Yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head. Uh, the, the nail on the head there, James. Having the backdoor straight draw and the backdoor flush draw and the two over cards is probably why he's going to continue in a multi-way pot here, despite being um, in a bit of a precar pre precarious situation. Yeah. Excuse me. So, stat trick tells me that Harabek is one of two online qualifiers at this feature table. Now, I think it's fair to say that Roman Harabek, even though he qualified for 530, is an accomplished player, has more than 400k in live earnings. Interestingly, there is another player at this table who we haven't seen in action yet, Risto Parnat, who is in for just 55 and has no recorded live caches. Whoa. Well, one now. That is true. So with Ben Heath calling the bet... From Harabek, we go to the turn, which is the six of hearts. Wait, where'd 7-5 go? Folded. 
That <laughs> seems dumb now. <laughs> Heath checks a second time. Hrabek down to 8%. 45. And bets again. And bets pretty big, Nick. 45 into 64. Yeah, chunky. And I was going to say, I feel like this might be more of a slowdown turn, but I don't see any reason why it continue. Wouldn't be okay as well. I think conventionally, 45. Yeah, not yeah. always the snap barrel card, but um, he might think he's going to get, especially... From that position, you know, some 7x, some 4x, maybe some pocket sixes. What if you're the flop? But obviously now it's making sets on the turn. I don't know. What if you are already trying to tell a story to get a jack to fold? Is that just a, a silly thing to think I, against Ben Heath? I, I think, it, I think it would be. Well, we about to find out. I guess we are, but I, I, I think it would be pretty uh, ambitious <laughs> to try and get a jack. Ambitious is a nice Long way to go with five. <laughs> nice oh oh there man, you, I mean, I'm you could just bet, bet, get there. You, you, you could just bet and just know, like, no, it's always coming. It's not Deep often sucks, people yeah. semi bluff Sometimes a queen. Too much. <laughs> yeah, this time, yeah. Eight, I guess. Eight, two, four, twenty-four. A queen draw. So Harabek. Having well, like the, the 10 flop you and the turn can now money the river and potentially get cold. Yeah. Now you have two <laughs> yeah. yeah, for two whole days people are taking that whole time. <laughs> it's not fair, I feel. 90,000. Three streets with King Queen. I mean, in, in fairness to Hrabek Oh, no, wait, it's well, not three streets. Excuse me, we're check, check on the flop. He, oh, no, he, wait. No, no, no Hrabek. No, sorry, no, sorry. Bad, bad turn, bad river, yeah. <laughs> I think, in fairness to Hrabek, I think he probably had a plan to bluff the river if it became a diamond as well, which might actually have worked to make a jack fold some of the time. But I think he had a plan outside of lift strictly hitting the queen. I just wonder if it came, if it comes like the deuce of spades if he continues here again. That would be a really interesting comparison. Ben Heath has played a time bank card, thinking hard about this. It looks like he already knows what happened. <laughs> He's just like, how? And Heath, fine. Hey, do you want to play a show one? We show one card every hand we win? <laughs> I mean, Why not? It's fun. It's TV table anyway. We're going to know the hand, so. Nobody's up to it. Yeah, but you got to wait for minutes. stacks, and then I'll do it. <laughs> does it change Fair? something? Where, where the stacks change something? It doesn't change I mean, anything. I mean, you can sit on the TV table. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. why. That's why it's more fun, like, if we show one. I'm down if you want. Yeah, I know you're always like this. That's good. Nobody else? I'm okay with it. Three? The fourth one? <laughs> Come on, guys. A little four one? The other player should... If want everyone it. wants, I'll do it. Okay, fourth? No way. That's it. Ben? In? I mean, I just don't want to pressure other people. Who okay, five, three more guys. <laughs> Come on. What if it goes to showdown? Yeah, no. If like you you re you bet on the river, someone fold. That's you what I'm saying. Not just a open yeah. raise, or every hand. Every hand. Okay, let's yeah. do it like this. You start first time, and then we see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I don't care. You show one, and then we show one. Do you choose the card. Right. Which, which one to show? The, the one will lose. The player will lose. Can choose the card. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, you in. But, you say him? Everyone is in. Oh, we six. Just two of you guys. I'm in. You're in? Yeah. Seven? Yeah, no, I'm not able to. <laughs> you say yes? <laughs> oh my god, everyone is up to you. You have to show one already almost? <laughs> okay. That's he fine. can't show it now. He's giving it back. Okay. So the last player in play can shoot the guards. But it's slowing down the game so much, you know? Oh, really? yeah. It's going to be fast. Like you said this, you know how long they Every take with the mic. Kicking? I don't know. Yeah, that is... I don't like every single time, <laughs> even yeah, pre-flop. Open one and then go. <laughs> okay. but like, you know, he goes, you know, with the, are you in? The well, I don't want to bully other people. Oh, it's okay. I'll do it for you. Okay, who else is in? Three, <laughs> three, two, one. Imagine being so profitable at poker that slowing the game down even a little will just equate to you losing thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of pounds. <laughs> So they've agreed to play the show one game. If a hand doesn't go to showdown, the winning player has to reveal one card. 
as Ben Heath finds himself with Ace King in the big blind after Harabek opened under the gun with Ace Nine. I'm expecting a three bet here. Might be on the larger size here. Yeah, I do really like the larger three bet size here. Yeah, pick one, pick one, pick one, fast, pick one, pick one. You pick one of them. No, you, the one we lose is supposed to pick one. It's not. It's easy. It, I agree. It's just way too slow. Yeah. Like if it does it towards the table. Yeah. 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 Okay. 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 You show one. Okay. 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 We're still working on the rules, guys. <laughs> still working on the rules. <laughs> yeah. The fact that we're all doing it to begin with is fun enough. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, most tables wouldn't. No, yeah, no well, problem. two hands played so far at like the feature table. Stuff. No, no, I don't. And a couple of bust outs from the outer tables. Jorge Cantos out in 80th place, cashing for £9,750. And gone in 79th place is a player who was on our feature table yesterday, Florian Duta. Again, cashing for just shy of 10k. Duta, Duta. I have to say, guys, he's done so well to get that far after some of the awful beats that he took yesterday on our feature table. Really stuck it out, kept that composure. You're of Romania. He walked past me and James in the lobby, and I was like, hey, man. And then I re remembered what happened to him, and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so 78 players remaining, and Ola Shemian in action, raising from the cutoff with Queen Five of Clubs. Ben Heath in the small blind with King Eight of Clubs. As Heath considers his options, I just opened the Pokestars lobby to see what we've got in store for people today in the Mini EPT London series. <coughs> the first tournament, which starts at 2.15 UK time, is a $5.58 game. Who let Pi near the mini EPT London schedule? Did you see there's someone in chat that won last night? Really? Yeah. Mr. Fitty. Congratulations. Won the $1. Nice. Yeah. Oh, gee, nice work, buddy. And I believe that in addition to whatever first place paid, that player will get a free ticket to the medium buy-in WCOOP main event, the 1K. Oh, a thousand dollars is medium. Yeah, the high ten k, dude. That's insane. When did when did that happen? When did they start that? When did they start making a ten k? This year. Oh, really? I, I thought I was doing a bit. Turns out it is new. <laughs> <laughs> it was a weird one. In all seriousness, traditionally the W Coop main event, the high was a five. Yeah, right. And right, Scoop right. was a ten. And everyone's like, hold on a second. Why is the World Championship cheaper than the, the Spring Championship? Yeah. It makes sense that they're the same, right? Yeah. Of course, it will be the 10K we focus on on Twitch and YouTube because that is the World Championship of No Limit Hold'em, and we'll be streaming that 7th, 8th, 9th of November. Of course, all these tournaments, part of WCube 2022 Take 2, starting on the 5th and 6th of November. So what's happened here? We've gone three ways to the flop. Nothing has happened yet, but something could be about to oh, happen. Oh, wow. King high flush draw versus queen high flush draw. Wow. Action card on the turn here, guys. Both players picking up a straight draw to go with their flush draws. I think we're going to see some carnage here. So Shemian made it. 19. 10K on the flop going to bet slightly bigger on the turn 19,000 into a pot of 61,000 I mean he's got a great price just to call and see if he's going to complete his combo draw right there if he doesn't want to do something more fancy but is he going to try and do something clever and represent when he does have a great opportunity just to realize the equity of his draw for a decent price. Looks like realization on the way. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Oh, but it's a wow. double-paired board, though, guys. 
Yeah, both players with a flush on a double paired board. King high flush is good for Heath. Any red cards in this deck? What's going on? I feel, I feel like this is going to be a check, check river, guys. I, I think both players at this point are desperate for their opponent not to have a boat. Mm -hmm. And I think he knows that Heath is capable of trapping with a boat in this scenario. Or does Shemian go, Heath would never check a jack on this river. That would be ridiculous. He needs to get value. It's a double paired board and level himself into trying to get value from something random. But there the nine is. is counterfeited at least. There it is. Check, check as expected. Zampa is correct. This is a straighty, flushy paired board. This Going is what better. This is a straighty, flushy double paired board. Was that the rule? Show one. <laughs> I didn't think Shemian had to show, but I don't know. I don't know the rules of this game. It's not my game. Ask Julian Sipborn. He's responsible for this nonsense. I mean, so technically it was a showdown, right? But then also, uh, etiquette dictates you don't really have to show you down. You if you want, yeah. But then also, the new rule new it, it dictates that you have to show <laughs> one. There's a lot going on here. Oh, yeah, this game is messed up. So we're down to 76 players, another couple of eliminations since we said goodbye to Kantos and Duta. That could have been more expensive. And that means the average stack just gets well, a different club. bigger and bigger. Yeah. Close to 300k now. Yeah, so we're playing significantly above a 50 big blind average. Shemi was just saying just now that could have been significantly more expensive had it been another club. So it was the double paired board that obviously of slowed course. the action there as expected. But very, very interesting little scenario a little setup it's crazy how nick spotted that double paired board right away i know immediately. right on top of it that's why they pay me the big bucks i just see club that's it that's all i think <laughs> about syverson with the spraggy ace seven offsuit i live my life a quarter mile at a time <laughs> and i analyze my poker one card at a time guy for the mic <laughs> i'm a one street kind of guy i'm a one street dude <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Heath. So Ben Heath's like, ah, I'm going to play every hand today, or? Uh, he might use 8-6 suited. I mean, it could go either way. You can 3-bet this hand. You can flat this hand. I think 8-6 suited probably plays better as a 3-bet than a flat from that position. But still plenty of playability, assuming your opponents aren't going to be squeezing too aggressively behind you, which I imagine at this level they probably would. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's... Did you hear me? Forty. And 40, speaking of three bets. Yeah, the re-raise from Harabek is to 40,000. This is a Harabri. Yeah, fires in there. I, I, I have to I have to wonder if maybe that was a little bit on the wider side with his stack, he's going to be forced to fold that a lot of the time if Careful. he's open. I just saw we are I going to the outer Not tables. Yeah, Picking up on a hand involving Martin Jakobsen and Paul Fonten. We join this on the turn. The board is ace, queen, five, deuce with three hearts. So we saw Jakobsen call a bet from Fonten on the turn. The ten of clubs hits the river. The board is straighty. It's flushy. So ace of hearts, queen of clubs, ten of clubs, five of hearts, deuce of hearts on the board. Action is on Fontan, and he's just played a time bank card to extend his shot clock. And now he bets 135,000. Quick call from Jakobsen. Fontan tables king four of hearts for the flush. That is good. Ooh, that's some big stacks. Yeah, as we referenced earlier on, this 
is a pretty stacked table and maybe just maybe that can be our feature table later on today it's pretty low on the breaking order chances are we can join these guys for the second half of day three well they better hold on all their <coughs> chips then a lot of these players with a lot of experience of going deep in EPT main events. Jakobsen, a multi-finalist with two second-place finishes in the same season. Adrian Mateos, a former champion. Okay, first we've seen from Fabian Bernhauser. Opens under the gun with ace do suited. Gets called uh, by the no. chip leader with sevens. And I seven guess, still uh, good on a king-10-6 flop. For the, uh, the taxes. I think we played in the 10K in Barcelona. You were telling me you're from here, but you live in, you live in Spain now? Yeah, yeah, I'm from just down the coast, like 50 minutes train. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I live in Madrid at the moment. Oh, yeah, okay. It's like half the year. How's it being home? What? Nice to be home? Yeah, it is. Yeah. I a few days before, before the stop and a few days after in Brighton, my parents. Oh, perfect. Nice. Burn house. Uh, they live. Continues so they the 10K? Yeah, yeah they where you're born? Yeah. Yeah. And, like, a lot of my friends from when I was younger living in London. Yeah, that's perfect. Reunion. Yeah. Or you're here half the year, too, in general. No, it's or like, traveling half the yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah, the Vegas is tougher with the attack. Is it? Yeah, I feel a lot of Yeah. The problem with but, these sevens is you know your opponent's capable of just firing here with a bunch of stuff that you're going to be... Like, yeah, they withhold... But you have to be aware of the fact that you will face additional aggression on later streets no, from these can, more experienced players. He does make the call. And still worse cards. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. Both pairs yeah. on the turn. Okay, well, obviously yeah. neutral card. If you're thinking about good turn cards for sevens, that's actually not a terrible one. Yeah. Not as chaotic. In fact, in many ways, the 10 actually might yeah, be slightly better than the 6 because your opponent probably will have more 10x combos when they open from that yeah, position, yeah. then they'll have 6x you know, combos. So it's like it makes it slightly less likely that your opponent has one of like those losses, Broadway yeah. situations yeah. that you might have been concerned about him see betting If I won the main event, I would That's have, awful. thankfully, like 10 million in losses. But generally <laughs> speaking, a paired board here is going to be better million, for your pair. I mean, there have been some million. cases where, where they were like saying that they lost like a bunch of money in cash. Wasn't it? What's that, sorry? That uh, someone was saying that they used to like... Speaking of continuations... Lose a lot of money in cash games. Oh, on purpose? Like... Kind of like, I, I, I don't know, I lost like one million in cash games in games and then I have to pay less taxes for that. I, I don't know. Because how do they track that? Did he say a million? Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Like, they can't track. A so million what? Like, but how can they believe you? A million lira. I I don't know. It's not my bro. <laughs> Second barrel from Bernhauser, 43,000 into a pot of 47,000. I mean, I think you would have to, like, actually play in games where you could be. Can I? You can't just say it. Can I? You can't Here we go. Like, Show on. Ooh. Nice. Never have played That's how it's nice. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. You have to, like, maybe if you're, like, playing for 400. Did I hear right? Ben, do you think he's living in Brighton? He does live in Brighton. Oh, wait. Wait, no, he did live in Brighton. Okay. I like this. I think he's from Brighton. They're not just going to be like, I take that word. Could be. Oh, he doesn't. He loves I should know this. Otherwise, you can say I got invited to some. He lives in Madrid. I know that. There you go. No, I think it can be any, like, legalized gambling. Like, lottery tickets. I think a lot of times. Sports betting through the government. Like, not just poker, but I don't think it's done it. Yeah. Yeah. Like it has to be trackable, yeah. trackable. I, I, from what I understand. But I, guess, I mean, it should be. I guess. It's okay skipping some games these days in Vegas. Like so much poker to play everywhere. Yeah, yeah like, I mean, I've. Take a few trips off. I just started playing full time, so it's not like I. I never really traveled much. For poker, anyway, so it's not. Uh, this is this is a top three hand, in my opinion. This is one of the best hands you can get. It's definitely up there. I'm going <clears> to... <throat> that's me. He is one of the shortest stacks, though, guys. He's starting this hand with about 13 big blinds, just FYI. So this raise, I think, is going to look very suspicious from this position. Many of your combinations will be played as a shove here from UTG plus two. The closer you are to under the gun, probably the more likely you are to, you are to play these hands. You were saying you were push there. fold, but I was there. at yeah. this stage in the tournament as well, no. plenty of I was working. ways oh, to yeah. mix in yeah. some yeah. raises yeah. that aren't as strong as this cool. as well, if you'd like to try and balance that. 
accidentally exposes the big one, Jack four off. And Fire Sun gets it to <laughs> you have to Really, look. not too many combos uh, that want to come along <laughs> <Maybe>. anyway. <laughs> uh, you like the red the one better? Rate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's two red ones. Outer <laughs> table <laughs> action. <laughs> Everybody's favorite, Harry Lodge. And everyone else's favorite, Muradog. The Muradog. Woof, woof. So we join this hand on the river. The paired board, 96654. And Harry Lodge has just bet enough to put Muradog all in. Do it. Say it. Come on, James. Give it to me. I love it. Oh. And he calls it off. Lodge tabling ace nine. The top pair to go with the sixes on board, and it's good. Muradov, nine eight, also had top pair. Worst kicker, and Muradov is eliminated in 76th place. Put down the Muradog. But you, you got to give me the Harry Lodge, buddy. Harry Lodge. There it is. It's up to almost 700k. <laughs> What's your? You have no touch. So no back at left. the feature right. table. Right. Chemian's under the gun raise, okay. called by Bernhauser in the small blind. We have an ace nine at deuce board, top pair yeah. for Chemian. Not much for Bernhauser. Yeah. Hope it stays that way. You're the, so you have UK. No? I think. So it's not. So there is that? Yeah. You couldn't keep your UK? Well, you can talk about it. Spend more time in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. I did also. Oh, okay, yeah. Continuation bet from Shemian. Burn Hauser folds. So we haven't seen, other than a glimpse as we've gone around the table, haven't seen anything from the online qualifier Aristo Karnak. All we know is this guy is in for $55, I think. And guaranteed nearly 10,000 pounds. Doesn't have any caches to his name. I think it's fair to say this guy is going to be our qualifier. Oh, burned out. Yeah, last year, yeah. <laughs> You'll know why. We have our fun. Firesin is now directly UTG. 15 big blinds. Jack four off in the bin. Quick fold from Harabic with the king three off. Joaquil, I imagine he's going to put that in the bin as well. Seven five off, folded around to the cutoff now. Sip on, still our chip leader. Yeah, although it's probably pretty close now. Remember, yep. Garak Nani was not that far behind Sip on. Yeah, Sip on's dropped down to 973k. God's a first world problem, isn't it? You had a million, now you've got 773. Oh, unbelievable, yeah, absolutely. But at least our feature table chip leader is going to go ahead and pump this up, as you'd come to expect from this position, this kind of combination. That is a raise to 12k. And here is the guy we've been waiting to see. This is Aristo Parnat, who will fold the small blind. Olashemian will fold the big blind. And we've got just over an hour to go. In fact, close to an hour. 15 minutes to go until the first of today's mini EPT London tournaments. A reminder, this is an online series that's running alongside oh, yeah. our live coverage of EPT London, giving you guys the opportunity to play while watching all low buy-in events. Today's tournaments, for example, are 550, 330, and $11. They start every day, and I'll do this in Central European time, 3.15, 6.15, and 8.15. The first event is 8 game, as I mentioned earlier on. But the key thing to say is that all of these tournaments have yeah. added value. Across the series, tens of thousands of dollars in added prizes. WCOOP tickets in every tournament. And when we get to the mini main on Friday, you're looking at an EPT Prague package added to the prize pool. That package will go to the winner and we'll see someone travel to Prague 
to play the final EPT main event of 2022. Are there even eight games? Has anyone checked? Would you like to know what the eight games are? I actually would love to know what the eight games are. Okay. They they appear in the following order. Okay. Uh, Limit Deuce to Seven Triple Made draw. up. Limit Hold'em. Heard of it. Limit Omaha High Low. Nope. Limit Raz. What? Limit Stud. Okay. Limit Stud High Low. Sure. No Limit Hold'em. Okay. And yeah, Pot fine. Limit Omaha. Two of those are made up. What the hell is Raz? <laughs> Sounds like candy. <laughs> You're getting Raz. Give him the old razzle dazzle. Well, uh oh, I've angered Pie Face. Let's pick up the action yeah. here. We've got the early position raise from Harabek with King Queen. We have seen the cheeky flat from Burnhauser with Jax. Now on Syverson with Queen Deuce of Diamonds in the big blind. <laughs> Rufy in the chat says, technically, all of those games are made up, right? Yeah, I suppose that's true. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll allow that. I like that one. All right, guys. Anyway. With uh, the big blind folding, we are going heads up to the flop, which is queen high. So it's top pair for Harabek, who is now close to a 9-1 to one favorite. Yeah. Jack's playing it slow here, and I don't blame him. A lot of players are leaning more towards... This more passive line from Jax at this kind of stack depth, and I'm a fan of it. Honestly, everyone hates Jax because they get all hot and heavy, and then they don't know what to do post-flop. So, so, you're, so you're saying rain it in with Jax? I'm saying there are certain stack depths where I believe that pay, playing more passively is not going to be a killer, assuming that you're the kind of player that can also get away from it post-flop as well. This might sound like a super question. Yeah. So you're saying certain stack depths, take it easy with Jax, right? Sure. Well, mix it up. Include it. Include taking easy sure. as a mix of doing other things. Does that inc also tens, or do we go crazy with tens? I, I feel like tens have very similar properties. Okay. Yeah. Whew. Except for the fact that it's not they're not nearly as hated as. Oh, speaking of which, I'm yep, just waiting right there, for the day the when people are like, no, 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 you gotta you gotta take it easy with jacks. But tens though, rip it. Rip it. Yeah. This is the new meta. Five, yeah. <laughs> fives, you're all in, jacks. Right. Slow it down. Yeah. Jax, you got to be cautious. I feel like plenty of people actually play that way regardless because they hate Jax that much. But here we are on the turn. Yeah, and Bernhauser picking up a little bit of equity here. Now has the straight draw. He continued the flop for 12,000. Alex to check the turn. Bernhauser. Bernhauser checking behind. We go to the river, which is a brick. Five the spades. Harabek is good. Yeah, at this point, he probably imagines he's going to go for some value. Um, I mean, looking at these stack depths here, Bernhauser's got about 31 big, big blinds behind. Given the action on the turn going check, check, he's, I, I don't know, I think he's pretty confident that King Queen's going to be the best hand. Yeah, 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 I like it. A little over a third of the pot. Yeah, the problem is that this can absolutely just be a blocker bet, you know, with like a 10, maybe even a 9 or a 7, maybe like a... Maybe it's like a 10 that's trying to get value from so like from, from some 9x, from 7x, some like pocket 8s, that kind of thing that's also kind of slowing down the action and preventing him from raising or going for a larger size once he checks. I expect this to be paid a lot of the time. He yeah. does make the call. Yep. Like, I knew it to size it because I could see the hold cards. Yep. But for him to know how to size it, that's pretty <laughs> impressive. It is pretty impressive. And even then, there's probably a shot that I would see the hold guards and then get and then get raised yeah. and not know what to do. <laughs> We've got some armchair commentary from Colin watching on YouTube who says, terrible bet size. Oh, oh Colin. Colin. Oh, Colin. Terrible comment. You're banned. Just an awful bet size. Can you imagine getting... 
is, is the answer I no can't joke. imagine. No, no, say, no, I, no, I was really thinking about it. <laughs> I was trying to imagine it, and even even in my imagination. Even in your wildest dreams? Nope. Anyway, guys, back in the action. UTG, ace, queen of clubs for Harabek. Okay, Colin's going to double down. Uh-oh. Just polarize and bet pop. Thank you for your Colin. I mean, if he's talking about having all the hold card information, I, even then it's hard. To, I, Jackson's going to pay you? Colin, pol polarize, polarization is definitely a thing, but the thing is you're, you're supposed to polarize in scenarios where your opponent can call a polarizing bet. In that situation, he was obviously going for more, I guess, what we'd consider thinner value. I wouldn't call it thin, perchance, because he obviously had a lot of value. I guess he was trying to get a thin call is what's going on. Colin follows up. Uh-oh. It's facts, though. Oh, right. No, of course. Now that you said it's facts. <laughs> uh, I, I would like to answer Colin's comments. With uh, Cappy's comment from Twitch, uh, which says, Colin needs to wait for Chat Pro Saturdays. Colin, tune back in on Saturday. Uh, accurate, yeah. That, and uh, That's facts, Joe. That's facts. Yeah. Saturday is the day for all Chat Pros. We got it all in. We do indeed. Robeck opened under the gun. Syverson shoving from the small blind. And looks like a call. And looks like we're going to be off to the races. Flip that coin. Good luck. It is the pocket pair. That is actually statistically behind right now, I assume due to folded cards. And Syverson <laughs> is going to need these tens to hold, or he is eliminated. <laughs> there have already been 11 bust outs today. We're down to 69 players. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Yeah, well, two clubs. Club, ten of clubs. If you can fade this, if you can do anything. Ooh. What? what? <laughs> if you can fade this, you can do anything. You can. Queen okay. on the river, and that will say... Syverson KO'd in 69th place, taking us down to 68. Chips go to Roman Harabek, who's now playing a 100 big blind button. stack. Double button? Double button. Thomas Syverson did get the ladder, though. Cashes out for £11,200. That's what everyone is now guaranteed. Also gets his phone back. The mystery bag. Whose phone are you going to take home? <laughs> oh, balls, it's a Samsung. <laughs> Let's not get started yeah, on that. Uh, yeah, we the don't... vastly superior <laughs> Samsung, despite all the fact that we all pay more money for a worse product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really like it too much, actually. I don't know why. <laughs> you just got, like, crazy hands. Senzo's right. Had, like, At least he gets to tell people he's 69. People were just trying to go crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. yeah, That's I'm good. Not, get it's it. fun to have, like, I don't want them all the time, but, like, one per trip. Roman Herodic now up to 99 big blinds. 110k? It was, like, it, it was like, one, right? 1k? I they always I do, like, remember, small. But 10k, no. They always there, do there small ones. One Maybe there was it once, but not regularly. I know. No, it's only normal. Right. So it didn't matter. Don't feel that. I do love the idea of introducing yes. a new feature on the stream where People we see so a controversial hand in that game. or a hand where maybe the commentators <laughs> can't agree on whether something was a good play or not. We activate yeah, Colin. Yeah, he's, the he's the arbiter. <laughs> like the Judge feel, Judy uh, of poker commentary. Like I was in the game too much. <laughs> <laughs> Just awful. Nope. I shall return with my decision <laughs> presently. <laughs> Chris Martin in the chat says, huge correlation between chat account. pros and Android users. Yeah, that's probably accurate. <laughs> oh, it's actually much better. I think I think you'll find that we should polarize. I feel like some people do that to intimidate. I do like the fact you can fold it in half. I feel like some people also do that to intimidate. Yeah, pretty otherwise. cool. <laughs> what you hey, give me your phone, Nick. I want to fold it in half. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I heard you got a I Samsung. Oh, it's not the fold. Cards, I'm so sorry. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Same one. I don't know. <laughs> I had the feeling some people are doing it. Yeah. Well, that was raise and take it oh, for Sitbon. Sure. 
No, really, I can see it. I thought we had a six or eight. Tell you what, guys, let's check out some of the other faces in the field because we've referenced a few times that there are a lot of big names still in with 67 players remaining. Among them, Jack Sinclair, who we saw on our feature table earlier, was the runner-up in the record-breaking Estrella's main event in Barcelona. Raman Hajayev. Oh. We've also got Gianluca Speranza. <laughs> Oliver Beresford among the chip leaders at the start of day three. The joy. And we have two time EPT runner up Martin Tussor. So that's interesting. He's a two time EPT runner up. Jakobsen is a two time EPT runner up. Plus, you've got the players who went one and two in the UK IPT main event, still in the EPT main. The Super High Roller Champ here in London, still in the EPT main. Maybe too much. Some good stories to follow. I think it's safe to say that this EPT London was a tough year all round. Like, oh my gosh. A friend of mine sat down at his table and he's like, this oh, is one? not going to go well. He looked at the tables around him and thought the same thing. It was it's, really, really stacked. It's interesting. <laughs> London gained a reputation very early on as one of the tougher legs of the EPT. And I think it was a self-fulfilling prophecy. That that's where we started to see maybe a smaller field than we saw in other events. Yep. And it then did become genuinely tougher and tougher and tougher. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think it shows in this field here in London, 2022. Hand number 13, guys. Joe, are you having to explain why players can't have their phones? It's like, I don't know where uh, where this person came from. Like they Look, if you're genuinely new to the game, if you haven't been following what's been going on in poker, it's, uh, you know, it's a televised Watch table. Tonight. Just Google Jack Four Offsuit. <laughs> you can probably come faster than me. In fairness, there was also some concern about it interfering with our with our RFID tables as well. Nope. Nope. <laughs> it's game integrity, pure and simple. <laughs> and even though it is game integrity, pure and simple, I also stand by the opinion that having a table full of people on their phones is boring and we don't I, I don't disagree also and, and to be fair and I'm going to give a shout out to a few people here namely Stat Trick from our production team but also some of our eagle eyed viewers yesterday who justifiably said hold on a second they're confiscate you're, you're taking their phones but they've still got smartwatches. notice what they're not wearing today all communication Underwear. devices oh. have to go phones iPads smartwatches, <laughs> all have to go that's me And also a third reason is that occasionally, if you've ever seen a phone on a televised table, you can read what's on the person's phone, which I don't think is really great either. Have you ever seen that? Uh, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure I ever have. No. I've seen over people's shoulders. You can read their text messages although, and stuff. And although I have to say that if we were to run these games more frequently and allow phones, I'm sure that would be true because we put out this sort of beautiful HD video, whereas a lot of other live streams look like they're filmed on like you know a, an old iphone or something <laughs> that's too kind you mean vhs <laughs> shots fired come on chat you know you agree with me I i'm all for a laugh every once in a while guys you know me right i'm, oh, I'm good i'm good for a chuckle i have never once laughed at a vibrating anal beach joke so just it's just not it, like i don't just take it easy it's, I, I guess i have now right I have you said that. It's just, <laughs> i know it seems like something i would be into bill we should probably pick up the action here yeah. it was a raise from harabek on the button that was called by julian sitborn in the big blind and Sitbon check called the flop for 22,000. We've gone to the turn. Harabek, a two to one favorite with a pair of tens. Sitbon, oh, two pair, tens and eights, of course. Sitbon just with top pair.
You know what's an annoying river here? Nine. A nine would be frustrating for 10-8, absolutely. The counterfeit is something that you're terrified of in these situations, although it doesn't happen all too often. Sip on now 55K to continue in this hand. Don't see how he's ever going to get away from this, honestly, unless he's seen something we're not. And based on that stare, maybe he is. Bone, sit bone, 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 sit bone, bone. I mean, if he doesn't already have the best hand, guys, he does have a pretty significant draw. So you, I don't think you can ever get away at this stage. And on the river, no improvement. 10 8 still the best hand. 10 8 might be concerned about two pairs now, though, absolutely. And potentially even handsome hands like, you know, Queen Jack getting there. Of course, Queen Jack was there on the turn anyway, but. What they're concerned about is, you know, being check raised on the river or something like that. So it might still go check check with having uh, these bottom two. But these guys are really excellent at finding the reads to put in the bets with other hands that players might be scared to continue with. So let's see how Hrabek wants to approach this river. chips. Nope. Sorry, it was a time card. Extend that shot clock. How much of the 30 seconds of the shot clock do you think is devoted to thinking about putting in the time bank card? That's one of the things that that I would struggle with in these situations because you're going... Now, you don't oh. have to put them in, right? Wait one sec. It uses them automatically. So it's not like you actually have to think about it. A lot of players right. do put them in. Right. 115,000 he announces. Really, really interesting bet size. 115. I don't know if I can fold this in, to be honest. Sibbon doesn't think he can fold. Button versus big blind. Free flop action, raise call. There's absolutely no reason why Pravic can't just be blasting off and just trying to get some 10x, 8x, 9x to fold. What's Colin got to say? Come on. Well, we've got Colin Bradley. Oh, different Bradley. On Twitch. Who, oh, I'm guessing is speaking on behalf of all Collins. 50k should be the bat. Oh, okay. I the see. Collins are now a community. They're not a single person. Ooh. They're a hive mind of Collins. What feels worse here? Folding the winner or calling you should just, the loser? You should just polarize. It's just the facts. Well, this is, I mean, this is facts here. <laughs> this is pretty polarized. <laughs> Joe, you're exactly right. This is one of the situations where polarization does make sense. Yes. So the chunkier size, if Colin had said it in this circumstance. To to it's crazy. Sitbon on his third time bank card said... As soon as the bet was made, I don't think I can fold this, but now is seriously considering folding it. You got a good seat. <laughs> you, you, can tell he, you can tell he wants to fold. He's trying to talk himself into it. He's trying to find reasons to call at this point, and you can understand why. His hand is quite strong, but the three barrels here, oh, I just think he can feel that it's wrong. I, I, I'm, I'm such a nit. I think that this is like... Tell me this one. I'm not good enough to He call makes it. a fold. Very Let's good fold. Go. Let's it go. That's a nice one. An okay one. That's an okay one. <laughs> He's pretty happy once he's he that fold. 10, huh? Uh, if if he finds a pair, he knows he probably made the right fold yeah. for sure, right? Because he's never big, turning big a 10 fold. into a bluff there. He would just check it down in many cases not unless he big. has <laughs> two pair or better to go with it. <laughs> right. But it's a big fold. His little game worked in his favor there, didn't it? Yeah, so yeah, reminder, guys, Mini EPT That's London right. yeah, yeah, is you. running now. Sure Low buy-in tournaments all week. 
with the main event taking place on Friday and an EPT Prague package awarded to the winner of that particular tournament. But there are three games every single day, the eight games starting in 50 minutes' time. Also, there is a $3.30 event later on today, an $11 Hold'em event this evening. So if you head to the Pokestars client, if you can see the mini EPT London tab, that means the tournaments are available in your area. You can play, and there are WCOOP tickets added to the prize pool of every single MTT. So much added value in this series. It's almost all added value. Value these days, more important than ever. So heading back to the feature table, we have played more than half of this level. We have lost 16 players since the start of the day, 64 remaining now. And Ludovic Gailik oh. has joined the feature table. Well, hopefully he gets in on the fun. It was here in London that he first popped up on our radar too, was, right? Yeah. It was that main event in 2013 where he made the final table. Good old Angus. <laughs> Robek has opened in the cutoff. 10-9 offsuits. So Julian Sipborn has like dropped down to 900k. He's not even the table okay. chip leader anymore. Ben Heath's got more chips than him. That is a lot okay. of stacks Good. over 100 big blinds. No yeah. wonder they're so chatty. I didn't chatty. expect you not to be okay. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it applies only for the new players which come to the table. You know? For a new player, you have to show both. But it's, it's okay. I'll top them over before. <laughs> In the hand. Give you a better chance. Oh, I have to show one. Yeah. Oh, another yeah. time. I, I, I didn't know if it's like going on or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I don't know if Ludo is aware of the no, show no, one game and whether he's going to be willing to cooperate. Okay. Could be. <laughs> one round penalty. Seems like he would if I had a, if I had a guess. Shemian playing a 120 big blind stack. Now, with 63 remaining now. Oh, we've lost 64th place. Oh, Kuli Sudu's gone. So we, we referenced the fact that Ludovic Gailek was at that final table in 2013. Kuli Sudu, also a finalist from that yeah. year. He has just exited in 64th place. Bummer. Kuli Sudu cashing for £11,200. Fern Cully. Average stack right now is more than 70 big blinds. How? What's going on? Too deep. It's like Joaquil with 31 big blinds wants to put in a three bet. I mean, it's going to be one of those situations where if they continue falling at this pace, we'll get to mid-afternoon and be like, oh, we're down to 40 players. Do we need to consider stopping for the date? No. No. <laughs> we absolutely Never. need to keep playing because ultimately we will see it slow down. We will see a That's level or two where we only Here's lose one or two players, no, but we, we need to get through oh, those numbers. Uh, <laughs> <B-pack. We got laughs> I thought B-pack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as ever, if it goes like fast now, you know it slows down at the end. Like he took his time to choose. Yeah, let's go to Bluffers. No, but seriously, it's exactly the same. You really think it changed? I didn't have pocket, <laughs> so I had to look. I see the way it happened. He said this one, he said, oh no, he checked, and so yeah. it, it was exactly as fast. That's one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, Let him be a yeah, pussy yeah, for yeah, once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but I really. Yeah. <laughs> we don't expect you to have aces every hand. It's okay. <laughs> no, I know. I'm saying. Yeah, but he had like ace four off, and he's not happy with this. No, <laughs> no, I had a good hand. Get a good hand. <laughs> you not have 
better than F9 here. Uh, Colin on YouTube Brilliant. gets in touch. Colin, where you been all my life? Well, no, final table really will nice. be today. <laughs> <Facts>. <laughs> All right, get Colin on the podcast. Ludovic Gilek opens with the snowmen's num num. A couple of people on Twitch asking me about the Soccer World Cup. What you care? I don't know. What, what is Soccer World? Is it like a theme park? <laughs> <laughs> could be fun. I'm not huge on <laughs> soccer, but if they got good roller coasters, that could be game. Like the Soccer World Cup is just like a, a, a promotional cup that you it's get like from Soccer World. 1999 and free refills all day. The <laughs> Soccer World Cup. Um, I still don't think we've seen Risto Parnat, the qualifier, play a hand. He's down to 16 Maybe picks. Behind, right? I think we'd notice wearing Maybe that shirt as well. Behind. Absolutely. Nope. Thanks. Jesus Check. Risto, play a hand. Well, Shemi and Cold with nines in the big blind, and nine still good on a jack 6 3 flop. <laughs> All right, check it a bet. And I don't imagine Mr. Shemian going anywhere just yet. You're gonna have he's got the best hand, that would be that would be terrible. <laughs> that would be terrible. Makes a call. So I have just been advised that the Soccer World Cup final takes place the same day as the EPT Prague final table. Is that true? Do you think we could get away with just not saying anything since no one's going to be watching? <laughs> I think we may precede it by a few hours. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what the time difference is. Uh, guys, this is a really weird one. The pocket eights is probably going to think that they got tons of value to get from the clubs, from the straight draws, from the 3x, from the 6x. When you're playing with players who are highly aggressive, you need to be calling down lighter, and I think Shemin would probably get extremely sticky here with a hand like, you know, 5-6. Even a hand like, you know, king 3 of spades or something like that probably should be calling this turn again against uh, against more accomplished players. So I think this might be one of the spots where Gylik is going to end up kind of value towning himself, thinking yeah. he's gonna, he's getting <laughs> some sort of nice value from the from some of those smaller pairs, and certainly wants to try and punish the clubs in the straight draws for sure right now. So it's a bet and a call. Unless we see a very connected card in the river, we may see the eights go for more value. Okay. So six on the river, obviously now any six the best hand. I imagine that might be a slowdown. Gylik is still going to be concerned about the 6x and the jack x. The check and the check, and as expected, and the nines ah. will be taking this. Oh. <laughs> Clip that. Didn't expect that one, huh? Closer. <laughs> yeah, both players very happy to get the showdown, and it's just one of those one of weird ones. More happy. It's one of those weird ones. Yeah, absolutely. Great. You ask people for information, you get contradictory answers. Okay, no Did you ask the internet for answers? I know. I'm stupid, right? <laughs> Chat pros. Okay. So I've got two votes for 1600 CET. One vote for 1800 CET. <laughs> Wait a minute. Both not good for us. Agreed. Is the is the soccer world cup every four years still? Yes. Okay. So they didn't change but, it like the Olympics. No. What's it, it's normally in the summer, but it's being played in the winter because they decided to send the World Cup to a country where it's is like this, fifty degrees is this Celsius. The, is this the Qatar the one? Yeah. That's still happening. I mean, I don't want to get political yeah. here, but it was a very strange selection. Not really. Have you ever seen have you ever seen a dump truck full of money, Nick? No. Well, the people who run the World Cup have. <laughs> <laughs> Statric, I know you're busy working on a live poker stream right now, but I can't trust anyone in our audience. Can you please tell me in Central European time when the World Cup final starts on Sunday the eighteenth of December? Wow. I'd like that in Pacific time, Statric, thank you. You open that? 
JK. What came first, soccer or American football? Soccer, what did America call it before American football was invented? What? <laughs> 30 minutes left on this level, the first level of day three, with 63 players remaining in the EPC London main event. Okay, so it is 4 p.m. Central European time, 1600 CET. That is terrible for us. Can we get Toby Stone to restructure it so the final table is done inside of three hours? I'm thinking of the players, guys. They're going to want to watch. Yeah, for sure. The first ever hyper final table. EPT hyper. First ever spin and go EPT final table. <laughs> um, I'm on board, boys. Come on, let's get it done. So, guys, we might have to skip a, a couple of blind, three or four. We're basically escalating the blinds by ten levels. <laughs> <laughs> we might actually have a chance to win an EPT if we make it like that. Let's go. Um, let's see your cards. Bless you, Pedro. Just put a big screen near the tables with the game. Pedro, mm -mm. that makes it very hard for us to live stream the final table because we can't have any audio or video from the World Cup <laughs> final go on our stream. Because guess what? We don't have the rights to it. Also, it kind of messes up Delay World a little bit. Oh, God. Think of that. Reminds me of the first hand. Ben Heath flopped that jack. Got fired in two, three times, folded when he finally got sucked out on the river. Here we are again. One barrel from Shemian. Ooh. That's a good card to barrel. Mr. Shemian definitely can have a second barrel here, no doubt about it. Optimus Klang suggests why don't we why not just have a two hour dinner break on the final table day? Can you imagine like a final table of guys really excited about playing poker and then like their team loses and they come back and just tilt it all off? They're just like, oh worst outcome ever. I mean I would think any really fanatical soccer fans probably just aren't even going to play the event. You're going to be in Qatar. So Shemi does continue. The Queen of Clubs is really a nice card to continue on, especially in the dynamic where you're dealer versus big one. There's plenty of 5x, 3x that has to fold now. There's some straight draws that have to fold now. It does continue. I think reg v reg, this is a ridiculously standard line so far. Um, and honestly, it could go either way, regardless of what the river comes down now. I mean, the six of clubs obviously does mean that Shemin is blocking the, the flush with the seven of clubs. Heath is doing the same with the jack of clubs as well, but it really just boils down to whether or not he's going to try and get a three of five or a jack to fold, because technically speaking, all of those cards are supposed to call flop, call turn if you're playing against very accomplished, more GTO-centric play. So let me get this right, says the AC Money. The final table of this tournament isn't for two more months? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're talking about EPT Prague. The final table of this tournament is on Friday. <laughs> All right, guys, it goes check, check, Jack High takes it down. I, th I, think, I think really it could have gone either way there. Can you stop showing both every time? <laughs> At some point, it just comes down to history. You go, oh, I know what Ben's like. He's just going to calm me down here every time. He knows what he, he knows what I'm like. 
He knows I'm going to be aggressive here. I don't think it's going to be as effective as it should be. There's probably a better spot for me to pull this off. Might have a better combination to do it with as well. well let's take a look at some action from the outer tables. Martin Jakobsen on a bit of a downward trend at the moment. Has just moved all in pre for his last 90k. And looks like the action is on Henrik Hecklen. Eklund folds, so that shove gets through. So, Jakobsen hovering around the 20 big blind mark right now. I've literally just highlighted to the higher-ups that we have this problem. Do you think that there's any chance it will change? Uh, we're going to have a conversation about it. It is a problem. Over soccer? I'm less worried about the live stream audience and more concerned about that the players at the final One table will want to watch the game. And do we then have to reschedule the final table to ensure that that can happen? Can we never discuss soccer again on this stream, Imagine please? Imagine wanting to watch soccer. I, I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with <laughs> you, Joe, honestly. Um, Mel Barnes, do you email Sky Sports every weekend to complain about Soccer AM? <laughs> soccer Saturday. <laughs> They're in the UK. All right, three players. It goes raise, call, call. So far, we don't know what Heath holds. Just the ace of hearts for the time being. Get your guess is in the chat what you think he's calling with in the small blind here. I imagine it's a lot of suited ace combos. Basically, never going to be aces at the stack depth. So I guess we're looking at ace deuce to ace nine suited. So Colin on YouTube has a way of trying to integrate the World Cup final into the EPT final in Prague. Colin, thank God you're here. Thank God. You pick a team. Yep. If your team wins, you get 100K added to your stack. If they lose, you're eliminated from the tournament. Great idea. That's a slam dunk. Facts. Wait, sorry. What would it, what was, what's the soccer equivalent of a slam dunk? <laughs> That's a kicking the ball really hard it, into the net. That's the thing. There's not, a, there's not a more exciting way to score a goal. It's just always the same. You can't even slam dunk. A goal shot. A goal shot. <laughs> Thank you, Statrick. All right. It goes check, check, check on the flop. I hope it's a 0-0 zero, zero game and it comes down to the extra kicking contest at the end because that's my favorite bit. If they just did that, then I would watch it. Also, it'll be over in half an That'd hour. That'd be great. We could yeah. take an extended break from the EPT. Someone write to the man at um, FIFA. From what I understand, if you put enough zeros on the check, you can get what you want. All right, it goes Guy check, check, check on the turn. Yeah, and Guy then nuts. Going to get some zeros added to his chip stack. I suppose a bicycle kick is... Yeah, it's, it's kind of like a slam dunk. Sort of like All a right, slam yeah, dunk. Yeah, sure, I'll give okay. you that. Okay, it just. So what do you what do you think? Like a soccer coach says to his team, like, "All right, guys, let's get out there and kick it, kick better, kick it to the uh, kick it to your teammate, and then kick it in the net." <laughs> we got a lot of good kickers this year. Some strong legs out there. So action checked here to Ludo, who has rivered the straight. There's been a lot of very passive action here, though, James. A yeah. lot of passive action. So this is not one of the situations where you should pull a call in. You're not polarizing here. Yep. Very reasonable size. <laughs> He's like, I hate you so much. Look at that look. 
He's like, oh, no, this is so bad. I really want to just look you up here, but I've only got a five. Is Roman Trivec in House of the Dragon? He could easily be one of those. I mean, <laughs> just give it a few more episodes, yeah, but right? then they'll swap him in. <laughs> and a fold. One, two, one, two, one. Ricardo, Ricardo says, how about they reschedule Ooh, the World Cup final so it's not the same time as the final? I agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. This is more important for right. sure. Hold on a second here. Don, this is me. Don Quixote says, Joe wouldn't last for 10 minutes in a football pitch. Pitching is baseball. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, also cricket, right? Do they pitch Do they, or is it hurling in cricket? You're thinking of another game that's actually called hurling. Hurling is what I'm thinking of. Bowling. <laughs> Bowling. <laughs> they bowl. They bowl. Okay. So they bowl strikes? Wickets. Wickets. No, that's croquet. In cricket, they bowl wickets. I like the way he's on his own. <laughs> Are you talking by yourself? Yes, absolutely. Getting trouble? Yeah, Mental health right? issues? Never heard of a sticky wicket? I call the doctor for you, so. No, but that does sound interesting. That. Now, that's what I call <laughs> a sticky a situation. <laughs> oh, croquet is a potato-based appetizer. Thank you, Stetrick. Is, is hurling an Irish sport, you know, with the sort of bats that they... It's I kind, believe it's, it is. It's, it's kind of... It's From kind all of, the drinking. It's, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like... <laughs> it's kind of like um, uh, field hockey meets lacrosse meets rugby. It's pretty brutal. Raisinator with a good point. So soccer coaches, in addition to teaching them to kick better, they teach them how to fall down and pretend like they're hurt. <laughs> 180 with the ball drink. From a non-contact sport. <laughs> oh, look at this stare down. Almost romantic. The handsome guy. He's trying to figure out if, if Robek is in House of the Dragon. <laughs> you know it's on you. Oh, no, sorry. Sorry, I was just trying to... Uh, were you in episode five? Ooh, no wonder. Yeah, does have a legitimate hand. Ace, queen of hearts. Robek, Ray small to big, 17,000. And now Jamil Wakil is deciding what to do. I believe this should be a three-bet non-all-in. But, Joe, we've spoken about this before. This is that really awkward 34 big blinds effective, like, uh, it's, uh, it's... Why not all in? Uh, it just feels like it's too much. You know, you know, we were talking about this sort of awkward stage where it's, like, too much just to ship it, but it's, like, you know, not enough. Yeah. You know, to, um... But it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a three bet, but not to fold. You don't want to go exactly. all in here. Exactly, okay. exactly, but, but... Part of that reason as well is that you want to have some three bets here that are bluffs, right? You want to you want to have the ability to raise here that's not all in. Because there are chips. some folds you should have. That, I, yeah. You know what? That's the first time that's actually clicked with me. I wish I had my post-it notes. What we'll kill pot. Yep. Love the size here as well. Very good. Absolute position against uh, the small blind here. You you actually really want to get a call here and play this in position. Ace queen suited. Very very playable hand. You're always happy to take take it down pre flop here as well. But Ray's gonna take it. I see the four of hearts. I see it. Oh, he's done it again oh, though. Okay, okay. Not the bad one. <laughs> good one. <laughs> they always show the good one. <laughs> if you guys didn't pick up on that, he was getting called out earlier okay. for exposing. Uh, so but he did it in a way where he looked like at both cards, picked one, and then showed it. And they're picking up on the fact that that means he always has a high card in his hand. And he did the same thing just then. Yeah, it's three. It's legit. Let's see it. So about 15 minutes left on this level. 62 players remaining in the EPT London main event. Maybe it was the bad one. Yeah. <laughs> See that.
I don't see the raw back fold. on the button. <laughs> I don't fold on the button. Yeah, I know. I said this. No worries. There's a fair question from Smile, and it says, Newbie here, do you have to show one card? No, of course not. They, I say they agreed. I think it's fair to say that Julian Sitborn talked them into playing a game where if the hand doesn't go to showdown, the player who wins the pot shows one card. And they all kind of agreed to take part. They've made a gentle person's agreement. Oh. A long I hair. Fold button. I fold the big bang. Of course. Plus, I'm saying defend or what? I stand yeah. for. Oh, I didn't show. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say one. Say, say one. one. Okay. I had it then. Ten again? Ten again. Which one? I didn't. I know. I think Should I add up? Can I Again, that's your coat. Yeah. If it's wrong, you have one, one penalty and when we take on the camera. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. It usually stays intact. And by the way, uh, just in reference to the show one game, in 30 minutes, everyone's going to see everyone's cards anyway, which is why it's just a bit of fun here. Yeah, that was part of the negotiation Should they choose to, excuse too. me, I should say. Parnat's playing a hand, a qualifier. First ever recorded live cash. And he's opening here out of a short stack to 11K with sevens. How much do you have behind, sorry? Eighty-three in total, I think. Thank you. It's like the first hand he's played today. Leave him alone. And he's raised. You said eighty-three total. Total. I think so. It's going to be difficult with one single. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sit bond in the small blind. Is Queen he ten? Is he stack shaming him? Uh, yeah, I think he's drawing attention to the fact that he is a shorty for sure. Uh, Queen 10 definitely could call here. It's a little bit speculative when we're this short with the effective UTG opener, right? You're going to run into a bunch of stuff you don't want to see, but also, like, if you make a pair, you're just going to get wrecked a lot of the time if you, uh, when you're forced to call down a lot. Yeah, you like Ace seven off suit. Yeah. The Spraggy. Yeah. The, the Fabian Bernhauser. Much better shape against this hand. Yeah. To think if I should like bet or not. Yeah, yeah. You, you knew you should bet, but you wanted to make me think you were Much better shape with just the one you were card. Anyway. I think Bernhauser <laughs> also a shorty. I think I with the big blind ante in play, yeah. you probably like, shouldn't be folding almost anything in this scenario, especially yeah. now with an ace. But at, at least if they would facing be like that UTG open, you can be dominated a lot of the time. And there it is. Yeah, always an ace on the desk. This guy. What about having like two oh, one you just got Bernhauser. Like four thirty seconds. Bernhauser. I mean, like, if you know it's a really yeah, good position, good then you just the minute one because you're having to dive deeper into it. What do you think? They could do that, couldn't they? Because it says thirty on it. The other one could say one minute. You can have the golden one, the big ginormous one, five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what a suggestion. So Ludo is proposing that we do the That's same thing with time bank thing, cards that we do with the oh, mystery yes. bouncer. <laughs> He's got the mega one. <laughs> 25 minutes. <laughs> I think he didn't change anything because, like, they took whatever you use. So even if you use like 50 seconds, you're going to use the one minute or is it 2:30? So if you have like, oh, you're going to just use two of them. So just get six, or, well, five, seven or eight or something. Yeah. So yeah. It's a better yeah. call. Four minutes. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. better, yeah. But like having minute, one minute or 30 seconds doesn't change anything. That's, that's true. what I meant, yeah. That's true. But yeah, yeah for sure, it is a minimum, I guess. Parnat's going to be able to bluff his way out of this. I don't know if he's <laughs> capable of it. I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if he should, honestly. Right, I mean, that's what I mean. Yeah. It's, yeah, that's fair for he can still beat everyone. Some, everyone some twos. Yeah. Definitely. He can still beat some straight draws on this flop, for sure. Saves you moving your arms. Seven, eight coming, though, is <laughs> all I'm saying. <laughs> 
but agree. Everyone agrees. I said it from the start, so mm -hmm. I said it in the, in the start already. Like during the hand, I'm saying like I like to put them in when I'm using them, rather than like, like them just pressing it all the time. Then afterwards, they say you owe three or something. Are oh, you prefer to give that? I like to go during the hand. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I, I don't Do you like not like it now? I know. So I can stay focused on my decision and not, oh, I have to give. Mm. It's like, boom, boom, boom. Uh, this is so a really we'll tough them. one, though, I James. You know, five seconds, it's nice, so you is your opponent capable of betting yeah. ace king or ace jack and then checking the turn in this scenario? Is there value to be had from you know kings, queens, maybe some but hands like feel like you're paying king too much, ten? Yeah. <laughs> Me? King Everyone. jack, maybe. What do you mean? You get does too many decide times. to pass. Yeah, kind of a blocker bet. One. Exactly. Relatively yeah. small to decide this pot is about one quarter size. That's what I mean. Yeah, quarter pot. I thought like he used. I used like one minute and thirty, but it was like two minutes. Yeah, I don't know if if the sevens were winning. I don't think the deuce would turn his hand into a bluff that often. He tried to get the it, and the jack does complete oh, yeah. air for a lot of those straight draws that were on the flop as well. So good fold. You want to show both? You can. <laughs> I felt he wanted to do both. <laughs> but I'm good. Seeker asks any free rolls today. Nope, but we do have mini EPT That's London that. running and. They might not be free to play, but we are adding tens of thousands of dollars to the prize pool if you look at the series as a whole. WCOOP tickets up for grabs, EPT Prague package to the winner of the mini main. Fire up the Pokestars client and you'll see the mini EPT London tab and all of the tournaments in the lobby, three per day for the rest of this week. Yeah, good question, big deal, O'Nelly. Anyone playing the eight game mini? It's starting in the next 20 minutes. <clears throat> if I open the lobby, I'm going to see Pi's name on the list, right? There's no way, <laughs> no way he misses this. I mean, when I was joking about the eight games, he just materialized in chat. <laughs> well, he's so. not currently registered. The ever present. Pile juice, pile juice, pile juice. Mixed game movement. Mixed game movement. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Can we not talk about his movements? Ooh, mixed game movement. Every time. Ethan asks, what happened to EPT Monte Carlo? What, you mean the event that we were at in April of this year? <laughs> Sitbon opens on the button. It's still a huge stack. 175 big blinds, and that will be raise and take it. Shout out to the ever present John Delano, who's in our chat at the moment. Hashtag PokerStars TV just shared a fantastic clip of Ole. Giving up the old fist pump, which we love to see. Thank you, John. As always, your support is much appreciated. Good guy, that JD. Love, love me some JD. Eight minutes until the first break of the day. <clears throat> and I'm hearing on the rumor mill that we are going to be changing feature table during the break. And I have a very strong suspicion which table we'll be picking for our next lineup. small blind with ace nine he's now playing 10 big blinds i mean i appreciate nick you'd rather be the first person in but is this a spot where he should move all in um this is a really really tricky one to get right because of course we do have an earlier position open but he's got it right on this case he does have the best hand i think there's a very good chance he gets a call though Yep, definitely a call. So here we go. Qualifier versus qualifier. 
It is Risto Parnat who is at risk and slight favourite. Live cards for Harabak. It's good for you. You say you had Kingwin? Huh? You said you had Kingwin? No, no I, I said I blocked both of them. Lop is 10 nice 5 problem, deuce, ace high still ahead. Five cards for Parnat to fade. Does not want to see a king or a queen. Oh, you had ace king or ace queen? <laughs> ace king. <laughs> ace king, wow. Good call, you're gonna make the time. It's a good call. Ace on the turn does put a straight draw out there. Yes, it's top pair for Parnak. Yes, he's a 9 to 1 favorite, but he has to fade a jack on the river, which he does. So Parnak doubles up through Harabak. Yay, Parnak. Yeah, that's a big hold. And we are getting it quite deep here in London. Parnak time. Double. Excellent. Only first. For the best end, you found the whole hour and a half. True. <laughs> oh, the one read under the gun before. <laughs> oh. Same strength, probably. Yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> the one he read under the gun. So, I think we're all a bit surprised that we've lost nearly 20 players in the first 90 minutes of the day. Uh, with tables, therefore, breaking quite quickly, this table will be one of the next to break. That's the reason why we have to change it. But the good news is, table three... Me and him is low me. on the breaking order and stacked yeah, yeah. and table three will be coming to the main stage on the other side of the 20 minute break we'll take a look at the lineup at that table in just a moment on to the next hand mr heath is utg with those pocket nines he's gonna make this 11k to nainers Play this pot. To answer the question from Dala on YouTube, we are playing five levels. We're not trying to hit a specific target, not trying to get down to a certain number of players, yeah. just playing five 90 minute levels. Really? The yeah. first you must be point. loving it. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> just have a wee look. I already told him. <laughs> Did you tell him? Tell you again. You're no. loving that. Can we swap seats, please? Wow. I mean, I could almost. <laughs> but yeah. Wow. No, I didn't see you again. But I would tell you again. But <laughs> if someone wanted to, like. Eight, four, oh, thank you. I yeah. Just, <laughs> I mean, it was just like. What did you see? Was it a red card, black card? I didn't see it. <laughs> okay, next time I open them, so it's better for everyone. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So you confirm I wasn't making it up like the guy like the guy <laughs> in the 250 game. They're both making it up against me. Yeah, Come on, guys. Fuck with you. you fuck me in my mind. Oh. <laughs> now you know what it's like. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Getting crazy. I'm going to do like this. Okay, I cannot play now anymore. Can we change the table? So please? a complete whiff for You're the 7-4 go diamonds. Mr. Yeah, Heath. It's tough to, to peel here. <laughs> you go either way here. I think it's pretty yeah, standard. Now we continue. Definitely. Hmm? Yesterday, I played with the 29K guy. Twenty-nine k in the pot right now, and he, I literally told him like three. You've times seen I had a queen, that's why. That I could see Can like basically. That's I'm like, nine. Hey, how many more oh, times? Oh, I, I felt you? it. I'm like, just nice move your chips here. Get the job done. You see my queen? Can't I feel it, it differently. So he built really, all of his chip. Did you? Yeah, and then yeah. like ten minutes later, he started yeah. doing it again. We've enjoyed watching these guys, and, and I agree. Uh, with kangaroo that there is yeah. amazing energy on this table was, this table ain't going to exist for much longer like, it will be broken I, I, I soon like on the other this, side of the break that's why we need to change that's why table three will be coming up next jakobsen mateos plus heinrich heckelen plus Jeez. eric seidel a star-studded lineup. That will be our new feature table for the second session of the day. Break two minutes away. During the break, a chance to see Joe and I talking to Dr. Tom Sambrook, who is the poker consultant on Casino Royale. We talked to him about the poker scenes in that movie. Plus, EPT Retro. These were the live streams that we did a couple of years back, revisiting old EPTs. So it's our relatively contemporary take on no, EPT season back. five. I think we're going to change <laughs> well, they, they zipped them up, they taped them in a bag and... 
selling them. I will miss this table. I like the chat. Yeah, as we speak. Good stuff. Tell Richard we'll go halves. They change the TV table every... Yesterday I saw like they did two or three times the same. We'll see. Normally we get the two, like, we get 12 days in the machine. We'll see. Parnat, Parnat. Oh, he's full. Oh. Seems prudent. It's so around to Gylik, who has a better Jack. Jack 10 in the small blind. He okay, calls. Is Jack 10 off a call in the small blind? Uh, no. Not traditionally. Unless you're potentially facing a button or a cutoff open, in which case it gets a lot closer, right? They're going to have a much wider okay. range. Sure. You want a hand that really flops hard, and Jack sure. 10 Suda does much better than Jack 10 off in this scenario. But against, and it's against FTA. FTA and domination Amen. rotation on the flop. Krabek was dominated pre, <laughs> now top now pair. Now it's going to be the break anyway. We're changing. Seven. Mm. How do you miss a flop with this kind of hand? I mean, <laughs> all the floor, it's not normal. I know it's not normal at all. Like, I know I, it's weird for him. <laughs> I feel you, buddy. A bluff that was dominating me. The Jack Queen or the Jack King? Right. I guess I had a better hand. Yes, you did indeed. <laughs> so we have reached the end of the first session, the end of the first level of play. 20 eliminations so far on day three. And a reminder that this table will go out into the field. It will break shortly afterwards. And we will have that new lineup on the main stage in 20 minutes time. So let's check on the stacks of the players that we have been watching over the course of the last 90 minutes. Ben Heath has increased his stack. 982,163 bigs. Okay, Julian Sitborn slipped a bit, but still 150 bigs. He is deep. Interestingly, with the average stack right now being so high, Wakil, Bernhauser, Gaelic, and Parna are all below average. Parna edging into the danger zone. The blind's going to 366 when we come back from break. So yes, Martin Jakobsen, Adrian Mateos, Henrik Heckland, and Eric Seidel among the players you will see when the action resumes here from EPC London in 20 minutes time. We'll be back very shortly. Ah, oh, Martin Horetsky's joined the feature table. Martin. Jack Trey, no thanks, in the bin. Five Deuce of Diamonds, no thanks, in the bin. Uh -huh. King Nine. Strassman. All right. I can live with that. And so can Strassman. His hair was perfect. <laughs> Werewolves of London. The tail and the on the button, king queen. Smurf it all the Smurf. And we are going heads up with the stairs. Domination nation. Then it's a nine. Johannes is going to be first. Johannes pairs is nine. It's going to make him a look. heavy favorite against King Queen. I think with a hand like King Queen, though, this is a pretty nice flop. You're going to float here a lot, especially if you think your opponent is going to be C betting with a lot of bluffs. I mean, having two over cards in a gut shot feels pretty good. And uh, being in position gives you a lot of power. You can turn your hand into a bluff later on. You can get hands like pocket eights to fold, even pocket tens to fold some of the time. Ace of diamonds on the turn. Hmm. Doesn't make things much better for King Queen. 
Because Strassman was the preflop aggressor, he probably has more ace X in this situation. But when you're betting the turn, it's like, what are you hoping to? Bill's gonna check behind him. That river what are you hoping to fold out here? Clubs. And there you go, Jack on the river. At this stage, however, you gotta feel like King Nine is gonna be the best hand here quite frequently. The draws have bricked out. But if you've got King Queen, do you need to turn your hand into a bluff is the question. If you do what? think you can get pocket eights to fold, pocket tens to fold, now is the time to do it though. That was gonna be my question. What hands do you think you can get to fold? That you aren't already beating? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, small pocket pairs might want to continue here a lot. Not just eights and tens, obviously. You know, you could do this pretty much with all of them. You might even get some nine X to fold. But if I had king nine here against a player that I felt like might have some weird floats, I think you got to call. I don't think your opponent is going to have too much ace X. This is some strange <laughs> face. Yeah, <I> don't... <laughs> what? What's that look supposed to mean? It's what? like at the end of Terminator when he just sort of morphs into all the different faces that he was... Is he is he doing like a kissy face? What's going on? Representing the whole rest of the movie. It's just like, mm, I'm not sure what face I'm supposed to be making here. So I'm just going to try them all. What oh, is he doing? What the magic he... finger trick. Oh, that's a magic huh? trick. Magic trick. <laughs> What does that mean? Uh, it's a magic trick. <laughs> I mean, normally I'd say, boy, this is the face of someone very comfortable, but he looks incredibly uncomfortable while he's doing it. <laughs> he's mastered the double bluff. Strassman confused, so it's working. <laughs> He's like French Michael Sarah. <laughs> I can't deal with yeah. this. He's, he's like a French Michael Sarah. Come on. Just gets a fold from sheer awkwardness. No. So on. Come on, sell it. So on. No. And then I made a good spot. Yeah, yeah, really. You fold the king queen? That's sick. You can't fold king queen then. <laughs> then I made a good spot. Yeah. If you don't show. In, in the mind of the average punter, that's what B Suave Bond would do. We know that that makes him a total schmuck. <laughs> <laughs>
buy-in has a direct value of the chips. So the, the, they are effectively tournament right. chips, but 100 k actually equates to $100,000. Yes, it's basically a cash scan you can't walk away from. So, yeah. Yes, because Bond tips with a chip at the end. So, <laughs> oh, let's not go into that. Because no, not... but that's what I'm saying. Look, in my mind, which may, in my mind, if it's a winner take all cash game, then everything about this works for me. Yeah, yeah that's very kind of you, Jake. To be honest, I think it should be re- should be recognised as a tournament because that's yes. what it was. And and the chip at the end is again, it's one of those things where we could have had Bond, you know, root around in his back pocket <laughs> and, and and gain out some chewing. Can I write gum, you a you check? Know. I would have less of an um, issue if then Herr Mendel <laughs> referred to the one hundred and fourteen point five million that Bond had because five hundred k had gone to the dealer. Um, but Tom, you very kindly have shared the hand history because i think it's important to say in the film we join the action on the turn the turn card is dealt but we don't know how we got to this point with these four players and i think the stacks are important here we're talking about 115 million in chips because there were 10 original buy-ins and five players decided to rebuy for 5 million so 115 million in chips we know because the dealer's already established, or the, the, the floor person who sat in the umpire's chair, uh, that the blinds are 500k and a million. And we've got two short stacks at the table. So we've got Mr. Fakutu, who's got 12 big blinds. We've got Infante, who's got 11 big blinds. But this is, comes back to the point I was saying earlier. We can sit here and say, well, they should be playing all in or fold Hold'em. They should not be just limping. They shouldn't be like calling like 4 million or 5 million bets without shoving. But that assumes that they're playing perfectly. They, they might play not know badly. That. They play badly in this hand, and that's fine. Not everyone plays poker well. Um, I had always assumed that there would have been some kind of pre-flop raise. But interestingly, everyone just limps. So Bond's in the small blind. Fakutu's in the big blind. That means Infante limps with eights. Le Chief limps on the button with a six. Bond completes with 7-5 of spades, and Fakutu checks his option with king-queen of spades. I do think it's weird that none of these players decide to raise pre, that Infante and Fakutu don't go with these pretty premium holdings forehanded, but it's not impossible. It's not even improbable. It just means everyone's playing either cautiously or imperfectly, right? I think the, the two most questionable players, as you say, are Infanto and, and Fakutu. <laughs> is that their plays in that hand are probably the least justifiable. But, of course, they're supposed to be the weakest players. As, as, you, as you say, there are going to be weaker players there who can get through to the end. Le Chief calling with a6, I mean, it's not a terrible play. And, of course, Bond in the small blind with a, with a big old stack of Le Chief's uh, flat calling, or rather completing with 7-5. Again, it's, it's not a terrible play for my money. So, Tom, I guess my question about this hand is, how did this hand evolve? Yes. Did it start with, I want it to end this way? How do we make that happen? Either Martin or the screenwriter saying it. Did it start with them saying, uh, with them coming to you and saying, can you design a hand that has everyone all in by the river? Like, what, how exactly did this hand get written? Basically, it was written when I arrived. It, 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 the actual hands were written as are, and, and I was pretty happy with what was there. The main difference between what, we started with and what we ended with was the bet sizes. So in the previous version of the script, um, the main pot between all four of them was, was actually bigger than the side pot between Le Chief and Bond. And, and clearly that just means that the final action it becomes irrelevant because they're, they're being sucked into the pot anyway, never mind the fact that it's supposed to be all about Le Chief versus Bond. So that kind of got worked out on set when Martin Campbell was there and, and Le Chief uh, was on my side here. He was saying, look, this, this is crazy. It's me staring at, at Daniel across his chips and all the, all the other chips are over there. This is <laughs> so the, the shooting stopped then for about 90 minutes and God knows how much it must have cost to stop you know, everything for 90 minutes. Uh, while we talked about it, we sort of moved chips around in real time just to see what would make sense. Um, and then it, it sort of made sense and, and shooting went back to everyone sort of basically, basically came back from the canteen and said, OK, they've got it out of their system now. Now can we go, go on with making a movie? <laughs> and so when you say that the hand uh, was written, uh, all right, was it written start to finish or just uh, from where we see it in the movie? 
So the the actual uh, full hand had been written down in sort of a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet, so so I could see what was happening. <clears throat> and, but the, the script, as shown in the movie, started, I think, uh, as you say, on the is it the turn or the it's on the turn. Show? It's on the turn. Yeah, the turn. Yeah. So Bond Bond has ever has the biggest stack at the start of the hand, forty six point five million. Le Chief, only one million less, forty five point five million. And we've established that Fakuta and Infante have twelve and eleven million respectively. Everyone limps, and we get to this ace, six, eight flop with two spades. So Bond already has a straight flush draw. Le Chief has two pair. Uh, Infante has a set, and Fakutu has the flush draw. And again, I should say very quickly, there is that infamous meme of Mads Mikkelsen where it says, calls a raise out of position with ace, six, offsuit, um, loses $115 million and dies. Number one, he's in position. He's on the button. Number two, no raise. We now know there was no raise pre-flop. This is new information. I don't think this has ever I been I mean, we just changed the meme to, to limps the button instead, and yeah. it still works. He, he's, he still probably makes a mistake, but that's by the by. Um, so this is interesting, Tom. So in, in the hand history, everyone checks the action to Le Chiffre on the button, who bets five million, who overbets the pot with two pair, and all players call. And again, at this point, it would be very easy to say, what the hell are players like Fakuto and Infante doing just calling off half their chips? They're committing themselves to the pot. Infante's got a set and should be betting to protect. Fakuto's got a monster draw. He should be going with it. But again, if you establish that these aren't very good poker players, it makes sense. Yeah, also don't forget, Infante might just be hoping that the Chief will do his betting for him. You know, there are other reasons of the situation. Uh, he might think that Nashif's going to bet this flop, whether he's, he's got a piece of it or not. So there, there's a motive there for him to do what he does. Uh, so I don't mind that so much. Yeah. yeah. So the four of spades is the absolute killer card because that is now giving Bond the straight flush. It's giving him the winning hand. Uh, it also does give Fakutu, the, it gives him a flush, a losing flush. And, well... Everyone's drawing dead. But regardless of that, everyone now checks. And that's in the movie. Everyone checks the turn. And I get that from everyone's perspective. There's a lot of slow playing going on. I guess there's some caution from Le Chief. Now the spade has come. And then we get the ace of spades on the river. So now, of course, the Kutu impl- improves to the nut flush. Um, we see Infante river a full house. And Le Chief river a better full house. Bond still ahead with the straight flush. This is one of those situations which I guess is highly improbable, but it's not impossible. And, I mean, Joe, we've covered a lot of poker on around the world. We've covered a lot of televised tournaments. It's not beyond the realms of possibility that you would have something this ridiculous. No, not at all. And so when I first saw this movie, it was I'd been in poker for one year. And so my sort of ex- – I thought I was an expert – Uh, And I hadn't really, and I thought I had seen a lot of poker. And so this came across to me as very unrealistic. And then 15 years later, having watched tons of poker, thousands and thousands of hands, it's become less and less unrealistic to me over the years. This shit does happen. Yeah. There are wild things that happen in poker. And I've really come to realize that, like, I was being way too hard on it at the time. Coolers happen all the time. And in fact, I I, I would contend that. Tournaments are decided by coolers way more often than someone making a hero call. Way more often than someone outplaying someone else. It's almost always, how often, James, are we doing poker tournaments where we're three and four hand and we're like, when will this end? And we're just waiting for the cooler to happen. It's true. And we have seen a four-way all-in to end a final table. It's Yes, we have. It, it happened seven years ago at the Canada Cup. But anyway, back to Casino Royale, Tom. And, of course, the hand then plays itself because everyone just gets all their chips in, right? I think, you know, we've established that really players like Fakuta and Infante should have got their chips in sooner. But the reality is they're all in on the river, playing for the side pot, the big battle between Le Chiffre and Bond. I mean... I get, again, why they did it for dramatic purposes, where everyone reveals their cards in turn. Did you point out that Bond is effectively slow-rolling everyone? (laughs) No, because, of course, in in the mind of the average punter, that's what Suave Bond would do. We know that that makes him a total schmuck. (laughs) We, We know that. But, you know, 
most people who walk into a casino for the first time and play a hand of poker, and they get they, they get a big hand. They think that's what they're supposed to do, and they can't understand why they're getting all the abuse they get when they they slow roll it. Uh, and never mind the fact that the sheep is slow rolled him so appallingly earlier with his, his jack. So you know it is poetic justice there. So it, it was always going to be like that, you know. And likewise with the the very slow. Uh, revelation of hands in the wrong order. Obviously, they should sort out the side pot first and then go to yeah. the little tiny main pots. But it, you know, it's just not going to happen because then for Kutu and Infante, all they've done becomes irrelevant. So it's a bit yeah. weird to have shown them in the first place is what is what the, the sort of Miva go thinks and then find out, okay, well, where did they go? What, what were their hands worth? Tom, so, I, sorry, James. I, one uh, question I want to get in there because I think we're nearing at the end of our time. Is, is there anything that you beg them not to do that's what i was going to ask that you like that you're please don't do this please 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 don't do this and they did it anyway <laughs> no not really the only okay. thing i was i was super worried about was was a clangor of bonds basically going all in when he thought the sheep was bluffing once that was in place i was happy to let the drama roll so when you look Fair back enough. at it now are you generally happy is there anything you think now i would suggest differently or have tried to steer them in a different direction no, not really. I'm super happy with it. I, I thought it was, it was great poker. I really did. Well, if you're a fan of great poker, you're in the right place. We're in London for the PokerStars European Poker Tour as day three of the main event continues here at the Hilton Park Lane, hosted by the Hippodrome Casino. And we have got great players coming to the main stage. A new feature table for you to see. We have got Martin Jakobsen. We have got Adrian Mateos. Henrik Hecklin. Eric Seidel. And a whole host of others as well as we go to the 3-6 line level. Mateos, a former EPT champion. Jakobsen, a two-time runner-up. Hecklin, a super high roller winner here in London just a couple of days ago. And Eric Seidel, well... Eric Seidel was playing poker before most of you were born. It's not an exaggeration. It's a fact. It's a hashtag fun fact. I am James Haskin. Sat alongside me is Nicholas Walsh. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. And a reminder of the prize money here at EPT London. Total prize pool of £3.6 million. Pounds. We're now paying out more than 11 k as players are eliminated. Once we get to the final table on Friday, life-changing money. With more than half a million quid up top, £664,000 sterling. <laughs> Excited to see these players, Nick. Now, I know we saw many of them on some of the feature tables from yesterday, but any time we get players of Mateos and Jakobsen and Seidel's calibre, playing on camera i'm excited absolutely me too and that's exactly why we run these kinds of cards up coverage events ebt line in 2022 was absolutely stacked and this table is exactly what we're looking to see can't wait to see what they have for us in store about to get cards in the air once again as all the players in the room return from break 60 of them coming back that means the average stack right now is 380,000. Oh, seems we're at 59. Must have lost someone at the end of the last session. So we're coming back with 59 players from the 749 who started in this 5K main event. Martin Jakobsen still pretty short here. 17 big blinds. Not the shortest stack at this table. But Imko Jukara, who we also saw yesterday, has 90k. Fewer than 15 big blinds. Henrik Hecklin playing 40 bigs. Seidel, 70 bigs. Paul Fontan is the table chip leader. Could be the overall chip leader right now, Nick, with more than a million. Yeah, absolutely. We have seen that top spot fluctuating, but all those guys sitting with 170 big blinds. That's just so many big blinds, James. Honestly, in tournament poker, we so frequently try and navigate our way, you know, between 100 and 20. In this, situa in this situation, of course, 170 big blinds considerably deeper than most turns would even allow at this stage. 
So a reminder, we want to hear from you. Live chat on Twitch, live chat on YouTube. Hashtag Pokestars TV on Twitter. I have one, two, three, four, five, six screens in front of me. And I will try to pay attention to all of them. I'm also going to try my best, guys. So get in touch with us. We want to hear from you. Let us know how you're feeling. And occasionally we'll really cue really you. I know that hat. That is Christian Rudolph's hat. That is the hat worn by Seven's guy at EPT Barcelona in 2014, where the meme was born. Wow. Yeah, well spotted. Right here, it's being worn by Adam Miller from the UK, who's raised from the hijack with King Queen. He's made it 12K. And I believe it's a raise in the ticket. Hand number 27, how exciting. Well spotted, James. It's always coming seven. So this is the second of five levels we are expecting to play on day three of the main event. Leviathan de Paris asks, where is Ola? Ola Shemian is on one of the other tables. It was our feature table for the first level, but that table is breaking soon. The players will be redistributed. You never know. We could get lucky, could get Shemian on the main stage. Or, of course, we could mix it up and change the feature table again today at some point. Yeah, it's like James was saying earlier. We kind of selfishly want all the big dogs just to survive so we can see him duke it out. See him really flex in some of these more interesting deep stack situations that we can only really see in these luxury blind level tournaments. These extra, extra long um, style tournament structures that we've come to enjoy at EPT London. Okay, the sickest and classicest of races about to unfold here. As we see Martin Jakobsen get it in with Queens after Miller opened with Ace King suited. A little under 100. Miller makes the call, putting Jakobsen at risk, but Martin does get it in good. Queens the best hand for now, but there are still five cards to come. It's a classic race, James. Classic race. It is the sickest. It is the classicest. Martin looking for those queens to hold. He is the at-risk player here. We get an 8-8-7 eight, eight, flop with two hearts. Miller with five outs. Those are the five cards that Martin will need to fade. So far, so good. 87% favorite. Unless one of those five cards hits the river, he doubles up and survives. Boom. Full house on the river. Martin Jakobsen survives, now playing more than 200k. Yeah, very nice hold there. Super important you win your flips at this stage if you want to remain in the tournament. And all that money is to come. It's all up at the top. Huge spot. And a horrible spot for Adam Miller, who is now playing fewer than 10 big blinds. Martin Jakobsen closer to 35 big blinds. referenced yesterday that it was season seven of the European Poker Tour which took place in 2010 to 2011 when Martin Jakobsen had two second place finishes lost heads up in Villamora lost heads up in Deauville they made the final table of Berlin I think came fourth in that event that was eventually won by Ben Wolanowski Jakobsen then of course a regular in the high rollers and super high rollers 2014 won the World Series of Poker main event and just a few days ago, beat Connor Beresford heads up to win the UK IPT main here in London. Interestingly, both Martin and Connor going deep in the EPT main. Yeah, you love to see it. These guys are just out here crushing so much experience as we see the pocket nines. Kojikaru all in. And uh, the series is asking for a count here. Yeah, this is... Nicolas Vassiris from France with the king-queen suited. I can't help but read his name as though it's uh, from House of Dragon, James, for any of you guys enjoying that series. Vassiris. 
Still have not watched a single episode. I'm not boycotting it. I have every intention of watching it. I just was kind of waiting for it to finish so I could then just yeah. watch the entire season. Oh, I understand. Still makes the fold. Seidel makes the fold. And Shot gets three. Yeah, it's a raise and a take it. I mean, honestly, nines is getting to the stage where you actually don't mind getting called because you will be in good shape a lot of the time. And it's getting big enough where you can still get called by like eights and sevens and stuff like that where, yeah. you know, you're going to be a huge, huge favorite and oh, even some up. other aces, aces that you can dominate too. But raise and a take it's fine too. Bit of chat on Twitch about Mini EPT London, which is the online series running now, complementing what we're presenting on the stream. You're watching the EPT. Why not play the Mini EPT? Three tournaments a day. The first one's just started. Currently in Late Reg. It's a $5.58 game tournament. There'll be a $3.30 PKO later on. And then an $11 event this evening. And of course, there are WCOOP tickets added to the prize pool of every single tournament. So fairly standard open here from the button. Right. And now we get the three bet from Eric Seidel in the small blind and Hecklin folds the a6 i really like that size as well doesn't need to go the whole hog here he knows he's applying a lot of pressure from the small blind there he, plus he's got a legit hand as well i mean Obviously we uh, have the shot clock on the beach table today nick the shot clock coming into play at the start of day three and it'll be there for the rest of this tournament uh Five 30-second time bank cards distributed to each player at the start of today. They get additional cards on each day moving forward. Doesn't look like Mateos has any cards left unless they're hiding behind his chips. <laughs> Oh, I can hear Toby Stone, our TD in the background, announcing the prizes in the mystery bounty. Yep. It's just gone 2 p.m. local time. And that means the desk is open and players can start claiming those bounties. 100K in one of those envelopes. Yeah. Platinum Pass in another one of those envelopes. Very exciting. That mystery bounty format is a lot of fun. If you guys ever get the chance to come and watch some of those openings, it really, really is cool to see the players taking their shot at the big money. Jackpot of clubs. Definitely a hand that could be defended here, but Adam Miller, of course, down to just seven big blinds, so it's really, really, really not advisable to be entering pots where you're going to be basically committed no matter what once you've made that call. And uh, extra, extra painful, James, when you're playing tournaments that have a big blind ante, yeah, when it comes around and you're the short stack, oh my days, is it punishing. It really, really hurts when it's your big blind because you're effectively putting in two big blinds instead of just the one that you would do if there was no antis in play. And uh, yeah, as a short stack, you really have to know how to navigate that. If you're inexperienced with the big blind anti guys, make sure you give it a look up before you play one of these events because it really changes the way that you're going to play into short stacks, how you're going to play into the antis, how you're supposed to defend your big blind, etc. And it does make a difference. Mateos here, 65 big blinds to start the hand, is going to go ahead and open the pot with force. Bit of side chat about time bank cards on Twitch. Tommy are close. Makichi Bodzikovsky used eight time bank cards pre-flop, if I remember correctly. It was ten. Ten time bank cards used by Makita at the final table of the Super High Roller in Monte Carlo when he was deciding whether to get involved with ace-king, eventually made the fold. It was the right lay down. His opponent had kings. But yes, 10 time bank cards were deployed.
So in reference to Adam Miller, it's pretty short right now, but 5-4, not a hand you want to take a stand with. Mataus has opened under the gun with fours. Jakobsen in the big with aces. Talk about waking up in the big blind. Big blind special for Jakobsen. Started the hand with probably about 36 big blinds before he had to put in those two we just mentioned for both his ante and his big blinds. So 34 big blinds effective. I imagine there's probably just a three bet here. Uh, three bet was to 42,000. I really like this from Jakobsen as well. I think a lot of players can be tempted to be like, ooh, smaller is better here, want action. But you yeah. have to be balanced. And I think if he did have a three bet from that position, it would be on the larger side. So he's keeping that keeping that, um, keeping that, that pattern, keeping that nice and balanced. And of course, when you're facing an under the gun open there as well, you will encounter a lot more strong hands. Generally speaking, that's a stronger range, as we like to say. So the larger size might even convince your opponent to get it in with, you know, tens, jacks, queens, kings all of which are fantastic for those aces. Two folds, round two, under the gun, plus two. Hecklin, was it Hecklin who won our super high roller? Gym? Yes, it was the 50K. Man, what a score as well, absolutely massive. It's going to open up the very pretty ace king of strawberries. It started with 211. Jakobsen, very playable hand here. Ace eight suited. Might be tempted to call. I think there's a lot of calls with these suited aces in these scenarios. Does make the call. A whole lot of nothing for Jakobsen. Hecklin doesn't connect either, but on these textures, Ace-King will be the best hand very frequently. The only concern, I think, is probably about the Jack. There are quite a few Queen-Jack suited, King-Jack suited, Jack-10 suited calls from this position. So Hecklin might check behind here just in anticipation of that. I love this check from Hecklin. Yes, sir. Such an interesting spot when both players know these ranges so well, James. It's like Jakobsen is the kind of player that will go, if he's checking this flop, he probably has ace high, which probably has me out kicked, which means I probably need to turn my hand into a bluff. But it is so difficult to make those reads in, mo in the moment. And of course, you don't really frequently want to turn something that has considerable showdown into a bluff. Two checks again, as expected. King on the river, though, for Hecklin. And surely there's some value here at this point. I am sure. And don't call me Shirley. Thirty six K in the middle. That is twenty thousand, so about sixty six percent pot, a little bit more maybe. And a quick fold. Pretty standard stuff. Nice run out there for the ace king to try and get some value, but uh, no dice. Eklund hovering around the 40 big blind mark right now. I'm guessing someone just pulled a good prize. Sounds like it. Chip leader Paul Fontan. Ace four suited, raises.
bad news, Nick. I reference the fact that we started this level with 59, not 60 players. That's because there was an elimination right at the end of the last level. We are no longer able to follow Ramon. He was KO'd by Connor Beresford, who is currently chip leader with 1.2 million. Here's your hashtag fun fact. It was Ramon who knocked Connor out of EPT Monte Carlo. Situation reversed here in London. But it was Ramon who bust in 60th place. I mean, still another deep run. Still another decent cash, another decent result. Continuing to prove his worth. Yeah, absolutely. Ramon just so consistently crushing these fields. So consistently in the money. Very, very proud to call him a member of Team Pro. He really represents us so well. And just such a professional. Honestly, killing it. I mean, to be fair, we were able to follow Ramon on a Monday and a Tuesday, but we are no longer following Ramon. Yeah, following Ramon. Yeah. Hey. Hey. All right, guys, back to the action here. Saw a raise from Seidel and a call from the pocket eights in the big blind. Uh, and a check and a bet. Continue from the pocket eights, of course. Okay, the ace on the turn, of course, means those eights are going to be good a little bit more often. But it's kind of a two-pronged situation, isn't it, James? You know, when they have the ace, you're probably going to end up giving them some more chips. Yeah. But also it makes it, makes it considerably less likely that they do have that ace when the board pairs. Straighty pad board. Gets checked to showdown. Well, the eights are good. Seidel Mux. Top all in the chat says, Why doesn't PokerStars have an app like Triton so we can follow the outer tables and have live chip updates? Um, I think you'll find we do have a fantastic app. We do. The PokerStars Live app does give you all that information. Uh, it is actually a very well-designed app. I've been using a lot of it ever since it was released when we were in Barcelona. Go give it a download. Um, it has all that sweet information. But, of course, as always, guys, if you don't want to be spoiled, maybe download it and use it at another time. Yeah, so the app has all the information you're looking for. And the question should have been, is there an app, rather than why doesn't PokerStars have one? Because you kind of made yourself look a bit silly there, didn't you? But... Because it's designed for the players, it doesn't respect the 30-second delay on the stream. Therefore, you are going to get information that hasn't been revealed on stream yet. So Fontan with aces. Yes, 30 minutes delay. Correct, 30 minutes. 30 seconds would probably not be enough to protect the integrity <laughs> of this tournament. Well spotted, Chad. Well spotted. So clever, so clever, as always. So big blind is going to come along here. King four of hearts. Really, really nice combo to complete with here in the big blind. Or defend, excuse me, in a multi-way pot. Lots of dead money in there, especially with that big blind anti in play. Okay, so a pair of 10s for Mateos. Hecklin pretty much bricks. Fontan still favorite with the overpair. We do see the aces check on this texture, and I think this is a very, very interesting hand to analyze because a lot of players just go, well, I have aces, and uh, you know, what am I, okay, I'm just going to smash in a huge bet here because what about the clubs, what about the straight draws? You get yourself into a lot of trouble on these kinds of textures, especially when you've got players like Mateos um, flatting from that position where he will be flopping two pairs, he will be flopping flushes, he will be flopping one pair of straight draws that are just not going to get out of the way. It is much better to actually have some pot control here once in a while with the aces. You do underrep your hand to a certain degree as well, but you just don't want to end up getting into a huge pot with aces where you've got no redraw with the clubs or anything like that. 
And uh, sure enough, Mateos did have one of those combinations that can do you a lot of damage if you allow the pot to get out of control. But, oh, all clubs on board. Everyone is playing the flush on board because neither player, none of these three players has a club. Um, so if this goes to showdown, they are going to divide this pot equally between three. I have a flush. Me too. <laughs> Everyone has a flush. And because these players get to chop this pot, you know what they say, Nick? Everyone, Everyone loves to chop pot! Falsetto. I'm glad you picked up on that. I've been working on it behind the scenes. You guys have no idea how much rehearsal goes into those moments. As we round into hand number 37, ladies and gentlemen. Cards back in the air. Quick fold from Fontaine onto the gun. King three off. Ace Jack for Miller here. And he is six big blinds effective. I think we all know how this is going to go. Are you saying it's Miller time? I'm saying it's Mi Oh, for a minute, for a minute, I thought he was just going to make the call. Well, he is not all not in. Not all in. Not all in, though. You guys see what he did with the chips there. There's a few little chippies behind. It's a virtual all in from Miller. I think he may have just left the one chip on oh, top yeah. of his cards. Chip in a chair? Oh, this is so unfortunate. The king himself, king of the series. Makes the call on the button. Hacklin's folded the small blind. It's 39. Mm -hmm. King of the series, first of his name. King of the Andals in the first That's man. So Miller at risk and behind a domination situation. What you gonna do? Probably go broke. Ah, uh, yeah. Just waiting for our uh, lovely dealer to get set up so we can see how the runout's gonna go. Yeah, this is going to be hard for Miller to come back from. Oh, he's going to need, what is it, running jacks? Or, yeah, I guess it's just the jacks. It is over on the turn. Adam Miller eliminated. Lunch. And cashes out from the EPT London main event. And I think that's going to leave us with 55 players. So Miller will receive £11,200 in prize money. Everyone else gets a ladder. We now see a jump in the payouts. £12,900 now guaranteed by all the remaining players. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you didn't stop. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we do have a seat open right now at the feature table. I was hoping that someone's going to bust because the, the showdown's so slow at the feature table. <laughs> I 
guess you can't stall that much with the main yeah, radius. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 30 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Holding round. Got some blind be blind action here now. Side L. First to act, 8 5 yeah. off. <laughs> Got about 66 big, big blinds, guys. Just FYI. I think for the most part, you're going to see a limp here and then a check from Fontaine. It's totally possible for him to try and raise and play this hand in position, but when you're playing someone of Seidel's caliber, I don't know how out of line you want to get in these scenarios, especially at the deeper stack depths when it's probably not going to be nearly as effective. You're going to have way more limp calls, and you're not going to get that through pre-flop as often as you might like. Yep, seems good. Just a stab on the flop. Usually we'll do it, especially in an unraised pot. And sure enough, taking it down. See how nice that was? You see that little, you see that little blind v blind spot, James? Yeah. Little limpy, limpy, stabby, stabby scenario. Very, very common situation you guys should be comfortable with because if you're playing a lot of tournament poker or sit and go poker, there is a lot of that sort of call, small blind, stab, high, high card flop. And it's very effective, especially against weaker opponents who have no floats. Mateos opening under the gun with King Queen. Queen Jack for Mateos. Folds. Ackland's out. Eric Seidel with Ace Nine of Hearts. So again, side out here, guys. 68 big blinds. The tails with about 59. So the effective stack here is something in the region of 60 big blinds. I think this is probably going to be a call a lot of the time. These suited aces have great playability. Sure enough, that is what side out decides to do. Now, small blind when there's two players in the pot. Now, Ooh. this could be a little squeeze scenario, but I think he could do it either way. I think you want to be in this pot. Calling or raising reasonable makes the call. But and what a spot for Martin <laughs> Jakobsen. Ace King in the bag with so much dead money out there. Oh, uh, James, he just keeps waking up with it in the big blind. He did it with the ace. He's, and now, because there's so many limpers, the squeeze looks so much weaker, right? Yes. It looks like he's trying to pull off a classic squeeze play. In this case, he's going to be all in, though. He'll take it. Yeah, that's a huge pickup with his stack. Yeah, so Jakobsen had around 35 big blinds. He's now got close to 45 bits. Yep, yep, absolutely. And that's why learning how to play some of these shorter stacks situations is so important because you accrue chips at such a rapid yeah. rate if you can find these little spots. Of course, waking with Ace-King in the big blind seems like a pretty straightforward, easy one for most people to pull off. But if you can find some bluffs in there once in a while as well, it's just absolutely massive. And you can really propel yourself to the top of the leaderboard very, very quickly at non-showdown, if you so desire. This is a fair question from someone watching on YouTube. Wow. I know. I, I, I thought you'd never say that. Saying that often. Uh, ben 10 says, why are people looking at the cards when it's their turn and not earlier? So this is something, uh, a lot of people have different sort of little rituals, but many players believe that they don't want to look at their cards ahead of time because they might give off tells that other players can pick up on um, when it's their decision to act into them. So if you're in the small blind or you're the big blind, you're one of the last players to act, and you look down at your cards and you see that you're strong, you might be giving off tells to the opponents who are considering making a, a looser race to try and steal your blind, for example. There's other, other situations too. But in doing so, you have a little bit more control. You look down at your cards and you are only taking in the information when it's on you to act for that reason. I know a lot of people that do a bit of both, though, honestly. Yeah. It's, uh, it's whatever works for you, and it really depends on the kind of games you play in. Most people are very concerned about other players picking up on their tells, but I can tell you from experience, most players don't even know what they have, let alone how you look while you're looking at your cards either. So not something to be too concerned about. But when you're playing at this level, every little helps for sure. King high flop. And somehow Mateus' fours are still good. Yeah, 
couple of people in the chat saying as well, you know, also if you're not looking at your cards, you have the opportunity to observe others. That's also true. Um, you know, I've, I think also if you're going to look ahead of time, somebody said, oh, you have more time to think about what you're going to do in different scenarios. Honestly, I've always thought looking is fine. It's not that big a deal in most cases. So interestingly, Fontan, who's just got queen high, bets the flop, gets a fold from Jakobsen, Mateos calls, and there is a pair of eights now for Fontan. Goes check, check. Five on the river. Check to showdown. Fontan wins this pot off Mateos. Mars Streamer asks, James, do you play at all in any of these events? I played an EPT main event back in 2005, EPT Deauville, but that was before I worked on the tour. It's very difficult to work full time on the live stream slash TV production and play. So no is the short answer to the question. Nick, on the other hand, because he loves it so much. When he's done commentating, he's out there jumping into whatever event is running, whatever event he can squeeze into. <laughs> whatever event, I feel like donating some money. Well, to. you donated to a charity last night. You played the charity event. I did, indeed. I played the charity event last night. It was a $550 buy-in um, charity event and um, ended up final tabling it. Oh, my days. I know. Unbelievable, everyone. I know. Um, also didn't realize that it was a two-day event and <laughs> I had to be here for commentary. Managed to convince them to just run it as a one-day. So thank you very much to the lovely dealers who took care of us. I know it, it wasn't just me. A lot of other players wanted to play it out. But um, GG to everyone who took part and we managed to raise 9000 for our selected charity. So shout out to those guys and thank you for organizing it, PokerStar. To be fair, in the past I have played a couple of EPT charity events and, and cashed or, or at least won prizes in, a, in EPT charity events. But that's when they've been like at the start of the festival, like before we started streaming. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Don't, 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 don't put the charity event up against world famous bubble coverage. You know, my heart <laughs> is always, always going to be with the bubble. I understand. Along with my paycheck. <laughs> Uh, most of my paycheck goes back to back into EPT London. So. <laughs> no, it's been fantastic. Everything's been very well run. And um, if you guys have never seen the venue here, honestly, it's a really beautiful place to play poker. They've got some really, really nice rooms, great lighting, great tables. Yeah. We've got these really luxurious, beautiful EPT tables, and they're really comfy. And, yeah, it's uh, – it, it really is the way poker is meant to be played. And fantastic dealers, as always. The best dealers in the world. Yeah. Well, when Joe and I recorded the most recent podcast and we looked back at EPT London's of yesteryear, we talked about the fact that historically EPT London was at the Vic. Then it moved to a different Hilton, the Hilton Metropole on Edgware Road. Yep, then it was at the Grand Connaught Rooms in Covent Garden for a couple of years. Wow. This is definitely the best venue that we've ever had for EPT London. Absolutely. Absolutely agree. And we have a red triangle here, James. Yeah, we have got the short stack. Kozukaru all in with Queen 10. Mateos opened the button with 9 8. Not going to call here. The shove gets through. Yep, sounds about right. Just a little bit like Mateos opening wider there to try and exploit one of the shorter stacks, but he's not having any of it. You love to see it. Raven says, Hey, commentators, are you going to the Bahamas in January? Hey, viewer. Yes. Yes. We will be there. I cannot wait. And that's also in a new venue as well, isn't it, James? Yeah, it is. Bahama. Never been there. Never seen it. Someone tells me there is a very interesting documentary series about the 
building of the resort. Probably a bit of a puff piece, a bit of advertising job for them, but I'm interested to see it. Oh, yeah. I, I hadn't heard about that. I'll definitely check that out. Blind v blind. So where are we at right now? Fifty one big blinds for the series. Hecklin behind him with thirty six. So the effective stack here is about thirty six, thirty eight big blinds, something like that. I think 10 7 CD can go either way at this stack depth. If you do want to open, you probably want to be opening like 3.5, 4 big blinds, something like that. As played, I think limping is totally cool as well. It's probably going to be a 50 50 split between a raise and a limp here, but you're always going to want to play this combo from this position. And to the flop, will it be a repeat of what we just saw with Seidel? A little blind v blind, stabby stabby scenario. I think it's perfectly reasonable just to go ahead and. Oh, are we seeing the same pattern emerge again? What's this? Yeah, there you go. Bet to take it. Lazy Talent asks, Reg from Spain. It's possible. I'm not 100% sure what you're referring to. If you are asking if the mini EPT London series is available in Spain, the answer is yes. There is a series for our French and Spanish viewers on the Southern European PokerStars client, also awarding tournament tickets. And there was also an EPT Prague package up for grabs in the mini main event on Friday. Fontan decides that 8-7 suited is good enough to play here. I agree with him. 8-7 suited, very pretty hand to play from UTG. Opens it up. Folds round to the small blinds. Oh, it was a follow-up comment to the question, Mateos, fish or reg? Oh. Mateos, one of the best players in the world. Hands down. Uh, I think there's absolutely no question whatsoever. One of the best to have ever done it, in fact. Really, really fantastic player. So Seidel currently with the best hand. But uh, very hard to know if that's the case, especially facing the UTG Open, who's going to have a significantly tighter range. A lot of times you're going to be dominated here with your king high. I think it's a bet and a fold. Yeah, it's just a pretty standard defend and then a bet and a fold scenario a lot of the time. When you guys are watching these... these um, these productions, I think it's really important that you note the kind of hands that these players are defending, but also bear in mind that they've got a lot of experience with how to play post-flop, and they're not getting crazy out of line, right? Eric Seidel, fantastic poker player, incredibly accomplished, has been playing the game forever, completely up to date with today's meta. He knows what he wants to defend in those scenarios, but also no, nothing to fancy. King seven on that texture, just, uh, just get out of the way. Easy game. And if you are going to have these wider defends, you can't be caught up in the, the heat of the moment and you know, let, let the hand run away with you where it ends up costing you too much. Otherwise, that defend can end up costing you your chips. the blinds and Seidel completes in the small table chip leader Paul Fontan has king 10 in the big Why Pi isn't playing the 558 game? 
on stars because there's a 550 pound eight game actually here at the hill <laughs> he's playing the proper ept rather than mini ept i mean can he do it two EPTs in a row let's not forget that our our boy Pi brought home the horse event another he mixed did. game event in barcelona i would love to see him do well in today's a game i mean he's got to be good at something you know what i mean true that so Seidel improves in inverted commas to a pair of sixes still way behind Fontaine. And this is a very, very well-timed continuation here. And I've, I've got no doubt in my mind he's doing this for value. Given the pattern here pre-flop, there's a limp, a check, a check on the flop, which very often is not going to be a queen. A lot of the queen X will just go ahead and lead flop here in the same way that we saw the lead when it came high cards earlier, right? So a player like Seidel will balance the queen 10 7 bet yeah. in situations where he has bluffs, but he'll also do it when he has top pairs too, and he won't miss that bet. So king 10 by process of elimination is just going to be a really strong combination because you're going to get looked up by worse tens where you've got them uh, where you've got them out kicked. So two very well timed bets in this case not getting value from the king six. However, I know Fontaine knows exactly where he's at for that reason, and it's, it's those little levels that give you a huge, huge edge. Finding value where others might be more timid and taking a more passive line on the turn, concerned about his opponent having a queen, etc. So roughly halfway through this level, the second of five levels to be played on day three. And the action starts with Adrian Mateos raising under the gun. No, he has the ace of hearts. Don't know what his other card is yet. We know that Aceus has jacks. Fontan has the Spraggy, ace seven offsuit. He is folded. So ace jack for Mateos against the jacks of Vesers, and it's a queen eight five flop. in the world for the jacks here i think uh there might be some value to be had now at this stage decides to check instead very interesting and king of diamonds on the river not pretty for the jacks If anyone can get a fold here, it's Adrian Mateos. And Jack's going the bin. Mateos. Too good. Joseph Stapleton, welcome back. Hello, my babies. Good to be back. Looks like I missed, what, 10 eliminations? Yeah, well, actually you've missed eight. We finished the last level. We thought we were down to 60, actually 59, because on the very last hand, we lost Ramon. Oh, no. No, we can't follow him anymore. It would be weird if we did. Not even on a Monday. 
<laughs> Wait, it's a Tuesday, though. Not even on a Tuesday. Oh, brutal. Henrik Hecklin. Become a pretty big fan of this guy over the last couple of years. If you haven't heard his name, you haven't been paying attention. 214. Hecklin Jakobsen matchup would be fun to watch, but we're going to fold King 10 in the small blind. A good to know. It's incredible that since I won that World Series main event, see how much more I'm paying attention now. <laughs> I think I think it's always interesting to to try and learn more about yourself and what motivates oneself. And I feel like millions of dollars has an effect on a lot. I of have people. a vested interest now yeah. in getting better at poker. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> top set for Hecklin. <laughs> oh, like I've just that like just pulled King Ten in the small blind. Like, got it. Yeah. If Martin Jacobson does it, it's right. Exactly. Yeah. Easy as that. Hecklin, following one of my oldest rules, always bet your sets. That's a great rule. That's a great rule. There, uh, there are can, very few exceptions to that rule. You, you, exactly. You can almost always justify betting a set, and there's very few spots where it's ever going to be much better to check it, and you should basically almost never be folding it as well. Right. Quick shout out to Phil R. Sending his love. Maybe you guys read that tweet already. If not, he deserves a second shout out. Hey, buddy. He's really enjoying the stream. Always supportive. Now's when the real poker starts. Mateos has checked it over to Hecklin for a second time. Hey. And Hecklin is going to continue to bet his set. Ma Jakobsen folds before we can. Sorry, Mateos folds before we can even cut to him. Good times, great oldies. Nick, you remember? Um, you remember how W Coop didn't happen? Uh, well, W Coop happened. It was just our, it was just our final day. The final day, yeah. yeah. Or, or our, our main event day, I should say. Yeah. Well, W Coop 2022 take two for the main events. Five more days of W Coop. First week of November. Guarantees have been increased across the board. Half a million more for the little one. A million more for the middle one. And a million more for the big one. 109, 1K, 10K. And of course, C Coop running pretty much alongside it. Sunday Million on November 6th. It's going to be a 250 euro tournament with a 1 million guarantee, obviously. And there'll be a main event for that tournament series, France and Spain, November 20th. Cards up coverage. Twitch and YouTube for both the C Coop and W Coop Take Two. We're going to be there. We are going to be there. And uh, even though it was a bit of a tragedy what happened for the Take One of the W Coop main events, what I do like about Poker Stars and something I've always been proud of is that when something gets messed up, they just throw money at it afterward, <laughs> and they just make it better. Like, I would have, I would have found a, a better way to phrase it, but that's pretty much exactly no, what's like, happening. like, you know what? Let's pump it up. Let's pump it up. Yeah, no, I was actually going to echo the same thing, Joe. I think I'm really, I'm really pleased to see that the Take Two versions are just amplified versions of the original, and I really, really hope that we see, um, we see those come to fruition. And I'm really excited to to, uh, to crown our official official champions as well. I decided if I ever made an adult film, I would call it Fruition. So you can... Yeah, so people, you know. Hey, 
And number 49, we're back. Nice m message here from Relic Sacred on Twitch. It says, you who are reading this now know that I love you. Sacred poker. It's very kind. Sacred poker. Mateos on the button like Queen Deuce to Diamonds. It's like you don't even know who I am. Of course I want to play this combo. He's opening it up for the exact minimum. Jeremy Vine says, hey, Joe, you should be a comedian. Hey, Jeremy, you should be banned. <laughs> Thanks for coming. That's, uh, that's, a, that's a Griffin line now. I do like that. Jeremy, I'm just kidding. I love you, buddy. Well, you can join us back in a minute. Thank you for being a part of the meme. Chat appreciates you guys. Get your claps in the chat for Jeremy. He's a team player. <laughs> Yar with the keck buy in the chat. I forgot about the keck buy meme. <laughs> Classic. As we rounded to hand number 50, guys, 51 players remain in EPT London, our main event here. Everyone guaranteed 12,900 pounds. Great British pounds. That's pounds sterling. Kojikaru all in from the button. Year of Romania. Eighty-four thousand gets through the two weak queens. Car with 16 big blinds picks up a couple there. Well, I would imagine we're going to see Vadim all in relatively frequently until there's a double up or a bust out. Yep. As we mentioned earlier, the uh, the addition of the big blind antis here means that there are so many extra chips on that table. And as soon as you get under 20 big blinds effective, that means you're increasing your stack by more than 10% every time you get a shove in a call. Isn't that mad? That is very, very significant, something everyone needs to be aware of if you are going to be playing in tournaments. Of course, any tournament with antis, you will have a similar effect, but when you've got a big blind ante, it's always like that, regardless of the number of players at the table. Whereas before, the number of players at the table would have reduced the total antis in play proportionately to the number of players that were not set at the table. Uh-oh. Mateo's flatting with the snowmen's nom nom. Hecklin in the small blind with a couple of ladies. A very strong queen, we'll say. With two weak queens on the last <laughs> hand. This is a queen with a queen kicker. Yep. I mean, it, it, here's a guy that knows how to put in a, a squeeze as a bluff as well. So Absolutely. Mateos might be tempted to make a play like does he ever just like flat with ace and then just ship this back against the three bet very very interesting spot does he ever just flat and try and play the eights from in position heckling the effective stack yes sir so about 30 bigs right yeah there. So that that's after the three bet uh yeah that's after the three bet squeeze excuse me and this is a, a hand and stack size you are absolutely fine with getting those 30 additional big blinds in. 
Yeah, this is where you got to go deep and figure, does this guy even have this line? Early. Yep, we called it. Uh, you called it. Domination situation. Mateos in big, big turbo here. Yeah, you can see what he was thinking. Just bad timing running into the queens here. I know it looks silly when he wakes up with queens, you guys, but this is a man that knows how to three bet squeeze as a bluff, right? You're going to just hit, pick up all that dead with money. With some bluffs and some middling hands that are going to fold exactly. as well. Your ace five suited. Yep, exactly. Your jack exactly. nines occasionally he might decide to do a little three bet bluff with there. And that's a queen on the flop, somewhat decisive. However, that. backdoor spades. You can get the three of spades. Lurking. Oh, man, running spades would be so dark at this point. Lurking in the shadows. Ah. There goes the back door. Spades lock it up for Hecklin. Now don't get me wrong, Joe. Best hand won. We love to see that. Yes. Right? And Hecklin, love the guy. Fantastic stuff. Whereas I, I sense there's a butt coming. There's a butt. The, the spade on the turn for the sweat for the stream. I mean, guys... Would have been fairly hilarious. Just the sweat, though. <coughs> anyway, that's a big stack there. So I think we worked out probably something in the region of 70 big blinds now for Hecklin. In fact, all the way up to 81 with that additional dead money. It's a really, really important pot at this stage. That's a big spot for him. 51 players remaining in this tournament, guys. Next pay jump is at... 39, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, confirmed. 39, all players will get 14,800 US, USDs. No, GBPs, since we're here in London. Stop in chat says, this isn't rigged for maximum entertainment. I know, exactly. That's my point. It is not rigged for maximum entertainment. However, the sheer number of times we get maximum entertainment, <laughs> regardless, is somewhat staggering. <laughs> I think that's so true. We get we get enough uh, we get enough maximum entertainment just with the normal variants without having to add any more. That's the great thing about poker; it all happens eventually. Anything that can happen does happen. A seven for Mateos, who's. Stack has been decimated, down to 14 bigs. All in. 14 bigs, all in, seems good. A7 suited, perfectly reasonable. Kojikaro folding. Saris folding. Hecklin out. Seidel, bye bye Fontan, Paul Fontan. Not calling, putting out his small blind for the next hand. had that in the charity event last night joe you had what i was uh maximum entertainment i was uh, it was maximum entertainment yeah i was all in and the guy was welling up welling up welling up still got his cards in his hand mateo's opening under the gun with queen nine suited in the shortest stack of the table go on no no it's okay let's watch this one first it's not that it's not that entertaining it's not maximum entertainment joe this is maximum entertainment queen nine of clubs mateo's utg This is one of those things that when Adrian Mateos does it, it's good. <laughs> it always works. I don't mean it works. I just mean it's good. Like it's a good play. When I do it, it's bad. <laughs> and I don't even mean that in like a pointing out a hypocrisy way. I mean that because he can navigate whatever's going to happen next far better than I can. That's a big if thing. That, if my big plan 
to steal from under the gun doesn't work. Well, right. So because because you're like you're a one street guy. We've discussed yes. this, right? So, so your big plan to steal from under the gun is everyone's going to fold. I'm going to take this one. And down. I'm all out of ideas and, after and, that. And then it goes. <laughs> you go. Oh, we okay. We're post flop. Now what the hell do I? Yeah, do? I, I understand. Post yeah. flop. Jack high. <laughs> diamond. Jack four four. <laughs> Yeah, no, it wasn't a great story, but basically I was all in, and this guy was welling up, welling up, welling up, and he did one of those things where you know when, when people realize that they'd ra- they want to like get rid of some of their their uh, their change from their stack, mm-hmm. so they try and like change with the pot without the dealer like being aware. Mm-hmm. So this guy just ships in like loads of chips that he was intending on swapping for like the two thousand that he already put out there as a raise. So this huge motion, and I, at one point I said good luck, and I turned my hand over, and he goes, oh no no, I was just taking change, I was just taking change. Uh. Yeah, and as it was a charity tournament, I sort of said, okay, I think it was pretty clear this wasn't an angle. I think it's yeah. okay, like we can, you know, all good. But, uh, yeah, we got to be careful with the way that we handle chips, obviously, because those are the sweaty moments when you realize you never want to play live poker again because you just called off for your tournament life or whatever. Right. <laughs> charity events in general, I think, are a good introduction to playing live poker because you do get away with stuff like yeah. that a little bit. Your mistakes don't hurt as much. Yeah. And even if they do, it's all for charity. Yeah, we had we had a couple a couple people who we definitely you know we're definitely making some chip mistakes and stuff like that. And it is a good way to learn and uh, for the most part avoid catastrophe. And I think they learned how to navigate some of the uh, the etiquette at the table. Anyway, guys, straight jaw. Pick up the action here. Yep. This was a. Limp in the small, a check back from Mateos. 10 5 5 on the flop, check, check. Mateos picking up the up and down draw. Feels like this hand is ready for a bet at this point. But no. No, I was going to say Mateos has a lot of showdown with Queen High on this paired board. I see. Okay. So I get me. McFly! 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 I'm like, well, you've got the best hand, bet. McFly, you butthead. But sometimes you just want the best hand to get your showdown. Oh, wait, was that was that charity event? A 550 buy in? Yeah. Oh. Ha, nice one, A Dub Jack. Nothing like learning some poker in a 550. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. It's for charity. Come on. Most of the charity events I play are like in the two to three hundred range. Think McFly, think. Now, Joe, there's some, there's definitely some, there's some value now. We can definitely go for value here. Well, I mean, you're going to value Reyes, right? Was... The, the, the only issue that I have is that obviously it's been very passively played thus far, but I just think once it's been played wow. like this, you're always going to have the best hand with the jack here, always. Wow. I guess we called it. I don't know anything about this game. <laughs> it just feels so good. Yeah, keep looking at it, Mr. Jacobson. Keep looking at it, Martin. Rest the bump ass says, aren't all the events you play, Joe, for charity, basically? I give the idea C. <laughs> Give your execution a D minus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's why they call him the best. Mateos scooping a pot up to twenty one big blinds, recovering very quickly from uh, from the misstep with the Ochos. On top table chip. Leader, 179 big blinds. You'd be kidding me. Yep. 50 remaining. You got 179 bigs. How about that luxury structure, Joe? Luxury blind levels here in London. Blinds, 3,000, 6,000 for another 25 minutes. Chad is saying, I saw, an act, I saw the actor who plays Biff from Back to the Future do some stand-up a couple years ago. So the guy that plays Biff has this card that he carries around with him that has all the answers to the frequently asked questions. 
No, I haven't kept in touch with Michael J. Fox. Yes, I'm a nice guy in real life. No, that wasn't real manure. <laughs> I hate manure. You can you can Google it. That's really really. And I funny. have I have met him, and he's a heck of a nice guy, and handles having like an annoying reputation, right. an annoying history, very well. That's that's I like that approach. That's actually really that's a cool idea. Yeah. Do, do you feel like you might benefit from something like that, Joe? I bet you got a lot of free, frequently asked Joe Stapleton questions. Um, yeah, maybe eventually. Doesn't happen enough now, and most of the people who who know who I am already know the answers to those questions. <laughs> Three ways to this flop. Yeah, exactly. My card would just say, yes, thank you for your question. <laughs> <laughs> just a whole deck of them. <laughs> like a hundred of those. <laughs> Eight deuce, deuce, two spades. <laughs> you know, but, but Joe, wait, I got another question. You just go, turn it over, turn it over. It's the same thing on That's the back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> And it's Fontan taking a stab here. Not going to get through Jakobsen. Two overs in the flush draw. Can't remember the, it's Thomas. Thomas something. kind of the curse of the character actress sometimes you know that you get people feeling really entitled to boom nails the flush on the turn that's 100 percent martin jacobson lock it up yeah you get you do a one role and then you, everyone remembers you for that role even when you're yeah. like even when you're like 57 so the one time i played on a stream on a tv show with jason alexander I said, hey, man, before we start, I was like, hey, do you mind if I, you know, questions about Seinfeld? Is it annoying? He says, no, 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 no. Ask me whatever you want. Happy to talk about Seinfeld. The only thing I don't like is when people call me George. Okay. I was like, cool, fair that's, enough. That's reasonable. Yeah, no big deal. River King of Spades. So Fontaine also with a flush now. Not sure how much he will value this flush. I mean, flush might, is still pretty good. It, it is, any flush. It, any flush is still pretty good. I think a lot of people undervalue some of these smaller flushes in these scenarios, and that's where some of the better players can exploit you. In this case, not looking so hot, but of course, maybe on the turn thinking I've got some sort of a cool combo draw. If the spade is live, I know the three is going to be alive a lot of the time. Check to Senor Jakobsen, now only losing to the queen of spades. Or the ace of spades, but of course the boat's out there too. Given the action, though, I think probably if he was losing, it would be to one of the larger spades most often. But he will have the best hand here. A oh, Laura, Laura, Laura. 44. So he will go for some value. A little over half pot. Actually, a significant amount over half pot. Math is hard. And, uh, you know, once again, I can see the hold cards, and I think that this is a pretty cool bet for the I, four of spades to have to contend with. Yeah, exactly. And this is this is the kind of, this is level of poker. Would he do this with no spade? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is this is the level of poker that we're that we're watching, Joe. It's just like, you know, knowing that he can get value from worse spades here and not being afraid of it. How many times do we see this played live? And it's, oh, I know you got the ace of spades. I believe that was a call. I saw it. Yeah, has been table his hand. And wow. I mean, come on. Yep. Absolutely wonderful hand there. For come on. How many people are missing value on that river? How many people, Joe? Missing value as in they like check aren't, behind aren't on the betting river. enough. Oh, I'm trying to put myself as a very terrible player into Yakovson's shoes. I think that I, I don't think I would check behind on that river, but I don't think I would size up that much. Yeah. I think I'd probably go a third of a pot, probably. Good point. And good get, point. And just and so lose value in that respect. Yeah, good point. Very well spotted. What does this mean? We'll get to that in a second. We've got Ola Shemian versus Ben Heat. So 
nothing. We've got four cards out there, otherwise known as the turn. And a bet from Heath, call from Shemian for what appears to be a significant portion of his stack. I'm doing. What we got there? We got a queen, a queen on the river, a couple of deuces, double paired board. Nice symmetrical board there. Queen, deuce, eight, deuce, queen, like a mirror. Shemian first to act, out of position. And after having check called on the turn, looks like Shemian Well, maybe not. Oh, well, he was counting out a bet. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. Thank you. The palindrome of boards. Thank you, Daddy. Daddy, Father Pops. That's what I was looking for. He was betting. 190 insta fold from Heath. One nine zero. Did I hear a niner in there? One ninety. Back to the main stage, top pair for Jakobsen. Betting into this year's. I mean, that is a Game of Thrones name if I've I, ever seen one. Yeah, the first thing I said when, when we joined the table was, I'm just gonna call him King, King of the Series. <laughs> Even though I'm sure that's not the pronunciation. King of the Andals, first of his name. <laughs> Leader of the First Men. I don't know. I, I don't actually know what the phrase is, but it's one. Of, it's a combination of whatever I just said. You guys know what I'm talking. For about. you, House of the Dragon fans out there, Griffin sent me something really cool. Apparently, there was some sort of special feature on the Game of Thrones DVDs where the actor that played Robert Baratheon recited the like poem that this season of yeah. House of the Dragon is based on, and someone took the audio and mashed it up with the final oh, scene very cool. of episode 10. Wow. And it's really cool. Yeah. They, th they did a lot of, there's a lot of Easter egging, you know. There's yeah. A lot of, there's, there's, I mean, it's little... really impressive yeah. the amount of thought that's gone into all of this. And yeah. the, it's almost like it is a true story. Like, because yeah. the detail is really something. When you base something like that on really cool fantasy that's written very well, there's like so much lore that's been pre-thought out, right? Yeah. And it shows. It shows in the show. I just wish they didn't murder that last season so badly, Game of Thrones, then everyone could just be happy and just love it forever. You know what I say, as much as I was also somewhat disappointed by the ending? Endings are hard. <laughs> Endings are hard. Top pair for Seidel. Fontan going to experience going to experience the pain of pocket jacks firsthand. Uh, Nut, who says Tolkien greater than Martin. I'm, I, I don't, I, I'm just going to time you out because I don't want... <laughs> I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I just don't want that the whole thing to kick off. We don't, I, we don't need it. I, I'm not even sure. What, why is there even a comparison being made? Tolkien, like, invented the genre. What do you, what do you mean? That's weird. And Seidel, bet flop, got called. Now it's betting the seven on the turn. Tolkien is the Doyle Brunson of fantasy. <laughs> I love that. Less controversial. <laughs> 40,000 the bet from Seidel. 
I love you, Twitch chat. Oh, these... What would I do without you? Oh, nice fold there Tom from Tan, Fontaine. Yeah, it does get away from the Jables. Stefan says, well, House of the Dragon is good. It's hard to care when we know how shit GOT ended. That's kind of where I'm at. But Zephod, I also, I also, your name is definitely a reference to um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, right? What? Zephod Beeblebrox. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, yes. Todd writes in to say, suggestion, have the board on screen. I know it's not the feature table cards on the outer <laughs> tables when following a hand. With 30-minute delay, should be enough time for the very capable graphic guys. I have a suggestion. <laughs> You're banned. <laughs> I would have to have a business card with you banned on it. So yeah. <laughs> One side's your banned. Thank you the for other your question. Your question. Yeah. No, it's just like a lanyard. He just turns it over depending on what, what he wants. He doesn't even have to open his, open his mouth to answer the question. I love that. Who is the moneymaker of fantasy? There you go, chat. That's a good question. Who is the moneymaker of fantasy if Joel Brunson is the Tolkien of fantasy? I mean, you could say that George R. R. Martin is because yeah. he made fantasy cool. He made it cool again. Still making it cool to this day. Love that, man. And sexy. So sexy. I'm here to tell you guys, Chris Moneymaker. Sexiest ambassador. We made poker sexy, I mean. Not that he's sexy. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, jumping back in the action. King Viserys is going to raise the button with ace five off seems pretty reasonable hecklin is going to defend the small blind sidel king do doesn't play well multi-way will probably just spin this one indeed there are, there are times when king deuce can be defended multi-way especially when the small blind flats not so good no just no king six six two clubs oh king deuce oh, oh man how do you fold oh, king he deuce. Be, he's, he's gonna win he's gonna, god eric sidel is such a whale i can't believe you fold king deuce <laughs> oh, a bit of an unlucky flop there, but you don't know how it's going to pan out at this stage. Hecklin, first to act. Sorry, excuse me. Hecklin checks. Was first to act, though. He was first to act. You checked already, though. And a small continuation, as expected. About one quarter pot. 10K into 40. Oh boy, what a turn card. Maximum entertainment, welcome. Let's go. Top pair, flush draw. A tale as old as time. That float by Queen High, though, so sexy. We're talking about sexy poker. I absolutely love that. He's aware of how wide this button open is going to be. On King 6-6, six, six, Queen 9 is like a strong hand. Like, it actually has a lot of showdown against that range. Forty-four thousand. You heard him. Man, has really, really pumped it up here. That's a forty-four sixtieth pot bet. Correct. And really wants to charge Hecklin for either of these flush draws. And really punish a king as well because yep. he knows that Hecklin knows. Hecklin knows that. Ooh, the club so, might slow him down. Yeah, the flush draw comes in, just not the one Hecklin was looking for. Yep. Yeah, I was going to say Viserys know, or Hecklin knows that Viserys knows that the turn is a card that he's going to barrel very aggressively as a bluff, and therefore he can go big. And if he does have a king, he needs to be extremely sticky because that's a card he will bluff often, levels on levels. I really like the sizing by the ace on that turn. I think that's how you get a lot of value. In this case, didn't realize it was going to be Queen Knight of Hearts specifically, but works just the same.
series up to 63 big blinds. Eklund at 68. It's, it's all Paul Fontan who has 100 big blinds more than Viserys. Ooh, that's good, Patrick. Fontan splashing around. <laughs> good old stat trick. Raising, getting both blinds to come along. A lot of spades in these players' hands. King, nine, five, two diamonds, ace of diamonds for Fontan. You see, you see what happens? <laughs> A wet board for Fontan. Turn card. We'll get the graphics back momentarily. This is what happens when uh, you ask the graphics guys for too much. There it is. <laughs> Queen on the turn. Oh, Finally, yeah. a spade makes an appearance. Too late for uh, these players to make a flush. I just don't understand, Joe, how there's a 30 minute delay and these graphics guys showing up without graphics. They got 30 minutes to sort them out. I'm joking, guys. I love you. I love you. You're doing a fantastic job. Deuce on the river. Misses everybody. This pot's going to win. Be won by ace high if we get to showdown. That's right, the old Turk. The graphics team is like, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah? You think it's so easy, huh? See how you like not having graphics for 45 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> we just got banned. We just got timed out That's for right. 45 seconds. You guys enjoying this, huh? How about now? How about now? Two, three, four, five. That is four high for Henrik Hecklin. Is this going to get through? There goes Seidel. Not going to make the call of 10 high. And it does. It works. So nice. What a life. We know half the time we uh, spend at these events, we're shilling for the events coming up. Yeah. We got the little matter of Prague at the end of this year. Can't wait. Always a good time. But after that, not long after that, it's the Poker Stars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship Part 2. The PCA is back. The PSPC is back. Brand new location, Baja Mar. And you can win your way. There's lots of ways to get platinum passes this time. PokerStarsLive.com will show you the full schedule. New stops are being added all the time. Excuse me, all the time. And there's been even a couple in America. Listen up, America. I know a lot of the times this stuff does not apply to you. But keep an eye on that website because I believe more stops will be added soon. Yeah, in many ways, it's actually easier for you guys to get to the Bahamas than it is for us when we're traveling from the UK. Yeah, the Bahamas is like a very friendly U.S. nation. They use the dollar there. Yep. Visas are... Uh, yeah. Well, pretty easy to come by. When we're traveling from Europe, many times people, if, especially if you're coming from like Germany or something like, it's usually like London, then London to Florida, then Florida to Bahamas. That kind of a yeah, two, dual change scenario. There's lots of direct flights from lots of U.S. cities. So keep an eye out, guys. Love to include more of the American community. We haven't forgotten about you guys. We love you. And we got two-time platinum pass winner Amazonian JB in chat right now. Let's go, 
by the way, shout out to Amazonian JB. Thank you so much for my little card protector. I am humbled that you would make me a little gift like that. It's very kind of you. If you guys didn't see it, I put it up on some social media. I'm going to post some more of it later on. But she made me a little, a little tiny knitted Guinness. I was going to ask you if it was knitted. She made me a toque a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. She made she made some really nice little, um, very thoughtful little gifts um, for various members of Team Pro and friends of friends of streaming stuff. And I thought they were awesome. And just that's so that's so on brand, Amazonian JB. Thank you, Jen. I appreciate you. Vasier, pocket jacks faring well for once, although still an overcard out there. Hecklin going to fold the threes. I'm just looking forward to the PSPC. I mean, for many reasons, but I, I love a new resort. Yeah, I was saying the same thing to uh, to James. I'm really excited to see what the new what the new digs are like. Yeah, Bahama, Bahama, Bahama. Um, and like two of my really good friends both just like won platinum passes this week. So it's, oh wow, it's getting really cool. it's getting stacked pretty quick. The first PSPC was the biggest 25K of all time, and I am fairly certain this will be the biggest 25K of yeah, all time. I feel, I feel like there's a good shot. People want more Bahamas action. Do Americans need passports to go to the Bahamas? Yes, yes, you do. To go and travel to Bahamian. Bahamian. V. Sierras. Raising under the gun plus one with King 10 suited. Seidel calling in the cutoff with Queen 10 suited. Mateos defending with the off brand sourdough. Ace 5 off suit. The generic stuff, your grocery store sourdough and flops top pair. The series second pair, Seidel, Third bottom pair. pair. <laughs> oh, damn. So I, I thought we were going to ace it, Joe. Every player's got a piece. Two players actually have the improvers to the straight as well. A jack would be an interesting card to see how that plays out. Checks around and it trips oh. on the turn for E Dog. <laughs> Bahamian Rhapsody. Can't wait. To get back there, yeah. Good shout, Pappy. Would you look at that? The worst hand. Ugh. There's the trip. I feel like in this, I know what it's what's true. I feel like Ace Five is the worst hand here. <laughs> it feels like the worst hand, doesn't it? I think what you're picking up on is just playability, Joe. You yeah. know, that's 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 why you have a negative negative sort of uh, visceral reaction to Ace Five. Those off. other hands flop better. Exactly. They, they feel better. You feel like you have, you're going to get more more of a piece more often. You got it's easier to play those combos for sure. And Seidel has decided to bet. I agree with you, quintessential one. When you say strange moments when everyone hits and nobody bets, and I, I think that's probably, and Nick will correct me if I'm wrong here, that's by virtue of the fact that you could, all three of these hands on the flop, at least, could have been up against way stronger hands, despite yeah. everyone having a piece. Yeah, Top yeah. pair, not super strong on this board. Second pair, not super strong on this board. Third pair, you see where I'm going with yeah, this. Right, and the, but then also to highlight the, that effect of the Mateos being in the big blind with top pair, Facing an action, action yeah, for players right, who right. initially opened, therefore his top pair being okay. much more threatened right. than if he was the initial the opener and then he was betting into the big line. Okay. So it's a positional thing as well. All right. Okay. You play Macau, right? Yeah, I do. We were partying. We were partying yes, party before. I, yeah. I was playing uh, uh, D D two, you know, yes, a long time ago. The good times, huh? Exactly, yes. <laughs> but I was playing. <laughs> ah. Oh, I wanted to hear about that time that he partied with him. Anyway, Seidel here, Queen 10. Probably going to go for some value here, I imagine. 
uh, a bet to take it. Yep. Seidel wins a chunky pot there. He will be coming back with about 70 big blinds after our break. Doesn't seem fair. You gotta do it twice. Paul Fontan leading with 120 big blinds as we head into another break, second level of the day in the books. Going to be sticking with this feature table. And Vadim Kojikaru, he is the player most at risk, but it is not looking great for Adrian Mateos either. Jakobsen in one of those weird spots with 34 big blind stack. Everyone else pretty healthy, but Fontan must have made a wish. Okay, that was a bad one. We're heading to break, my babies, but we will be back with more from EPT London in 18 minutes. There's a certain amount of artistic license, and the truth is he did outplay me, so it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like they were making something up. Um, Chan was a much better player than I was at that time. Let's start with the movie. Let's start with Rounders. What did you think when you first saw this film? When I, well, when I first saw the script, I didn't react well to it. I was like, wow, that's really f***ed up. That's understandable, <laughs> for sure, because I think it gave a bad impression of you to a lot of people. Uh, I'm the donkey here, yeah. Uh, but it didn't take me long before I realized, you know, uh, first of all, I was a fan of the director. And it, it just, that it, you know, there's a certain amount of artistic license. And the truth is, he did outplay me, so it wasn't. You know, it wasn't like they were making something up. Um, Chan was a much better player than I was at that time. And, uh, you know, I, I think overall, it's been a good thing. Um, and uh, and it's... Uh, they haven't made very many good poker movies. Um, and uh, that... I think Rounders is, is a decent one. You're saying it's like pretty good is actually an even better review coming from you because your circles are sort of being represented there. So I think it would be really easy for you to have hated it and said, this is nothing like what things were really like. It, it, does part of you feel that way? I think they did a pretty good job at capturing what the Mayfair was like, uh, you know, obviously embellished, but uh and I haven't seen it in a while, but I mean, my impression of it was, you know, it was it was a decent enough movie that people could see, you know, people could see it and get interested in poker. And I think it did impact. It brought. It, I think it did bring a lot of people into the game. It's oh, very hard sure. to tell what was rounders and what was uh, money maker and what was just the online explosion. When the boom hit, anyone who like yourself was a consistent winner became a poker celebrity i know that's almost like an oxymoron but how do you feel about that how do you feel about being one of the people who is recognized as one of those poker ogs if i'm walking down the street and somebody says hi or somebody recognizes me i, I you know to me it, it's almost always a pleasant encounter you know and i and i feel like you know it's a nice thing that uh, you know that 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 I've uh, done well enough that, uh, that 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 it gets recognized, um, you know, and and that's it's kind of the level I'm comfortable with. I don't know that that I that uh, that I could handle a, a, a greater level of attention. <laughs> so um, so you know, I, I don't know. I I, I think it's uh, I I think it's been. I think it's been fine. Well, I have to say that part of part of your reluctance for that level of attention has made some of the things that you've popped up in very, very entertaining. For example, the full tilt commercials back in the day, the uh, black and white full tilt house. I don't know if you know this. Your commercial was far and away the funniest one. Uh, and that, of course, is you dealing with 
wearing all of your World Series of Poker bracelets and then just like clangy. And I, I, I don't know if you knew at the time, but that was so funny. That was a great commercial. That really was. I mean, they they hired some really. I mean, Errol Morris did, directed some of those commercials. Oh, wow. um, I don't think he directed that one, but he but he did direct a few of the full tilt commercials. So they hired really good people, and they they had some good ideas. That they were fun. They they had some good ideas. So wh- when you say you don't like playing on TV that much, how much of that is don't like exposing sort of your style and your 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 thought process versus just not wanting to have attention? Yeah, I just prefer to play poker. You know, uh, <laughs> the way it used to be played at a table, you know, without, <laughs> not, you know, without a million people watching. I don't know, you know, plus it, you make a dumb mistake, let, let it be your own dumb mistake. Now, you know, it, you don't want it playing on YouTube for, for the next, uh, you know, uh, for the next generation. <laughs> Well, the good news is that any mistake you make now because you're Eric Seidel will just figure out a way to try to say it's not a mistake. We'll be like, (laughs) Eric Seidel did this. Obviously, there's got to be. Yeah, exactly. Like he must must be on the on the next generation of of poker strategy. Let's figure out what he's doing. Lines now 15.30, still nine-handed, still on the official final table bubble on the penultimate day of this event. So, James, uh, when we get to that stage, when, we get, when, we, when we've climbed to those lofty heights of the more recent EPTs, are you going to perform the EPT wrap live on stream for us? <laughs> We're not going to reach that point because the EPT wrap doesn't come about until season 10 and we're probably going to call a day on this by the time we get to season 7 Michael's going to pass with Eric he's going to pull the button and a small bunch of the boys as well we're back here Johannes announces call it rolls over aces in the big blinds he's got aces ace of hearts ace of clubs all in with queen nine against Johannes Strassman's aces Two aces for Johannes. We've got Queen Nine suited in hearts for Marchin. He's the all-in player. Let's see the pop. I uh, inject him. Marchin very likely to be Marchin for the exit. He's going to need some kind of help here. All right, on Hart. Aces are still. And Hart is all he catches. Only got five percent equity. Turns a nine of spades. Hits a nine on the turn, but still. Drawing pretty thin, and looks like we're going to be down to our final eight in London. Another nine, running nine, sees Horetsky survive. Oh man, so good. This guy's been dodging bullets all day, mate. That's my day. I mean, he is literally wearing a team pro team pro badge. I don't know what else to say. Team Pro. So sick. Mike's going to go under the gun. Is ICM a thing now? I think it's starting to become a thing. We've seen some of the play change uh, in both this EPT and the previous one we showed earlier on, where people seem to be making some more reasoned decisions, but also still a couple people out there just punting it off as well. Pass over to Eric now. He'll fold as well. With Johannes on the button. He'll pass back to the blind. Phil's going to raise to 80,000, 50,000 chip raise. So blind v blind, and it's two overs against a pocket pair. Mark Freeman and Ali Molly, catch one into the garden. Mark Freeman and Ali Molly, catch one into the garden. Thank you. I'm all in. Anthony announces re-raise all in. And a shove and a snap call. 
Yeah, the raise, the shove, the call, the race. I'm looking for, I, I want another weird showdown, another weird uh, stare down, excuse me. Come on, give him, do, do, the, do the magic trick, do the magic trick. <laughs> so Philippe Detoy is the at-risk player here, and he needs an ace or a king to survive. Let's see the turn card, please. Clubs are in play. Club on the river gets there and doubles up and does a lot of damage to Anthony Lelouch. We talk about nations that can hit it hard, but no one can hit it like French Canadians. I hear their magic trick skills are pretty strong too. How much more? 350,000 350, is the all-in. It's 300,000 more, Johannes. Go on. He announces call. Yeah. So, Horetsky's all-in, called by Johannes Strassmann. Johannes has ace-10. Martin has queen I mean, Horetsky's been running ridiculously good throughout this event. Surely now is the time. Eight of diamonds, six of hearts, seven of... Ace-high holding. No love for Queen Jack thus far. Let's go with the 9-10. The hard way? Nope. Only a Queen or a Jack on the river saves Martin Horetsky. Man, these spots are so sweaty. It's a Jack. He gets there again. <sighs> he is invincible. He's indestructible. He's especially a one-man bad beat machine. Yeah, especially against the guy who cracked his aces four times. Oh, oh. don't touch me. That's a tough beat. Another tough beat for Johannes Strassman. It's oh, man. It's the river. Pulled all the way over to Michael in the cutoff. I'm on. He announces all in. Michael Martin all in with King Queen. Strassman calls all in from the small blind with Jax. It's a race, and it's a race that Johannes Strassman needs to win. Like Barack Obama versus John McCain, one of these two things from 2008 has a slight mathematical advantage. Strassman looks resigned to losing already. He's like, I've taken all the beats. Surely not again. Not again. Queen, Queen high flop. Michael's taking the lead with his pair of queens. Five queen nine. Let's see the turn card, please. Turns the five of diamonds. Which means Johannes needs one of the two remaining jacks on the deck, or he's going to be eliminated in seventh place. Let's see the river, please. No jack on the river. And Johannes Strassmann got horrifically unlucky last night and today and exits in seventh place, cashing for 120,723 pounds. Take it down. Confirmed rigged for Team Pro. <laughs> Martin about to test the limits of how hot he's running. Well, he just completes in the small blind, and Michael Martin checks his option with Jack Six of Diamonds. I definitely don't mind this play. I think he'll catch a lot of players still limping with these kinds of hands. Small blind versus big. Late uh, late stage of the tournament. Ricky's just going to stab at it. Sure, why not? Don't think Jack Six is going anywhere. Michael's going to make the call. Sixty-five thousand pieces. Probably just a spade on the turn, just to make it interesting. Why not? I was about to say stab once and give up. Ooh, never mind. Use of spades, king of clubs, jack of clubs, ace of clubs. 
I think that probably is the stab once and give up card. Unless. Nah, dog. It's I'm gonna rep the ace now card. Changed my mind. Now I got an ace. I mean, you think a lot of the time if your opponent has an ace, they may raise you pre-flop. He's definitely putting the jack in an awkward situation here. I mean, you could argue that a lot of king X would raise pre-flop. So if you think maybe he doesn't have a king, then maybe putting in a second barrel here makes sense. But there's no reason why you can't have the clubs or hand like queen 10 or aggression will win through quite frequently though in this format huh yeah nice one good, good fold, fold he fold. says nice okay. nice classy does anyone ever say good fold when it is a good fold <laughs> or completely fabricate a fake hand after yeah i only it. ever say good fold when i bluff somebody and i don't want them to feel bad about it <laughs> I'd never say it when I have it. 105,000 in the pot. And there's an all in 8 7 of diamonds. What a beautiful hand to shove. You'd prefer him not have the diamonds here, but he's got one of them. King Jack off with a decision on the button. Currently the 60% favorite. It's a third of turn X stack. I don't know. It seems maybe like a fold with players act behind. Mike announces call. It's over to Alan in the small ball. <laughs> Smurf it in the small. <laughs> you know, we kind of goof on Smurf it for uh, some of his tight plays, but man, that guy has shown up a lot. In these shows. Absolutely. TIR, man. TIR. This guy's smile is so infectious. He's got me every time. He's really having fun. Yeah. Living the dream. All your friends on the rail, you're they're all wasted. Oh boy. I mean, there's no way he there's no way he doesn't win this though. You got a rail like that. There's no chance you're not hitting it every time. This is like it's like not home field advantage, but you got everybody there cheering for you. Good vibes. Surest diamond of all time. Do the magic trick. Do the magic trick. The river card. It's a diamond! Hey, hey, hey. And Love Philip the Toy doubles up and survives. I mean, look, every, everybody was there sweating it. I knew it was coming from the start. Never a doubt in my mind. It's hard enough to not get tilted by a rail like that, let alone when you just <laughs> pour chips. <laughs> Are the chips fueling all that chicanery? Hey, it's hey. Diamond Joe Hashem. Diamond Joe. Waiting to hand off that trophy. 30,000, 60,000 the blinds. 5K ante. Phil's first to go. He's going to fold. So will Mike over to Alan. Alan's going to raise all in. Martin will fold. Mike announces all in from the small Smurfit board. shoves. Martin reshoves. Eric's going to pass the big lines. Give me an ace. Alan has ace four off suit, and Michael has jacks. Let's see if the dealer obliges. Smurfit does need an ace to survive. Alan is the all in player. He's got ace of spades, four of hearts. Michael has the jack of hearts. You better smurf it. Smurf it real good. Blob is three of diamonds. Jack oh. oh boy. Uh, it's pretty much GG unless we see a wheel card, eh? Let's see the turn card. Running cards needed for Alan Smurfett. Okay. Picks up and out. Alan's going to need a deuce. Or he's going to be eliminated in sixth place. Show him who's got the bracelet. No deuce. And Alan Smurfett exits in sixth place. 
Light it up. Cash is for 153,351 pounds. Ah, oh, Smurf it all to Smurf. So five players left. Everybody now guaranteed almost 200,000 pounds. And Philip the Toy's all in with eights. Five thousand total bet. Mike's gonna fall. Martin announces. Martin Retsky reshoves with Kings. Oh man, the sun run continues. My lord. How does it feel to get to the EPT and end up at a final table like this after the run you've had? You've got to feel unstoppable. Nothing can stop me. Except for an eight. <laughs> Except for an eight. I got two flush rolls. <laughs> you ruined my punchline, Joe. <laughs> Ran the flop when it came in. Sorry. Behind the king, Zoe is the moment. Let's see the flop. Flop is ace of clubs. Seven of spades. No eight on the flop. Seven, seven. Come on, seven. Still behind. Still behind with his eights. Let's see the turn for the win. Come on, baby. Eight. Turn is a four of hearts. Come on. No eight on the river, and Philippe de Toy exits in fifth place. <laughs> That was then, this is now. 2022 and the European Poker Tour is back in London. Day three of the PokerStars EPT main event from the Hilton Park Lane, hosted by the Hippodrome Casino. About to kick off the third level of the day. Five levels being played in total on day three. Right now, these are the biggest stacks. Nils Budel is the overall chip leader. David Doherty, Connor Beresford in the top five right now. Paul Fantan, who's fifth in chips overall, is chip leader at our feature table. We're sticking with the same lineup on the main stage. Slightly different lineup in the commentary booth. I am James Hartigan alongside Griffin Bencher. Hello, everyone. And from Team Pro, Sam Grafton. Hey, guys. I'm a little disappointed. I, I thought you were gonna say we're playing at Buckingham Palace <laughs> and that the side events were taking place in the Tower of London. Uh, but still, Park Lane Hotel nearly as swanky as... Uh, some of the rooms are nicer than the ones at Buckingham Palace. I would imagine. Let's mold. Sadly, we do not have the Griff Graff animation. Sadly, we do not have the theme tune. Line's going to 4-8 with an 8K ante. And one of the things we've said, Sam, with the field being smaller here in London, it has somehow allowed the elite players to rise to the top. We've still got so much talent in this field. So many big names still going strong. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Looks like a high roller uh, final table, not even an outer table. Uh, obviously, huge legends. Uh, I mean, this is just a very, very, very tough table. Yeah, absolutely stacked. Uh, Adrian Mateos, it's no secret that I think he's one of the best players in the world, one of my favorite players. And then you've got the likes of Eric Seidel, uh, you know, really the longest standing, standing tournament legend. Henry Hecklin, it's just it's all over the place. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, Mateus, actually, we were talking about him at, at the table, uh, like talking about what a hard worker he is, how he's in every event. Uh, I think he ran deep in, uh, is it Prague he ran deep in as well? Like, got like a 21st or something like that already this yeah. season. Uh, I mean, literally never takes a day off on these st stops, win or lose. Really, really amazing. Uh, Mateos, unfortunately, did get stacked in the last level, so currently playing 11 big blinds. The second shortest stack at this feature table. Martin Jakobsen, and we've referenced a few times, Jakobsen has had so many near misses in EPT. Yes, he's a World Series of Poker main event champion, yeah. but two seconds and a fourth in the same season of the EPT. Mateos all in here with 9-7. Yeah, and wants to swerve the call here. <clears throat> Jack Nine is right on the line, I believe. Uh, I think actually probably is a call here with the big blind ante. But, but it's for term, be very tournament close. life, it's going to be tougher, right? Um, oh, it's you know, very tough. No, 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 no. Yeah, he'll, he'll I guess, with a little bit of ICM, he just, he just falls out. Um, yeah, and uh, it looks like he's giving it a thing. He, he realizes that this is close. Uh, occasionally, he will be dominating the tail, as is the case. Yeah, and... If he makes the call, he will have the dominating hand, but he will be the at-risk player. 
Yeah, and you have to imagine Mateos just sweating this, recognizing too that a lot of dominating nines would be in the tank here, the queen and the king. Oh, the tank makes it worse in, in many ways. And right? the jack, yeah. You, it's not, <clears throat> not like you're just getting snapped off by A6 off. It's going to be... Oh, wow, it does make the call. And this is bad news for Adrian Mateos. If he loses in this spot, he'll be left with just two big blinds. We are now at the 4-8 blind level. But you know what they say, it is always coming at 7. <laughs> Mateos, 24%. 30% survive because there is a 6% chance of a chop. But right now, it is not looking good for the 2015 main event champion, the player who won the super high roller at the start of this year in Monte Carlo. And he does have out. Sevens and sixes are working for him on this 985 all heart board. Yeah. And some opportunities as well. Absolutely. And we do get a heart on the turn. So. Mateos needs a six or a seven to win the pot outright, but he also survives if we get a heart on the river and we sing everyone's favorite song. Yeah, it'd be nice to see Mateos. Wow, it does, it does come. The flush <clears> on <throat> board. And, and you've got a feel here for Kojikaru. Um, obviously, makes a very bold and brave call. Not easy to do uh, deep in an EPT. Is rewarded with one of the few occasions he's going to be absolutely crushing. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, none of that matters, Sam, because oh. Oh, that was a chop pot. You know what they say? Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a chop pot. pot. <laughs> sorry, I forgot the priorities of the world. Yeah, I forgot I was, we're entertainers. I was waving my hand. We're entertainers. I was first like, what is this? Yeah, your yeah. first rodeo? Uh, of course. Sorry, it gives me. It takes me a while to warm up. <clears throat> the other notable thing about the final table, as well, of course, is we do actually have the 50k champion. And the yeah. 1K champion, which is yes, absolutely. quite a coincidence. I mean, these Hecklin's absolutely cleaned up. Second in the mystery 10K mystery bounty, first in the 50K, having an amazing series. I believe Seidel maybe was third in that early mystery bounty as well. These guys representing a lot of money taken out of the London economy over the last five days. Absolutely. Hecklin winning the 50K. You reference Jakobsen winning the UK IPT main. And, of course, the guy who beat heads up, Connor Beresford, is also deep in this main event as well. Yeah, I mean... It's just so hard to knock out Martin. Really, really fights hard, no matter what his stack size. Well, that is Ludovic Geilich, who has just been eliminated in 49th place, was a finalist back in 2013. Cashes out for £12,900. So with Ludo going out, we are down to 48. That means the table has just been broken. That means we are going to get a new player on the main stage, filling the empty seat. Yeah, sad to lose Ludo, one of the UK's very finest. I mean, remember that EPT after he just won Marbella was something of a breakout score from yes. him. Played an incredibly wild and loose strategy, which was a lot of fun to watch and still retain some of that um, uniqueness to his play. So we recorded our EPT London preview podcast before this event, Sam, and we spoke to Rubinho, Robin Olotalo, who, of course, won that final table in 2013. And his analysis was, I didn't really have to do anything. And he says, if Ludovic Gailic was the player then that he is now, he probably would have won. But he was just a little bit too crazy back in 2013. Yeah, yeah I can imagine that. So a reminder that Prague will close out this 2022 season, December 7th to 18th, as we established earlier on, the final table being played on the same day as the World Cup final. We're, we're making plans behind the scenes. The higher-ups know that there is a conflict there. Uh, the main event will be streamed on Twitch and YouTube, and, of course, satellites are running for EPT Prague right now, alongside the mini EPT London online series, which we are offering every single day this week, three low buy-in tournaments, You'll see the tab in the PokerStars lobby. WCOOP tickets added to every single tournament, plus an EPT Prague package going to the winner of the $5.50 mini main event on Friday the 28th.
Are you done as far as playing is concerned, Sam? Are there any other events here in London that you're planning on? No, I'll definitely, I'll definitely be playing. Uh, maybe the turbo later, but uh, certainly the 10K tomorrow is obviously something still of a marquee event. Doesn't quite match the main, the glamour and excitement. There's something obviously super special about the 5K main events. But these 10K high rollers that, that come at the back end of uh, the EBT are always great value. Huge first prize and, and um, a lot of fun to play. So I'll be in there tomorrow, probably from the word go, I would imagine. You know, I agree. Speaking as someone who won one back in Berlin in 2013, <laughs> I find that it's a very precise. Hey, do you matter. still get a Shambhala bracelet if you win it? I mean, <laughs> how? how? <laughs> I've forgotten about those things. They're the best. So good. Are you wearing, why aren't you wearing it now, bro? Where oh, is it? I lost it in the divorce of my last uh, relationship. <laughs> I thought you were going to say she loved like... it, and I, I let her have it. No, really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What a generous guy. Like Phil. <laughs> she would wear it all the time. Like it was. It was. You know. <laughs> gonna... Wow. You win another one soon. Yeah. Anyway. Of course. Internity asks guys any plans for the first EPT of 2023. When and where? I would expect an announcement on at least the first half of the 2023 season in the next few weeks. As we see Mateos all in here on the button with King Six of Diamonds. Does not find a customer. Mateos still hovering around the 15 big blind mark. Paul Fontaine, 120 big blinds. And worth highlighting, they are still playing pretty deep with 48 remaining. And we now see we have Roman Harabak back at the feature table. Average stack is 468k, better than a 50 big blind average. At one point, Sam, we were playing like a 72 big blind average today. Yeah, I guess it goes uh, kind of quick. And then at the beginning, maybe people are a bit too eager to get in their stacks. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, also, I guess, if affected by how long the bubble takes and, and some such things. But uh, notably stacked field, though. Uh, uh, ben Heath is in the mix as well yes. somewhere, right? Yeah, really, really exciting to see so many good players. Of course, nice to see people come through and make na a name for themselves, but really a treat to see uh, Seidel and Jacobson and Mateus navigate these fields. I mean, yeah, I, I do happen to feel Mateus and Jacobson are two of the, of the best. If you had to pick main event specialists, done yeah. it so many times. Let's just out there. I think actually the 25k didn't run today, and I was a little surprised, but I guess most of them are still in the main. <laughs> <laughs> What's Seidel's deepest finish in an EPT main event? That's a really good question, Sam, and I don't know the answer because, generally speaking, we see Eric at the final tables of the Super High Roller events. Sure. Yeah, Martin, of course... Um, Played Villamora. I believe he, behind the scenes, maybe secretly chopped back in the days when that was uh, not kosher on the EPT tour. I, I think uh, that was during an era when we were actually being quite open about that. I'm surprised that that wasn't publicly disclosed. I, I, I think it was bef before those really? days, maybe. Yeah. The thing I know about that heads up battle, um, it was the Toby Lewis sure. uh, year. That after they did the chop, they're like, can you like jump forward like five blind levels right. so we can just get this done? <laughs> yeah. I, I tend to mock Toby about it because it's one of the few there's no footage of, right? They weren't even allowed. I don't think a winner's photo even no. in the casino. It's Portugal. You can't have any cameras anywhere near a casino. Yeah. Wow. And, it, and it was uh, Teddy Sheringham at that final as well. So here we go. Fontan with the very beautiful 10-9 suited. The Grafton, we call it. A, a Grafton, of course, <laughs> connects. See, the thing is, losing heads up to Toby Lewis is one thing, but later that year he lost heads up to Lucien Cohen, that guy with the rat. That's less respectable, Martin. Less respectable. Yeah, and it's a little bit of a strange check back with the with the ten nine. Maybe it's okay um, with no backdoor, the worst nine. And unfortunately for him, that ace coming releases a lot of equity over the two streets and allows Seidel to make the best hand, who will now go for a value bet. 20,000 into 44,000. Yeah, and of course, Seidel going to be left with a lot of available bucks, but it is a run out that, I mean, just generally favors Fontan's range. And I would love to see a really good fold here because of that. It's just a board where, you know, you're going to 
have hit that queen yourself very, very often. And does, does make the lay down, right? Come on. And Statric at your service, Samuel. Seidel's best finish in an EPT main event was a 42nd place finish in Monte Carlo back in 2012. I love that. This is what's great about this broadcast. I just put questions out into the ether and say, you know, who was the fifth president of the United States? And then someone just pops up on the screen and, and lets me know, you know, what is the, you know, gross exports tonnage of steel from Canada? Yeah. Can I actually have a, a, a follow-up sort of uh, question to, uh, just about range when you were discussing that hand? You were talking about how the queen would interact a lot with the end-of-the-gun range, but wouldn't a lot of the queen X hands that especially weren't, 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 wouldn't, wouldn't the ace-queen either bet the, the flop or turn? Like, would you really be checking back queen-jack of spades on the flop and then the turn as well and, uh, and then hitting the river or the king-queen? Sure. I mean, the, the most likely hand is, like, an ace-x hand, which now checks back again. Or, yeah. And, I mean, it's just it's very unlikely you have nothing on, right. on that run out. You have an ace Pocket that check back or you have or, a king yeah. that check back or, or something of that nature, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you have your worst ace often. So some king-queens king, king queens there will just check back and on the flop and then yeah, again on the turn? Yeah, ma it, it makes sense to some of the, yeah. at least some of the time to check mm -hmm. it back, right? And keeping the dominating uh, queen and, and jack x. I just, it's just a run out that the big blind's not incentivized to bluff too often. Right, yeah. Uh, Sam, in case you are genuinely interested, uh, James Monroe no. was the first president of the United States, and Canada's exports of iron and steel were worth $10.47 billion during the year 2021. Thank you, uh, Hagen, as, as always, the consummate professional. What that a trick, doing what a the fine work behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, Fontaine full, forced to fold the best hand here with the aggressive action um, of the series, 3 bidding the King Jack of Hearts, playing quite deep stacked here. How, how deep is the play with King Jack? That's actually not. It's, it's 40 bigs on top of the of the of the three bet. Mate, let's go time. I, mean, I think this is go time with Ace Five Suited. Kind kind of often. And do you mean uh, sneaking in a four bet or just shoving for the 45 bigs? I think jams kind yeah, of. Yeah, nice. yeah. I, I, I don't know. Uh, folding's a, a fine option, or, or just doing it half the time, or yeah, or something like this. Would you say the worst play would be to, to like make it 120 and fold or something, 130? Yeah. I, with that hand? I think that's okay-ish mm -hmm. as well. It probably, it depends. So you get a lot of four bets at 50 and then mainly shoves at 40. So 45 is a little, a little Awkward, difficult yeah. and, and, and open top shoots. Yeah, I, I think four bet folding would be, would be okay as well. Um, so no wrong answer. Yeah, <laughs> it's, all, all options are open yeah. for sure with that hand. Um, Maybe call the least. Uh, yeah, call, <clears throat> call's not good. Just because you're dominated by the bluffs quite often and yeah. hard to realize equity. Hold the round to Henrik Hecklin. Folds. Seidel on the bottom with 9-8. Playing just shy of 60 big blinds. Opens here to 20k. If I was Hecklin, I'd just open all the time. I'm always amazed when I see players make these di you know like just sticking to the ranges if i was he if you if you inherit Rick Heckland's body for a day you'd just be raising and punishing people who wants to defend the blind against Eric Heckland? if you open the the car griffin everyone's thinking yeah flick it in see a flop but henrik Heckland, can you imagine <laughs> i have a good table presence sam you'd no, be surprised you do you do you do, you do. Uh, you're you're a, you're a main event specialist as well <laughs> something of a main event specialist and gets it through with the two and a half x you have to wonder so it was just sort of a min raise with the eight six have completed. So can tighten up the range in spots like that. Yeah. Is Eric gonna drift off there. Isn't yeah, he's, he's just been out partying Why again. Am I, I doing mean, I, I can't, we can't really speak. I mean, everyone. I play a hundred thousand dollar buy-ins. I'm trying to win six <laughs> buy-ins right now. What am well, I doing here? Well, I was gonna say <laughs> it's a well-known industry secret. Of, you know, we don't really talk about it on the air of, of Eric Seidel's wild nightlife. You know, in yeah. London he'll be. Probably a fabric last night, to be I honest. Have but, heard, I have but heard people, about that. You know, I, I, I feel I like it's we not weren't publicly, talking about yeah, it. Yeah, we don't talk about it. So, we'll, 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 yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, you know, and the man's entitled to a private life. You yes, know? he is. So. Right on the line here for 15 big blinds under the gun. Triangle time for Mateos. Eight handed. You have to imagine that King 10 off would almost certainly be a fold, but when it's suited. 
You just want to get it in there, get it through. Going to fold out at least one of the better kings. There he is. Scoop, drag in another pot. Adrian <laughs> Mateus. When I shove king 10 student with the gun, I get snapped by queens. Yeah. <laughs> Great names for the chip colors. Circle, Victoria, and District. <laughs> Who named those? There's the, the official okay, names. Okay, I'm on board with Circle because that's <laughs> yellow. I'm on board with Victoria because that's blue. I don't see any green in that chip, and the district line is green. <laughs> well, someone's getting fired. <laughs> we, we, we could, we could name them after the Monopoly board ones as well. This could be like Bond Street, uh, mm -hmm. Leicester Square, and, yeah. and Pensacola Grafton Road. Grafton Street. Yeah. I saw Grafton Street uh, uh, yesterday. Oh, yeah. The there, well, there's a, like, the most famous one, I think, is in Dublin. Pretty, pretty oh, yeah. famous Grafton Street there. Yes, I'd say that's the more famous of the Grafton Streets. It was actually like it was telling me to go on to Grafton Street watching, walking home from the movie theater. Uh, uh, what did you see? Uh, you don't want to know. Oh, okay. Because no, actually, don't, you no, really don't want to know because know. we were supposed to see a movie you would have approved of and uh, then yeah. went to some horror movie instead. Okay, okay. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't we were going to go see uh, Banshees of... Uh, oh, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Martin McDonald's. And then we pivoted to, to Smile, okay, which is okay. a horror movie. Okay. <laughs> it was actually great. It was actually really enjoyable. <laughs> it's fun to see, like, a buddy you haven't I, seen in a while I, go to I, a horror movie, you know? I, I saw The Exorcist in on, on actual film, 11, 11 p.m. showing. I was absolutely loving it. Of course you it. did, yeah. yeah. It was really good, really good. So Mateus going to have a uh, defend here, one would imagine, off a short stack, suited hands, off the short stack plate really well. And interesting open. This is, would be something of a standard open, a bit worse when you're opening into short stacks, when you just want to make the top pair, really, and... Well, it, it, it we probably go. has to do with the fact that, you know, you got a couple of weak players in the blinds, <laughs> right? Sure. Like, it's really just a great time to take that five high and see what, see what can happen. Yeah, and Mateo's a statistical favorite, and Krabcek, Krabach, how are we saying this? Yeah, it's a yeah, trouble with the five, decides back, yeah. to check back, exactly not wanting to get check raised all in by... Uh, 7-8 type hand or a flush draw. And Mateus, with the flush draw, with the gut shot, may well be the spot to put, apply some pressure. Do Guess it. the sizing. Guess Do the sizing. Well, Do it. 25? Yeah, I think I'm going to go. I, I, can't, I can't quite tell his. So he's got 113. So I guess I'd go. Maybe we would just want to go half stack now. 28,000 is the wager. Yeah, and so that watch sets up. If we, it, it, so it goes 28 now and then 85 into 100 on the river. That seems seems reasonable. And look at this really difficult spot. He knows exactly this, that either, if he is ahead, he's up against exactly a hand like Queen 7 of Clubs, something where he's just got very poor visibility on the river. Very, very poor visibility on the river. Or he's behind right now to a 10x or an, uh, a 9x or, or whatever it might be. And Mateo spricks off. And for poker fans, this is exciting to see. I think we're going to... I would imagine we're going to see Mateo pull the trigger. The Queen Jack, the Jack 8, the Jack 7, Jack X of Clubs of Diamonds, Jack Deuce of Diamonds all have hit. And so left unpaired, I imagine. Mateo all in except one big blind maybe. All in except half a blind, something like this. Or just putting all in the middle. Wow. I think he left a little bit there. And <clears throat> this would be an amazing hero call. I mean, we don't block any of the 84. flush draws, but also don't block a straight. All I will say is that Adrian Mateos has previous for pushing a player off a pair of fives. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Kind of his kink. I guess we're... just depends how much Jack X you think you have, how much 9X. I mean, a hand like 6-8 is for sure a far superior call here. Um, I mean, straight isn't that relevant, right? Because a 10 can still jam for value. Um, but having a 4 seems not much fun. Like, 3-4 would always take this line. I think he's going to have to give it up. And Adrian Mateos wow. getting it done. And Mateos now playing closer to 25 big blinds. Yeah, and you know, it does speak volumes about the 
quality of player for Abic must be to, to, to really be breaking down that hand and considering it for so long on that spot. It's surely something that is commonplace at, you know, the high roller, super high roller circuit, but, you know, left 49 players left in the main, not, not always going to be a player that's capable of, you know, really being prepared to make a big call like that on the river. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's great to see this kind of intricate poker. I mean, what's amazing is, you know, of 10 and 12 big blinds now, you still see double barrel bluffs and yeah. such like um, the sophisticated way these guys play a short stack where, you know, we we just would have been all in on the turn, right? Like, yeah. so a, I can't, maybe <laughs> just donk all in on the flop. Like, yeah. first of all, I'm all in. You know? Um, and now it's uh, it's much more sophisticated to play. Seidel in early position with ace-jack offsuit. And Eric is opening. Raised to 18,000. He'll be trying to ladder an extra seven positions for his all-time greatest finish. Absolutely. Probably be start tanking with 43 left. Well, uh, so Vadim, seven's in the big blind. Only has six big blinds behind. Seems fairly obvious. There he is. And Seidel snap calls, and we are off to the races. Like fabric versus Ministry of the Sa uh, Ministry of Sound, one of these hands is a slight oh, statistical favourite. Shows the last prefer, time I went to a club. By I the way. much prefer Ministry of the Sound. <laughs> of sound. <laughs> I hear they spin some good seven-inch discs at the Ministry of the Sound. <laughs> and, oh, oh, that's quite a strong flop. Trip aces for Seidel. Kojikaru drawing to a seven, two outs. They say it's always coming. They do indeed. Is it coming seven this time? Is it the year of Romania? No and no. GG Kojikaru. And that takes us down to 46 players in the EPC London main event. Takes his gilet and makes the long walk to the cash-out desk. And pick a phone, any phone. <laughs> What's this, a Nokia from 1999? Oh, running so bad today. <laughs> Oh, well, is it a newer iPhone down there? Uh, give me a second. <clears throat> Seidel now playing a 70 big blind stack. This is, this is the one time I do feel a little bit of jealousy when I see these guys deep in a, in a main event. Yeah. It looks, it would be so much fun to be 40 left. Rabek with a six, folds. Six five suited for Martin Jakobsen, and that's a raise. Sixteen thousand. Yeah, with just a, with a dead small blind, and not a ton of maneuverability for Amadi on the button. Going to get that one through with the weak big blind hand. Well, just going to head away from the feature table for a second because we have a new chip leader in the main event. With a stack of 1.5 million, David Doherty. Give us some hashtag fun facts about David, Sam. No, lovely to see David. He's been around even longer than me, um, you know, and it's having something of a, I mean, I, I'm not always au fait with exactly how everyone in UK is doing, but something of a resurgence, bagging titles seemingly over, all over the place this year, must be playing really, really well, and uh, someone that's always been a, a popular figure on the tour and part of UK poker, and uh, loving to see someone from the UK, from Scotland, of course, um, you know, with the chip lead and in a position to go really, really deep. Talis, what's on YouTube? says, don't diss the Nokia. It's like to outlast the latest iPhone. Yeah, but if I want to check the weather on the Nokia, assuming I've got WAP, it'll be able to tell me the weather in a whole 20 minutes once it's downloaded the three pixels. Mm, Jack four. Cool. And the problem.
problem with being an intimidating figure. <laughs> Sometimes you get walks with Ace King. <laughs> Woe is me. Like the 1500th walk of Henrik Eklund's career. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's such a great guy too. Seems like a little bit quiet at the table, but just a really, really good guy to have around. Huge, huge morale uh, now that he's playing a bit more tournament poker. Now they've shut down the high stakes cash games in Macau forced to grind out a living in super <laughs> high rollers. It must be tough so? for the guy, yeah. Maybe they'll open up the, the high-stakes card rooms again and, and we'll be rid of him. But uh, in the meantime, definitely a, a real pleasant character to spend some time with. So I know it folds around to you on the button with the 10 bigs and... and I, Oh, no, actually, he doesn't have 10 bigs. Yes, plenty of bigs. The kitchens for Hecklin. <laughs> Do it. Oh, upside down. Bumping it up. Forcing out the dominating hand. Eric Seidel still second in chips at this feature table. Adrian Mattel's remains the shortest stack, but he's playing more than 20 bigs. Yeah. No a, longer in the danger zone. It's Adrian. We'd still, still probably. What, you wouldn't want to bet against the geezer, would you, really? Yes. No. That. What, a, what, a, what a trophy. I noticed Hecklin was holding it up one-handed in his winner's pick, which I, well, which I think is quite a remarkable achievement in itself. He's got big arms. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Quite a tough ask. Uh, maybe it was Photoshopped, I don't know. You, you can t say that to the publicity team now. Just take a photo of the trophy, take a photo of me with one hand in the air, and then overlay it. I saw Barney Boatman in the field. We were a couple of tables away. And I said, Barney, what's the first EPT you played? And he just said, well, whatever the first one would have been, I would have been there. <laughs> it's right. it true. Sick. Barcelona, 2004, he was in the field. And here he is, the latest one. As it says in the rap, Griffin, Barcelona, first stop, back in the home of the first flop. Oh my gosh. Pokestar's in house rapper created that little jingle. It was actually outsourced. No, the, yeah, a professional no rapper yeah. actually came up with that. Can we play that at the break, actually? Or right now over this hand? Uh, I mean, I could do my performance. Yeah, we, please I, do. I was at the players' party and uh, I was with Tim <clears> Adams and. Every day I'm shuffling or whatever came on. I was like, Tim, remember when we kicked off the EPT with this? We used to come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's, 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 it didn't really quite work because you get hyped up to the music and then it'd be like, you get like six, four off and you'd be like, well, the music's come on. Should I be opening this now? Like you'd feel like, and you'd be like, well, fold. And nice turn for Martin. Obviously, just a good card for the preflop razor, the flush draw and everything going on. Going to be give him a reason to try and take this pot down. Give us a couple lines of the song. I know you know it by heart. I did, just now. No, do it again. I don't want a whole thing. You just did one line. Antonius, a day late by the time he got in, started at the bottom finish on the top in Barden. Oh, finish well, that's, on the oh, top. Oh, that's like yeah. when they commissioned a rap song. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, I see. Oh, you, you were quoting a rap song, right? I was yeah. just joking. But No, 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 yeah. How have you lived this long without hearing the infamous oh. EPT rap? Yeah, I mean, I did hear it. You remember that, yeah. That is Ramin Hajayev, who is our 46th place finisher, cashing out for £12,900. Now we have 45 players remaining. We return to the feature table. Eric Seidel, three places off his deepest ever run now. It's tense for the great man. 
can add that to his list of accolades. There you go, Griffin, just for you. There's a link to it on Twitch chat. Right Ride on, on the, the river. river. <laughs> wow, what a day. What a day in the... Uh, it was a you know, in the marketing office when they're spitball. They're like, listen, guys, I want you to, like, just push the envelope. Nothing's off limit. And someone's just like, I think we should hire a rapper to rap about poker. And they were like, yep. Yeah. We can do that. And it's still being referenced to this day. Mate, it's lived on longer than... All I'm going to say is the person whose idea that was is the person who employs you. So... <laughs> <laughs> Wow, they got promoted. Oh, <laughs> they now run the company. Uh, they are they've 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 ridden it all the way to the river. <laughs> hmm. This is gonna be interesting. Obviously a great, great board for the initial racer, but Sidel does have a wide range on the button. What's he got? There's some small chance you can even check race this hand. Oh, that, 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 that link, by the way, is not to the original. It's to my cover version of it, which is obviously a bit of a... Well, I guess it's a bit difficult to do anything with that that isn't a piss take, but you know what I'm saying. I guess, I guess first the button, we don't want to check race a pair. But we've got a, a diamond in hand. The playability, obviously, you know, make, might make it a bit easier, but... yeah. But you got, you got to be you got to be careful. Check this board, I guess. And, and call makes sense. And Seidel now with a double gut shot. Single gut shot. No double gut shot. You're right. The Broadway. Oh God. See, the studying is really showing. Yeah. And <coughs> Alex Seidel peeking back at his cards. And I think we do maybe need to fire again here. See, hurts side out a little bit that they're all high diamonds. Rolls out some flushes. <laughs> and will bet again. And once again, Krabbit with very tough hand to negotiate. Yeah. Once more in a situation where when he is ahead, um, sorry, yeah, when he is ahead, he's facing... Two overs, sometimes two overs and a higher diamond. Sometimes it's completely dead. Oh, now the raise comes in. Is that a raise? Yeah, it's 100, right? Wow. That's hot. Yeah, I like it. It's kind of like you take the, the hand that's a kind of break even call and, and check raise it. Might be overdoing it. Sometimes you're just going to have the king of diamonds, but gets the job done. Uh, obviously was bluffing with the best hand, but forcing Seidel off numerous outs. So, Sam, we will move on from the wrap after this, I promise. But I had forgotten that in this particular cover version, it has an animated video that features you on guitar and Griffin on drums. This is a problem when you sign that contract, buddy. They hey. take your image and they do what they want with it. Listen, I know, we, I know we have like a plan for what to show on the breaks, but I feel like we should find a way to show this. How does this work? Can we do that? People need to see. Right on the river. I'm getting high on the river. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with King Queen. Under the gun plus one. Raising. Okay, three bet, the ace nine off. Maybe gets in there sometimes. I think we want a flat and we'll just pass. Kind of, uh, what? We've obviously have had some all ins and an elimination, but somewhat cagey play at this uh, stage of the tournament. Would you agree? Very yeah. cagey, yeah. yeah. Maybe it's just the nature of the, of the distribution. Haven't had too many hand over hand spots. Henrik Hecklin, I gave him this big introduction. What's he really done, mate? Not Maybe much. this is how Hecklin does it. You just get walked a lot. Yeah. 
you don't have to pay any blinds for an orbit, so then when you get a hand. I mean, in fairness, you know, if, you, if you're not getting dealt much, it's not a, yeah. not a great table Take. to kind of... Uh, Run wild on. Get cheeky, yeah. Yeah, yeah, makes sense, makes sense. Mateus doesn't allow for cheekiness. No. He punishes cheekiness. Is this the time of the Hecklin? No. Yeah, I mean, of course, it's an underrated skill, having, especially in mains, having that patience to take advantage of, a, of, the, of the structure. Yeah, keep watching. You might learn something. <laughs> yes, indeed. Two bullets in two hours. <laughs> a great day, one eight. There it is. So a few people have been commenting on both Twitch and YouTube that Roman Harabek used to be a professional ice hockey player. I don't trust anything our audience tells us. Stat trick, <laughs> verify. He looks a little... Uh, am I? Am, it's just that he's got all of his teeth, as far as I can see. I, I imagine... Oh, if wow. it's, that if is it's, an old cliche. It's an old, That's wow. a stereotype. That's really that, offensive. Really, it is. It's offensive Canadian, to Canadians yes. to, that, you know, that your nose isn't smeared across yeah. your face just, just because... Disgusting. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah, my elite, look at my apologies to the, ice, uh, to the ice hockey community. He has there. an eliteprospects.com uh, profile and everything. There we Ooh, go. Hockey stats. Well, he's gone from one spot to the uh, And Martin folding queen three of diamonds on the button. A little bit tight, maybe from out of my tastes. Um, but Mateus now with the jack nine. I'll limp in. Yeah, you know what? He uh, had a pretty big season in 2016-17 with the Swiss B-League. 20 goals in 44 games. Can you do that in a sports broadcaster voice? Is that, <laughs> is that the same guy? I, would, I mean, just want to be che checking that there are I mean, two Roman, Roman Harabaks. Is that the same guy? Well, what, how, how do these people know that on the, on the comments that he's a... I assume they're somehow informed or... Maybe they're just Griffin. How long have you been doing people? this? Can you can you can you say Roman Hrabek of the of the of the <laughs> of the Zurich Raptors? <laughs> the Zurich Raptors, <laughs> or something like this. Please, <laughs> give us a real. And Roman Hrabek, twenty-six year old forward, playing for the Ticino HCP Rockets. <laughs> Twenty goals and forty-two points in forty-four games, but really fell off the following year. 35 games, just 10 points, and now he's playing cards for a living. Yeah, looking at that photo closely, yes, it is the same guy. <laughs> We've been through the the uh, the identification process. That is James Hartigan eyeballing an old photo of him. Apologies for being cynical and for not trusting the stuff that random people say on the internet. Hey. This is how we verify anything at PokerStars, just old so, stock photos. By the way, we I, need James. I love and trust the Twitch and YouTube chat. I, I, I don't know why you're so cynical about them. I believe everything that they say. I've, I've encountered it. Anytime I look at it, it's nothing but wisdom. So I don't know where you're coming from, Arkham. And here he is. What, what's, uh, I would love to start riffing and dropping in some ice hockey terms for this phrase that here he is, top of the box, like, I, but I just don't. <laughs> top of the box. I, I, I don't box. know any, you know, like, <laughs> you know, there's nothing. I've got nothing in my locker if we have to riff. No, had you said he used to be a, a poet or a novelist or a, yes. you know, then I could do something, but I, I mean, I've got nothing in ice hockey. Mm -hmm. Here he is with the puck in hand, raising into the, attacking the, the Hecklin goal. The puck in hand. <laughs> And uh, here we go. Finally, I've hyped it since the word go. Finally, we're going to see some Henrik Hecklin action. And Ooh. It's quite a juicy one, in all fairness. Very juicy. And I think, actually, this is one of the boards where, actually, Ace King gets to do a bit of bluffing. Um, a lot of times, it's a sort of hand we're checking back and showing down. But Queen Jack 9 as the preflop raiser especially from the hijack, um, is a hand that we can potentially attack with. Obviously, on the flop, we're just trying to knock out some live undercards or what have you. It depends on the sizing. Yeah, and already employing a bigger sizing here, you see. 35 into 48. Obviously, Hecklin 
balancing some time. It's not going anywhere, though. Uh, the spade, the pair, the open ender. And a brick turn would be a very interesting card. See how the Zurich Raptors want to. <laughs> and now double flush. See, Hrabek has a club. Which provides some river bluffing opportunities. It's going to be interesting to see his strategy here. I would kind of like to see him apply some pressure. 95,000. See. Is that an overbet or like a pot bet? Yeah. It's so an overbet. I mean, technically, yeah. 2,000 more than was in the pot. There's an overbet. It's more than the pot. Yes, and you see, this is the only sizing that Jack-10 doesn't really enjoy. Any other sizing, more than happy to get to a river. Now, we're really not loving things. But Henrik Heckland will proceed. Wow. And this is a big river incoming. Mm. And complete brick. And there's a rabbit going to ride on the river. Gonna go all in on the river. And it's interesting spot. Hecklin is gonna be left with quite a lot of these Jack X of spades, nine ten uh, of clubs, nine seven of clubs, uh, queen ten, like pair plus straight or pair plus flush draw. Obviously, if we had a complete, it would be nice to have a completely ace, a clean ace king and ace king of hearts. But this is definitely a spot where you have to think about shoving all in. Some of the stronger hands, Hecklin raises on the flop or raises all in on the turn. And oh, oh he's going for it. He does. He shoves on Hecklin. Griffin, you are the ice hockey expert here. Is this the equivalent <laughs> of slamming your opponent against the wall and hitting them with the big stick? Yeah, and Hecklin doesn't immediately snap fold. Yeah, it's interesting because as you mentioned, Sam, you know, so many of these combination pair straight or pair flush draw kind of hands Hecklin's going to have. and But because of having that, you also, you know, block some of the bluffs that Harabic can have, you know, the ace 10s and what have you. Something has been thrown in. I um, think I it believe it's a time bank. It was chip. a time bank card, meaning Hecklin wants to extend his shot clock. And is that a consideration that you block like the likes of ace 10 or Sure, but tens? you block king 10 and 10 8 as well, right? So right. It, it, it's, it's, you know, you're blocking... Uh, Queen Jack, you, you block value just as much as you okay. set of jacks, you block value just as much as you block, block bluffs. It's almost impossible to not have something that interacts with, with bluffs here on the board. Um, yeah, and speaking to the kind of hands that and that look like a... Well, we can't see, so we won't... Yeah, he folded. Yeah. yeah. Frustration from Heckler. And let's give credit here to Roman. <coughs> not easy to fire all three streets obviously the two big draws two big flush draws breaking off and as we spoke hecklin an intimidating figure a legend of the game and empties the clip gets it done and a hard-earned pot for roman yeah, and, you, and the thing that's so awesome about you know covering these main events you know you have a, you have a feature table like this that has so many shining stars and then there's a guy like this that has a certain table presence. You just think, oh, okay, I think this guy really knows what he's doing. And then you see, you know, the brilliant check raise on the turn there against Eric Seidel, one of the biggest legends of the game. The three-barrel bluff against the very, very capable and, you know, incredibly talented Henrik Hecklin. And you just think, that's what makes poker so special. These guys can come out of nowhere and uh, and, and just really put on a show. Sure. Absolutely. And Rabek could be back in action here. Eight seven suited under the gun plus one. Raising to eighteen thousand. And to Hecklin in the small blind. Nine deuce offsuit. Also would not be surprised to learn that Harabic is like one of the biggest winners on poker stars and tournaments, right? Yeah, it's, I, it's like, I, 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 I'm think, sure that I he's think, some high stakes regular, but just compared to the other names on yeah, the table, course, the brand course. names, and, you know. And also, even having done it online, <laughs> it's, 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 
it, it is a, a, something different to do it in the live yeah. arena. And some people just make that transition super easily, and, and, and for some people it's more difficult. Mm -hmm. So Seidel defending his big blind and flops best. Second pair, plus the gut shot. Yeah, and once again, Rabek with a very playable and dynamic hand, the 8-7 flush draw, and a board which, once again, is very, very good for him as the pre-flop raiser. Obviously, uh, absolutely right to point out the gut shot, but to the bottom end, this 10, obviously not going to be clean, as it were. And indeed, the second pair is not clean, right? If you hit the 9, the 10 makes a straight. It's almost close to a fold on the flop. You would, I mean, you kind of would rather have, like, maybe you would rather have queen 5 than uh, uh, queen 9. I don't know. Um, but And yes, Seidel wow. does just fold. Um, attuned to the position Rabak is opening from. It's all Rabak right now. Got a couple of accomplished players to fold the best hand, two hands in a row. He's second in chips at this feature table, but we are going to the outer tables where it is Sahil Chitani against Enzo Vito. We pick up the action on the river. Looks like Chitani has bet River and Vito is shoved with the covering stack, so it is all into call for Chitani. We're looking at a King 7845 board with four hearts out there. That's a call. Vito, ace 10 with the ace of hearts for the nut flush. Chitani had the queen of hearts for the second nut flush. And Chitani is eliminated in 44th place. Forty-three players remain. Yeah, another another big UK legend, legend Enzo uh, Vitani, big regular on the circuit. Took a bit of time off, uh, and now back in action. Making nut flushes. Yeah, <laughs> with forty left in the main. Yeah, okay, a nice feeling. I'm going to step away for a second, Griffin. Hmm. You're in charge. Okay. For oh. however long it takes Joe to get here. All right. Please be responsible. Okay. <laughs> Please hold the ship. On a steady course. Everyone, no. <laughs> this is a good idea. Wait, don't go James! Uh, hi, guys. I guess I'm... I'm, I'm here. Leaving. I'm here. Oh, I'm here. Okay. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> that was <a> close. <laughs> He's sweating. <laughs> yeah, I'm the, uh, I'm the Jordan Peele meme right now. <laughs> Three ways to this flop. Yeah, and this is quite, quite a nice and interesting spot. Everyone missing, essentially. Guess... Hecklin with what is technically the strongest hand and position going to be the one that takes this down. Often king eight of hearts, not super exciting to bet three way. And Hecklin might just take a stab at it, can turn this hand into a bluff on occasion as well down the streets. So you call this hand interesting, but as soon as Joe saw that nobody interacted with this board, he just went on his phone. He's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I want to see blood, man. Uh, <laughs> this is interesting to you? Actually, uh, you know. It reminds me too much of me playing poker when there's <laughs> there three hands, none of which connect <laughs> with this board in any way. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it, it is it is probably likely that Hecklin will, will, will take it down. I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to build the suspense here, guys, build the tension. Sam, have you had any uh, caches since your big win? Uh, yeah, I, I came sixth in the in GUKBT Luton. Oh, I nice. Oh, nice. The very next tournament I played. I was no. going to make a joke that uh, that Joe had made the most money out of the three of us, in the, you know, in the last few weeks. But it's unlike of course, I didn't make yeah. a dime. Well, you're playing the main event. I did win a seat to the main event. Lovely. My you know, first, but wait, you don't know about this? Yeah. Oh, I, I saw it on okay, okay. social media, but. Outer table I'm action. Shoot. Enough about me. Ola Shemian versus Alexandra Vuljamir. Love this. Shemian going deep in the main. Got a real throwback feel to it. Five, nine, nine, nine on board. Are we just going to see him do something outrageous? I feel like when we've gone to an outer table to see Ola, we're going to see him do something above the rim. Just like call some guy down with like ace high and be correct. Well, we won't know. We won't know what his cards are unless there's a showdown. We can rely on the out. The outer table guys don't call for us. 
unless something excited. Unless there's a showdown, Joe. That's You're, my look they at the energy here. Yell. It's like two knights, badasses just fighting mentally. Yes. Shemi on in, in, in main event mode, just yeah. staring at his soul. Yeah. Wearing mm -hmm. the same sweater as Alexander yesterday. Alexander hasn't even acted yet, and Shemi already didn't even change. He not like, only knows what cards he has, he knows his <laughs> deepest secrets, <laughs> his first love, his first kiss, his relationship to his mum and dad. when he's going to die. <laughs> August 26th, 2047. Um, uh, here we go. Take him to showdown. Police officer. Sh no. Oh, wow. Showdown. Shemmy and Fultz. Wow. Good fold from Shemmy on that. <laughs> <laughs> We can just assume it's a good fold. Wow, look, it's like Easy Rider. The lights, the sun got glinting into the camera. Yeah, that was a that was a, a choice, actually. <laughs> Hokestar cinematographer. Yeah. Finch adds that in post-production. We just do it live. <laughs> yeah. Best in the biz here. Hondo. Mateos with pocket nines. And a... Gut shot for base Sierras. Gut shot in the hoodie. Check, check. And a queen on the turn is a pair. A pair of queens. And it's good. The best hand. Yeah, Mateus, you know, you might want to start turning fives or sixes into a bluff here. Nines just because you're ahead of eights and sevens and maybe show down for a little bit against them. Have to be somewhat careful about your bluffs. And I wonder if a uh, jack, wow. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's still the same thing. Uh, jack jumping out of the deck. Not showing down for much hit with the nines from under the gun, but hoping to just beat sevens or sixes. And Nicholas with the two pair, just just occasionally could be beat by Ace 10. Have to, you have to bet and get called by Ace 6 or something. But I, it's considering yeah. a valley bet what won't go for it, understandably. Just happy to win the pot. I like how easy that pot was for Viserys. Hasn't he been through enough in House of the Dragon? <laughs> that means nothing to me, but I gave, I gave it a polite, <laughs> a chuckle, yes. polite laugh. <laughs> Strike went, you know, when... when, when uh, uh, states, like, is like, a, states is at dinner parties in New York, and people mention, you know, like, uh, the, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, <laughs> yes. Mm, yeah. It's the name of the main I prefer character. his earlier main stuff. characters. <laughs> <laughs> well, podcast plug here. Sam Grafton has been on the show quite recently, wow. actually, within the last few weeks. And I haven't been invited back in years. <laughs> <laughs> We talk to you all the time is the problem. <laughs> Believe me, if I could get away with just having you on as a guest every week, I would do it. <laughs> but they make me dig deep. We're going to have Jungle Man. No way. Next month. That's oh, great. Yeah. That sounds cool. Got in touch with Jungle Man's people. Uh, yeah. I actually had a dinner with him for the first time in, in a long time. It, and I was just kind of observing him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's actually, he comes out with some amazing little factoids. Fascinating person. Yeah. Factoids and hot takes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The inim inimitable, absolutely, jungle man. You ever uh, getting getting any uh, Twitter stuff with uh, Jungle Man? No, no, no. I do no, not. Wouldn't I, dare. Wouldn't dare I go into the engage, jungle. I do not engage Jungle Man. <laughs> I don't really get into it with people on Twitter very much anymore at all. Sure. I don't. No upside. Not worth it. No yeah. upside. No, no upside. upside. What does Jacobson's got the look in his eye? From Fontan. Are we doing Jacobson? What are we doing? I do Jacobson. It's, it's Jacobson. Okay. Is it? I, I, I agree. I, it, it sounds like we know, we're, like he's foreign. So we, yeah. it sounds like we're being sophisticated yeah. doing Jacobson. Yeah. But I think it is Jacobson. I have is it Jacobson? You, huh. Coming back to hockey, actually, I've been noticing that a lot on broadcast where you, for years they'll have been calling a European player a certain thing and then suddenly they change it and they'll, they'll tell the viewers... We've actually been recently informed by the player they would like to go by, and it's always like the more you Anglicized know American, yeah, yeah, version. Yeah, but I think it's a product of Sweden, but I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. 
But um, I can't do my Yakety Yakimson don't talk back. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, let's go for a check race here, Martin. Just roguely. Quite fancy it. Going for a call. Yeah. Just a call. Makes makes sense also. And there's a yak on the turn. Yeah. And another good card for the sort of razor. Um, just, you know, again, you would rather not have clubs, but I think just a good hand to barrel with. And Fontan probably recognized that. Just you can yeah. just really pressurize the 5X, the 4X. And the ace highs that yes. probably aren't the wheel ace highs, right? Yes. Those are probably going to continue depending on the sizing. Oh, I love this Griff graph. I love this chemistry. Yes. <laughs> it's like you share a brain. <laughs> wow. I don't think he wants that. <laughs> yeah. See, that would be scary. <laughs> and there is the big boy bet. And against that particular hand, it's going to work. Goodbye. 100% oh, of the time, oh, oh, every oh, time. Oh, there. Oh. You were right at ace high. They're so it. like us, the pros. Flip yeah. their cards when they fold. Mm -hmm. Just human beings. No, Martin is not just oh. just a human being. So a guy named Jonas Arnsberg Pedersen wow. says Jacobson is a soft J, not hard. How would you know? That's, y that's Jonas Arnberg <laughs> <laughs> Pedersen. Wow, that got like almost like a, like a laugh in the back. It's the studio laugh. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Almost like those a, are the best well, we laughs. We said that a round of applause great. as well. We, we knew make, what we were doing. That was good. You make the cameraman laugh or you make someone behind uh, the scenes the, laugh. That's the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like it's like that, uh, the bit in Annie Hall where he's like, where he goes to see his like awful friend making television. And he's like, give me a, give me a soft laugh. And now a round of applause. <laughs> you know, like we should uh, could put in a little laugh to track for you, Joe. They have to do it just to keep me engaged. Sorry, Action has folded around to the man of the hour, Roman Prabic. Mate, look how good he looks in this EPT London top. I mean, it's almost worth the 5K buy. I think I saw him on the elevator so just, when I was. This is like flab. By the way. Earlier today, great. yeah. Just good energy means business. Big shout out to whoever's designing these hoodies. There, yeah, that's a Fashion decent one. Almost made it to the to the show. The NHL didn't work out, now he's here. <laughs> Taking the Queen 3 suited to the streets. Gets the best in the biz. Dance with the devil in the pale moonlight. Let's go, Mateos. Mateos going to defend in the big blind. It's actually Mateos. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And wow. flops the up and down draw. Open headed straight. Potential. Checks to the aggressor in position. <coughs> One diamond out there for Havoc. Yeah, and... Uh, but the bottom buster? That's a good name. We can do more names for the, the, the bottom. bottom buster yeah, feels... <laughs> maybe not. Feels a little... <laughs> Could be misinterpreted. Yeah. <laughs> All right, fair enough. So we have, we're open-ended or we're uh, up and down. What did they used to say to the... To the donkey end, they used to say. Okay, okay, okay. The, 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 yeah, dummy, yeah. the dummy end. Dummy, dummy end, end, thank yes. you. Dummy end, yes. And Mateus here with a little, again, a little bit difficult, just because you don't want to check raise and get it in against worse draws is one of the problems with check raising this. But, of course, it would be nice to fold out, uh, say, a queen seven, so you don't just hit your pair and check that. And what a turn. And Once again, the jack makes an appearance on the turn, straightenizing. What a turn of events. <laughs> yeah. And a card that generally favors Rabak's range more than Mateus's. Can't check this back, make some money in the check line. No. And sort of bluff some ace highs and some no equity hands. Some, some fun posturing here. Do you think that it has been half an hour since Mateus bluffed him and he might have information that... Yeah, I don't. Probably not enough time. Yeah, maybe. That's always interesting to think about. Like, have they been, you know, informed on the delay of what they were bluffed with? And goes for the small sizing. And now Mateus is going to take stock of is this like bet someone betting at, say, a 10 again just to check back on the mm -hmm. river and he mm. needs to put the money in himself? Or is this someone who's sort of lining up a bluff mm. or, or, and you want to just. Just to be clear, which is it? Cat. Yeah, and he just puts it in now. Uh, obviously, he does rob Rabek of his equity. 
Mateos all in for his last 124,000. Yeah, and, and this is the problem yet. with barreling this hand rather than something with a bit less equity. Super annoying to get blown off a overcard and open-ended straight draw and forced to fold. Perhaps a little bit of a misstep in hand selection there. See, being results-oriented. Um, but you are supposed to be quite polar there on the turn, I believe. Yeah, you got to fall to pull out those bottom pairs. Nice pot for Adrian. Buenos dias, Adrian. <laughs> 28. Big blinds. He was on 11 last time I was in the booth. I mean, we've already referenced it quite some, Joe. You probably heard us, but quite an amazing table to have here. Oh, Eric, yeah. Eric, Hecklin, Mateus. Oh, yeah. Martin. Really, uh, you know, four of the most accomplished players you could name. Doesn't surprise me too much. The cream always rises to the top in these. That's why you're never there. <laughs> that sounds like something <laughs> that goes with your bottom buster. <laughs> Hecklin under the gun. Ace six suited. Made it 16,000. Seidel. Oh, don't next, punish the guy. He hasn't even played a hand yet. Next to Hack, Ace do suited. Yeah, we yeah, might have yeah. to relegate Hecklin to a lower tier based on this. Yeah. We had him in the in the realms of Mateos, but based yeah. on how he's played here, folding the best hand, I mean, maybe it's like... How do the tiers work? Like, well, the S tier is the highest, and then what's the next tier when they do it with not, with letters? Yeah. That, he was probably in the second tier, like, overall of poker play, and now he's, like, flirting with the third I, tier. I, actually, I do. you do occasionally hear people talk about, like, the top tier guys. He's not, you know, it's like quite yeah. a quite a... I am Big not, time move, high roller, high roller phraseology. Yeah. It's, like, it's like we would say states is, you know, they're like Nick Shulman, top tier commentator. Just <laughs> yeah, saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, You know, he's like, okay, he's one of the lower, like, you know, B tier guy. Yes, whatever, yes, you know, yes. I mean, like, yes, but I know that there are going to be some, like, anime nerds and stuff. They'll be able to tell us in the chat how the tiers work. Because you always see those, like, graph things where it's like S tier. I think it goes S A. I don't know. What is this? It's a... It's, it's like when they rank, like, you know, the, the favorite uh, TV characters or, right. you know, okay. there's an S tier the highest. It might be. Yeah, there you go. S A B A B A C A B B. <laughs> oh, S A B C D. And look at this, Nicholas. S A B C D, okay. Picking a three bet, the ace three off. Didn't see that coming. One of the first uh, sort of ag aggressive pre flop plays that we've seen. <laughs> Because you say nothing, so I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I have no idea what you guys are talking about. But I'm a huge Henry five now? fan. Yes, Let's make Big that clear five five to his friends and relatives. I just think, him, based off the tier system, he, before this day started, he was in A tier, and now he's flirting with B tier. For uh, why are you him? Sure. I can't be on because he hasn't doing played this. a hand all day, understand. even though he hasn't been <laughs> card dead, <laughs> and he folded against a good bluff. And we, <laughs> we you know, we put these people on pedestals. I'm not downgrading him. Henry, we want them to find a way. We want them to find a way. You're a B tier player to me, Henry. I heard you off camera. You were saying that you you really put him firmly in B tier. You said about having guys. Over by the water cooler, you were like, uh, that Henrik Hecklin, he'll be out soon. Luckily, okay, so luckily Henrik knows that I wouldn't even know how to classify any uh, player. So sure. Mateos is in S tier, and then Sam is recently in A tier, sure. hoping to one day get to S tier. I think, I mean, uh, t being one tier below Adrian in anything, yeah. Yeah, fashion, card playing, mm -hmm. career, anything, I'm, I'm happy to be just, if I'm one, if you're one tier below him, you're, you're more than happy. More than happy. Jacobson's, or Jacobson, whatever we want to do here. Yeah. Don't, a, don't, tier, a tier for a while. Top top boy. Yeah. Uh, legend. Legend yeah, yeah, yeah. status cemented. L tier. Yeah. But can you be an S tier if you don't, if you're not a regular of the super high roll circuit? I don't know. He can be. He's, yeah. He, he does what he wants. Okay. Know. It's got all time greatest World Series final table. Oh gosh, I've just been informed that there's S plus and S plus plus tiers. Wow. Oh. Wow. There you go. He's like he okay, heard he's you. Okay, he's here then. He heard you <laughs> questioning him and put in a, yeah. a little three-bet bluff. We've got some chips moving here. These guys trying to nip and tuck, pick up pots where they can. Has he got wearing a Shambhala bracelet there? there? 
girlfriend. Did, he wouldn't. Did, did your ex-girlfriend he wouldn't. sleep with Martin at some point and then pass on the Shambhala bracelet? Did someone give you a boilerplate contract from, like, 2014 where you still have to mention Shambhala bracelet? No, we were talking about it with James about winning high rollers. And that I lost it in the divorce to my ex. Yeah. There's context. But then, but then, <laughs> but, but, it, but it's like a fellow. She then passed it on to him, and I it's the ocular that proof, that might be, yeah. which uh, cements and, the and rumor. And he probably knew I'd be commentating. So and he wore, wore it just yeah. to mock you. Yeah. Just to rile you. As I'm putting him in an S++ tier, too. I'm just like... <laughs> she put him know. in an S tier as well, apparently. <laughs> oh, God. She pulls around to Viserys on the button and folds. Here you go, guys. Hecklin with 8-4. Floating between the tiers. <laughs> <laughs> this pump could push Currently it either way. Limbos. <laughs> Will he limp and fold like a cheap suit again? I would like to say, Eric Seidel, now this is his deepest run in the AVT. Yeah. Perhaps we should you mentioned that. bring him a, 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 a glass of champagne to, to celebrate. Oh, this is such a B tier check. <laughs> uh, it's a PB tier check. Seidel, don't take the free flop. He knows he's dominating that. Yeah, Why? dominating it's, Hecklin. It's actually a good check. 10 9 sure. tray, two spades. Seidel with the gut shot. A slightly better board for Hecklin here. Can fold out some King Fours, uh, Queen Fours, and the like. And. Does wrap around the 10 9 a little bit. Eric Seidel, we can see, not going anywhere with this quite nutty gut shot. Oh, oh double checking his cards. Yeah. Queen is black, but it's a club. And it's a club on the turn, an eight of clubs. Yes. And. and Flair has hit this eight. Yeah. Heckman yeah. out drawing the 3x and such like. Not going to have to bluff now. Not super exciting to have an 8, but Check worth checks. something. King on the rib. Is that, am I right in saying... No, I, I, know, I, I was going to reference the cartoon on Hecklin's jersey, but I feel like around you two, I'm too likely to get it wrong. Is that Rick and Morty? Yes, it is. Okay, there we go. It's good. Oh, I don't know, Rick. <laughs> that was, that was uh, could be right. anything. I was, I was hearing what fans you two are of Rick and Morty just the other day. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So that, that's why I, I wanted to, to reference it. <laughs> Although a funny uh, Halloween costume would be me and my girlfriend going as Rick and Morty. Yeah, that would be good. a great Morty. She's like five feet tall. Oh. You should do that. Oh. It's a big deal, that kind Plus of dressing up in America. Weirdly attractive. As Very big deal. Oh. Unfortunately, she wants to look hot on Halloween. An idiot. <laughs> you can do a hot Morty. She's not dressed like a 10-year-old boy. I guess, yeah, when you put it that way. I'm going with Tim Robinson, I tell you that. Tim Robinson, what, in the hot dog? <laughs> no, although I do have a, hot, a Tim Robinson hot dog costume. You have the hot dog? <laughs> yeah, no. No, I have it. I got the Dan Flash's shirt and the oh, safari nice. hat with flaps and the calico cut pants. Wait, so you're all doing the a mashup? Of? Yeah, of all the different characters. I feel like too much, too yeah, much egg in the Yeah, it's batter, really maybe. specifically for the three people that will get it at the Halloween party mm -hmm. I'm going to. This, this, I think that's something about you, Griff, where you would rather really satisfy a very niche demographic yes, yes, fully yeah. than be mass appeal. Yeah, that's why I've never gone viral. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, yeah. You know, that's why you should ignore the Twitch, Twitch chat, because there there's a silent 3% out there, but you're the favorite commentator. <laughs> they actually yeah. hate no, Hartigan, I, hate State. Yeah, They're you know really what? here for you. I want you guys to know that I see your comments, and I save them in a little notepad file in my house. <laughs> I'm not kidding. When I get the real good ones and I read them, to my girlfriend <laughs> and my mom. Accidental grenade on Twitch. Keith Becker, give him a follow. Twitch streamer from uh, Pennsylvania. This whole conversation has dropped the commentary team down a tier. Wow. We're cold blooded. Not even a chuckle out of these guys. Wow, they took it personally. All right, three ways. To this flop <laughs> with, with the nines. We thought we really had something with the tiers there. Uh, they turned the tear joke and turned it. We should have seen that coming. That if we start doing it about the players, eventually someone would turn it back on us. Yeah, know? I mean that was that's a, that's a D tier comment right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, no spade out there. And Mateus with a pretty strong flatting range here on the hijack. Might be that this pair particularly we want to try and protect with a small bet, more vulnerable to overcards. And we have the strongest range. Like people can really attack us all too much. We have pocket eights uh, at the very high frequency. Just a, a pretty robust range. Um, knocking out some king highs and queen highs as we see. Uh, Mateus knowing, as always, pretty much exactly what to do with his hand and range. I love when you say robust range. You say it about once a stream, and so it's great. Yeah. Just to get a little alliteration. Could you roll the R a little bit? <laughs> robust. Robust range. <laughs> <Robust. laughs> <laughs> well, as if I'm Dracula. Right, right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Range. yeah, like that. You like, should go as like Dracula like, like for Halloween. A robust uh, uh, robust Dracula. <laughs> yeah, yeah, robust. A shoulder pad. Yeah, yes, yes, like, like football. Football pads. When was the last time you dressed up for I, Halloween? I don't. Oh, you don't? I, I, you refuse? I don't. But actually, my, uh, my girlfriend went to a Halloween party, and she was like, I'm not going to dress up. And I was like, I never dress up. Uh, so I understand that impulse. But you should, because you do always feel a bit awkward. Right. Because I go, and I'm the only person. That does. I just, I don't do anything where you have to dress up. I don't yeah. enjoy it. You don't chop pots. Yeah. I think it's like, I don't want to, yeah. See, people, you could have fun with it, though. Could, you could dress up no, as like a niche character from but, but, a novel it, you love, you know? But, but it's also people meet me, and then they think I'm a fun this is guy best, who yes, participates. Yes. Uh, you'll love, you'll, you'll, you know the Babadook. This is the best. Ah, yes. You've you, seen you, this one? You made me watch Babadook. Yeah, but have you seen this meme, though? Have you seen No, no. I used to work with this girl. I dress up as the bad at my friend's house, but had more of a grown-up drinking life. <laughs> and so, Hrabek, thinking of three-betting here, much like we saw um, Nicholas three-bet the ace-three off before, just perhaps rolling some frequency of three-bet in here, and does go for it. People like to pick this ace-x offsuit wheel that doesn't flop well, can fold out better aces on occasion. And an opportunity for Hecklin to get back into the B tier. Uh, it's not fun with pocket eights because against the value, you're just getting snapped off by better. But recognizes that Hrabek, being an A tier kind of guy, will have bluffs in this spot. There you puts go. Puts it into the middle and picks Two up the pot. references for days. <laughs> um, and the great man already some hundreds of thousands up on this little trip down oh, yeah, the road that's right. from Marleybone. Winner. Oh, this is a good currency joke on, on the thing. I think they're playing faster knowing the longer they play, the less they make with the pound. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Good currency humor. Nice, nice. <laughs> How many, you know, we could we could actually do a giveaway. How many prime ministers will, will the UK have over the 10-day course of EBT? Yeah. So, Blind and plus? <laughs> <laughs> 19 minutes left on the level 41 players left playing five full levels today this is level three Demetrius Gusia says if Joe has a girlfriend there's hope for everyone correct <laughs> thank you for your comment <laughs> Uh. Fontan. What do we know about Fontan? Paul Fontan. Paul Fontana. I know that that's what I'll uh, occasionally write as a typo when I'm trying to write to Fintan. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Robek. Suited connectors. I feel like it's close to, is it Bruce Fontana in uh, Anchorman? Uh, Fontana? Ryan Fontaine. Brian Fontaine. Brian Fontaine or Fontana? Oh, yeah. Brian Fontana. I believe. Yeah. yeah like it. the Fontana Lounge. You guys remember back in those days? No. no. At Bellagio, the Fontana Lounge was where they had all those WPT we, tournaments. I, we weren't in the, we weren't in the Bellagio streets in them days. Boys. No. No, I guess you weren't. No, sadly not. I wasn't it, either. But it was good. The games were good. Barry Greenstein one time in the uh, Fontana Lounge as a joke threw like a 10K brick to me and he threw it way above my head and it hit the wall and exploded and <laughs> went everywhere and nobody cared. Nobody <laughs> even looked up. <laughs> That's pretty funny. 
No, not when you hear a Greenstein anecdote these days. Joe, yeah. absolutely. Joe's been through like 12 generations of Pokemon. Yeah, by the way. how old are you? Yeah. <laughs> just, what if he's, he's one of these immortal people that just like replaces you know, themselves over the stri- generations? He's been to a strip club with every single inducted member of the Poker Hall of Fame. Yeah, you know, I mean, like, I've, yeah, I mean, I've I've been out. With Lane Flack, I've been out with Huxseed. Oh, I want to see a photo of like the first, the first photo of like the final table of the very first like World Series event. And you just see Joe in the background, like looking the shining. Like, yeah, like the shining. <laughs> Pratic pairs his five on the turn. Jakobsen with two draws. Check, check, and that draw hits again. The dodo end. Straight up. Stat trick coming in with a fact on Fontan. 700K in live earnings. Yeah, Fabek just checking, realizing how wide ranges are in this spot. Not going to turn the five into a bluff, at least right now. And could Martin go for a value bet with the bottom end? Feels like he should. You just fear the occasional check raise. So we can see. Yeah. Yeah, Rabbik's been caught speeding a couple times in the last couple of rotations, so maybe not deciding. Go, I don't really go feel speak, like. By the way, yeah. And mm. it makes sense. You're not value betting, particularly thinly. This is like bottom end of the straight, probably is the worst, one of the worst hands you're, you're value betting. Mm. Occasional, maybe an occasional two pair. And Rabbik. I think not good to have a four in hand here, really. Um, and again, a board where the big blind isn't incentivized to attack too, too much, and will just fold for that reason. Sorry, what did you say about the four? Well, uh, Martin's got to be very selective with his bluffs. So he's going to pick his worst, you know, four, six, four deuce. Um, yeah, like seven, four. Like low so cost, like some imperceptible percentage of that you yeah. having a four makes it a little bit but less likely that he's bluffing because yes. he doesn't have that four. Yes, exactly, okay. exactly, exactly. Okay. Um, having, yeah, five, eight, I guess, would be slightly better or whatever it might be. Well, obviously, having two pair, um, although sometimes you'll bet that yourself. The higher the cards, you bet, uh, bet the better, basically. Around to Seidel, King Seven. Nope. Sam, did you see Nope? No. Nope. Is it good? I, I love it. I thought it was. I thought it was almost a masterpiece, to be honest. As a film nerd, you'd probably like it. No. I, I, I'm sure that I will, will encounter it at some point. Yeah, I can sit in the small. It's going to complete with Ace Four. These guys, basically the same stack. Um, almost down to nose. 35 big lines each, 34 big lines apiece. Both of them with some fairly strong holdings for an unraised <laughs> blind on blind pot. Yeah, sexy flop. This board really, really favors Mateus. Almost maybe a range check uh, here from out of position. And Mateus, the king of spades, means you, you want to bet this a bit more often, I guess. Uh, Adrian, you know, going to consider, but play, it's more robust equity <laughs> uh, to play versus the check raise and such like. And you get more folds, of course. And so will value bet. The four with the, with the ace, maybe he just wants to go and check call, I'm not sure. Uh, see how Martin elects to proceed. Yeah, I don't want to do too much check raising on this board anyway. When it's going to change so much down the streets. And Front row. Bingo, bango. Martin turning the straight. No, 
Now, Martin is going to be very incentivized to do the value betting himself. They get called by exactly the type of hand Avian has, a five or six. See what sizing he goes for here. Probably want to go. Yeah, I mean, I guess you just split into two sizings. Um, and goes for. We'll find out in a minute. Oh, it goes really small. Uh, really interesting. And we'll just be, you know, this, this means the five's just going to be, it's going to be the same hand some of the time. Yeah, a little surprising. I guess we, I guess you have two sizings, a small one and a big one, and just yeah. maybe use the ace as a reason to go into the small one. Yes. How many EPT London winners can you guys name? Off the top of your head. Should we just start saying that? Yeah. Or, or you want me to set a line? No, no, no Just go rattle them off. A, a Robin, you let out. Sure. Okay. Uh, Was on the Poker in the Ears podcast. Uh, yeah. Sebastian uh, said, uh, Sebastian Top P? No. What's, what's this? The one when Jake and Kevin McPhee were at the final. Sebastian. Uh, Powley. Powley, yes. Yep. Vicky Corrin. Yep. Three. We're up to three. Um, the guy that was on the poster. <laughs> the American dude. I have a hard time with that one, too. Um, Check it out. Boom. Answers. Uh, David Van Palu. Back Benny Spindler. Benny Spindler chopped the... Aaron Gustafson. The one that chopped... The geezer that chopped with uh, uh, a Dwyer. Now, Ru yeah, Ruben Visser. I wouldn't have known Gustafson. I wouldn't have known Gustafson. I feel like there's more than that. Yeah. Where's the rest of them? Got a page two? I, the, I, the G is actually this, silent. That, Aaron Gustafson. Uh, yeah. There we go. I, and David Ampelou. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Uh, yeah, I, my first ever EBT was the one Vampy won. Mark Telcher, your first ever EBT was the one that Vampy won. You know, I saw him. He came to my show in Edinburgh. Oh, Vampy did? He and his wife, yes. Very nice of him to come out. Is he the bad one? Really? He's got a real job now. What's going on? Yeah, I mean, what is it, a 50 Job. Actually, like employed like by someone. A, you know how I, all these I, poker players are like getting scooped gig? up by like finance yeah, he, people and all that. I think he's got one of those. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice. Pretty, Pretty sure he's thriving. Guy, yeah. yeah, smart, smart kid. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um. Ah, here you go, your boy Ben Heath versus Aleem Kanji. <laughs> Board is six, deuce, jack, seven, nine. Can you feel the heath? <laughs> All right, I'll allow it. <laughs> 92 seconds left, 52 seconds left. H2, easy seconds left. 22 seconds left. L2 seconds left. 61, 81 seconds. LI, 91 seconds left. 51. If he, if he times out, his chair just explodes and he's eliminated from the tournament. I don't know, you're supposed to keep track of it. It's just random letters. Thunderdome. Kanji folds, and that's going to put Ben Heath up over a million. Wow. That's a lot of big blinds. Maybe a little uh, marriage run good. Yeah, I mean, a lot of poker talent left in this EPT. I mean, it's going to be a very exciting yeah. couple of days. There's a, you know, absolutely stacked, stacked field as we, we see, particularly on this feature table. But yeah. Ben Heath in main event mode is uh, something to be, I don't know, him and Shemi on and the like, something to be. He's just thing. such a sweetie pie, too. You don't expect it. You don't expect a killer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these these guys, really nice guy. Eklund as well and Teos. Yeah. Really yeah. Nice Henry guy. Hecklin, the best. Great sense of humor. <laughs> Love him. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ma Ma Marish Rungu could be a thing. Martin also got married this year. Oh. Um, yeah. She's long time fiance. And uh, yeah, maybe, maybe it, it, that's it's not my ex, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, if mine's sleeping with you, your ex, but, um, ex, he's such a handsome guy. That's the best you can hope for. You're lucky he's not sleeping with your current girlfriend. Don't worry about it. Don't be protective over exes. It's true, you're right. Oh, we're seeing a little view of the. Keep the bracelet. This is the Martin. security camera. We're looking for someone shoplifting, um, and we're just scanning the room for yeah uh, someone stealing from someone's bag. It's like a Michael Haneke shot here. 
We're uh, waiting for tables to be balanced. Wow, we're going live to the balancing of tables. That's right. You could just see. Um, yeah, this is what it looks like when the EPT balances its range. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I assume, is that the, the mystery bounty in the foreground? There goes the mystery. Forty players remaining. EPT London. There we go. Good. Was that Mormon and uh, and Katie in the right there? Um, squint. Yeah, could be. Two of my favorite people. L.A. crew. Yeah. I occasionally, I occasionally get the invite to the Katie Lindsay. Oh wow. L.A. When someone nice drops set. out. Yeah, like, exactly. Uh, yeah. Right. yeah. It. They know you're always I'm free. Up. It's like they dropped out with an hour to go. Who's they free? Have to oh, be, okay. Well, yeah. They have to be sure they want me because. Of course, I'm accepting. Like yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, They're like we can't. They can't just offer it to me thinking it's a 50-50. Like, sure. I'm it. S A and B tier players in L A. get are pretty busy. You know, sometimes they gotta dip into the sea pool. And I don't know if you noticed who got balanced over to our table, but oh it's my your boy, wow. Connor Beresford. Wow! 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 You might remember him from such second place finishes <laughs> as UKIBT. Two days ago. Yeah, always the bridesmaid, Connor. You know, we have Connor Drinian, clearly the better Connor. But Connor Beresford is so talented, but, you know. Did you lose aces to aces in a million dollar buy in? No, you didn't. You're never going to be that cool. Connor was a little perplexed. He does. He wears. He just heard that weird joke about Connor Drinian. He just, it, it, he, he, you know, like when someone walks over your grave, somewhere, somewhere, someone somewhere said Connor Drennan was superior to me, and he just felt it, a little reverberation on the back of his neck. Two time. Yeah, 30 minutes ago. <laughs> Connor and Mateos. Wow. Going blind on blind oh, here. Yeah. This is basically a lecture in Einstein's relativity. Yeah, How can a joke yeah. 30 minutes later yeah. affect someone 30 minutes earlier? Time is a flat circle. Schrodinger's <laughs> joke. Yeah. Oh. Schroding is not the correct weapons, but anyway, we'll brush over that. Mateus picking up the pot. Five high. Cruelly knocking out six high out of the pot, <laughs> showing just how good he is. So mean. Drennan would have called there. Table <laughs> number again. Is this three? Please tell me he's at the wrong table. No, he's hoping. I think that's a little witticism from him, maybe. Oh, sure, yeah. He, he, I think he's saying, can, can I have really got moved? Oh, I to, see. To, to like, between can I get another one? Yeah, yeah. That's quite quite dry from Connor, I guess. That's how we do humor in UK, by the way. We don't like flag it, Joe. It's just very no. dry, quiet, calm. You know, this is our whole thing. You know? How did your stand-up go the other night, by the way? I couldn't. Why don't you ask Dude, me? He killed it. He killed it? Yes, it's, uh, it was... Exceeded expectations. Yeah, I mean he's good, but he was like he really uh, delivered. He really it was that. really had. It was the, a really good crowd. Hop, yeah, he had the crowd room. in his palm, yeah. palm of his hands. He had good o opens and stuff like people for him and just warmed yeah. us all up. Sam has been very supportive over the years. Has come out more than once to come see me. And has yeah, seen I, I would have seen me struggle I, probably a few times. I've seen you struggle one time. I would have yeah. been yeah. there, but uh, I surprisingly went deep in something while I was playing poker. Yeah. Sure it means there. a lot that you ask or that you think about it. Well, no, a lot of players are like, oh, I would love to, but I'm, I'm like, I get that, and it's nice that people bring it up at all. So no, I, I flew in a day early just to see you perform. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> oh, I was mostly to see you. Max, but really, you didn't really pay for that flight yourself, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Top pair for Fontan. Going to bet it. Should be the end of this hand. Yeah, not even a Besteris. Just a quick fold. First of his name. <laughs> King of the Andals. Besteris the Blind. That, that it, that, so there really is a like Hobbit style character who's called Besteris. Besteris is the king in House of the Dragon. Wow. Yeah, there we go. King Besteris. But it is not. No, him. no TV reference shall go unmentioned in <laughs> no. this broadcast. No. Except that Griffin has still yet to get through Patriot. That's true, yes. His favorite show. Well, uh, Sam gone through it. 
no. Wow. I don't think Samson's hatred either. We, we'd have talked about it a lot. No. I watched the rehearsal, though, in one sitting over the weekend. Oh, right? no it way. Was pretty good. So good. Love yeah. It? Yeah, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I watched the first two episodes really good. I mean, I don't know. How, the first episode is almost the best, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah I really figured it couldn't. I figured they must that was have a high pivoted point. at some point, right? Well, I like, think that, that was a pilot. That could have been the plan all I think that was a pilot. Yeah. And then then the show goes into a long form thing. But I don't think that was the plan all along. If I had a guess, I haven't read up on it right anything. Yeah. But, I, but I think they found some gold, and they were like, let's R- stick, let's with, stick this. with this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fonta and Raising, and we're dwelling for a moment with our top boy, the star of the show, really, Roman Krabek from Czech Republic. And wow, well, there got we go. The candidate. Even though it's gone somewhat more out of fashion recently, it was more of a lockdown thing. Some people still... It was like a 2018 to 2022. I mean, thing. in yeah. in fairness, the the lockdown sourdough in general was very popular. Yeah. People were starting to make it. Well, that's and they were why playing that's the handle. That's why we called it sourdough. Yeah, mm-hmm. because everyone was doing their sourdough starters. And you know, pocket eights again. Eights, just one of these hands that you're kind of forced to continue. Two mean hands versus a covering stack. It's not super exciting though. Hey, Sam, you want to give us a little num num? Well. Well, num num. Okay. Huh? Okay. Can we go num num? No. Who needs the graphics? Who needs human graphics team here? <laughs> we could do it, yeah. You know? Okay. All right. Let's see the flop, Juppy. There Ace, you go. Six, four, three clubs. I haven't been feeling the monotone bit lately. <laughs> no, we don't need to do it. We don't. Mm. But we we was great. Crunchy the flop. But, and we could just go like five percent. Here with H5 suited. Uh, you could check it some, but I think just like yeah, bad very eggs. small. Yeah, just the, what, almost play. like dealer. What's the smallest bet I can make? Like you can just bet 8K <laughs> yeah. here, basically, and just really base her king queen of hearts. Or and he decides to check. It's kind of okay as well. Um, I like and yeah. And, you know, there's if you had eights with eight of clubs, I wouldn't mind just blasting off here. And try and fold out queens and, and jacks uh, some of the time, but I don't know whether in a main event, you know, sometimes you kind of like, oh, I can wait, you know, whether Fontan, you, you know, there's there's some you, eights is not worth really anything here. Mm-mm. You're not going to check down and win. Uh, you may be not even going to get to see your see your gut shot. So you could think about just putting them in a the coffin. Uh, doesn't. You just I, I, and I understand that forty left in, in in such a I mean you wouldn't know it from the table but this is a main event uh, and now Hrabek going for the slightly bigger sizing which makes sense when you check back turn yeah and yeah Fontan just he knows he's was he beat pre flop he's cooked was he was he bet now but you know you can have a tank here but. This ain't the red king ten. Yeah. Put it that way. Yeah, it's hard to think. see that on the flop. Yeah, hard to, hard to show down. Wowee! There we go. Braga. I don't know what I was trying to say there. Robek stacking more chips. Still over eighty big blinds. Still everyone at the table. Not everyone, but plenty of depth here. Sure. What I'm trying to say. What's going on the outer tables though, Joe? That's a great question, Griffin. <laughs> Stay in your lane, buddy. Uh, Jordi or Jordi Garcia, Jordi Garcia has put <laughs> your hey, Wong all in, and Wong has called. Wong shows King Queen Garcia Ace Ten. Yeah, King Queen such a strong hand, but pipped by the Ace. Jordi versus Jordan. Ace on the flop. The chase is silent. Ten on the turn. Michael Orton. Ten on the river. <laughs> there goes Wong in 40th place. 12,000. 900 pounds. GG. Yeah, a bit of frustration. Uh, so, you're really excited to be 50 left. Really tough to bust out. Come on, Come on. Can, I, uh, can I tell you guys uh, an mm. anecdote about my first EPT London? Yes. Sure. 
So 2009, I was working for uh, Joe Cata's PR team. He had made it November 9. He came over to play EPT London. I'd never been to England before. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Is that Kings versus Sevens? Hold on. We might have to see what's going on here. Well, now we do. Yeah, all right. We'll pick it up in a second. Tell the story anyways. I think people can, can handle this. And just watch it. So I'm, uh, I'm wandering around EPT London, and I just stop to like rubberneck on a cash game and there's this uh, very boisterous American in a cowboy hat mm. and they're on the river and uh, he's playing against an English guy and the English guy takes a stack of chips and puts it in the middle and the American guy goes I don't know how many pounds that is but I'll raise you a ton and then pushes <laughs> all of his chips into the middle <laughs> that's a great story <laughs> Oh, man. That's got to get in your comic. Yeah, the sequel. The sequel's going to be long. Oh, i got to give Sam a copy of you my do. comic. Yes. But but do we know who they, this cowboy Like, is you, it, Are we going to reveal this cowboy? I don't cowboy remember is, who it is. Uh, no, I it, thought you were, it's going to get even better. And you're going to be yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and that's how I met Doyle Brunson. <laughs> no, like. But that's who it could be in his comic. Uh, I would have known if it was Doyle at the time. but yeah. I don't know if you should, should bother giving him. Like, he, doesn't, he doesn't really read. He's not much of a reader. <laughs> no, get well, he doesn't like it. things with pictures in it. Definitely That's not. Definitely you're like, well, you're messing up all these oh words my gosh, with colors. You won't even read a Shit. book before, you know, 1994. Now you're going to put pic picture books. Apologize for the graphics popping in and out of the sand. Yeah, yeah if you guys remember the board, it's now ace high. I believe three diamonds got those red kings. At least the king of diamonds up against a couple of sevens. Yeah, frustrating out. run out for Martin. Both because it's hard to get worse hands to bluff catch on this river, and occasionally, of course, you are beat. Very, very occasionally. Oh, it's two diamonds, actually. You know, is there any chance he's value cutting himself into ace three or ace five? Is there any chance he's going to get check raised? by a 4x or, or some such hand and he just elects to play it safe uh, and I don't blame him for that entirely Jacobson checks Jacobson <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if we're going to get another hand in or not but I these dealers are quick off the mark. Yeah, they're very gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, This well, one's getting in. I mean, on the broadcast, 15 seconds of dead air, whatever, you know. But, <laughs> but for these dealers, they pounce on that 15 seconds to get out another hand. Yeah, they're, they're true professionals. Yeah. This, this is happening. Speedy with the downs. Oh, yeah, yeah already started dealing, right? So it's in. We are going to go one more hand, then have one a break. One more hand. Little bonus content during the break. I believe Henry are we Cackler are we allowed to is going to is going to win this hand. That's my prediction. During the break, there's going to be some footage from the players' party that happened just a few days ago. Wow! Featuring dance moves from Nick Walsh, Felix Schneiders, and a one Sam Grafton. I should really be more aware that they're filming what we're doing. Players' party. I was late to because I was going to your comedy show. Who you that? We, huh? we came late. We came about 11.30. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I was there. The open bar was closed. Really? I should have seen, seen you. It was a small, small little... I, I was in the VIP lounge. We, oh, you guys oh. in the lounge. <laughs> Sick. I would imagine so. Disgusting. Here we go. Maybe not. Let's have a big... What a... Collision. We have to take these off. Exciting. Maybe not. Tan. Jakobsan. Yeah, same flop as last time, except... Uh, so different. Yeah, except there's a plus draw. 10 8 deuce. Oops, sorry, 10 4 deuce. A couple of hearts. A couple of wavy lines. Check, check. Uh oh. Action. And a diamond draw develops. Nice alliteration, man. It's am recognizing. He has the best hand reasonably often. And goes for a blocking bet. So sort of betting his hand strength. It's a little bit weird because a 10, of course, 
sort of worth pot and and so is a four so a little strange but uh obviously makes things nicer for martin who can very occasionally have the best hand and also obviously super strong draw and fontan will not be pleased to see that card roll off Am I, again, in a similar position? Wants to value bet, but also feels like maybe you're a little bit sort of face up. You just feel like maybe I just get like, it's a sort of feeling of like, am I just going to get check raise or fold it? Mm -hmm. Like, it's just, I mean, the mechanic doesn't really work like that. And I do think you do have to value bet, but it ju that's just the kind of feeling you get. Are they going to just fold pocket threes and check raise me when they've got deuces full of fours or whatever you know what i mean mm -hmm. or check raise you when they have pocket threes yeah i, I think by the way worst case maybe scenario. have a little think about check raising that but anyway all, all to the good maybe the break played a factor but that is where we are heading it's been a pleasure thank you Obviously sam here. lovely that's been awesome enjoyed it what a, what a feature table. Griffin, you were fine <laughs> hey at least you mentioned my name this time <laughs> it was worth it for the video Chip stacks headed to the break. Connor Beresford comes with the biggest stack. Everyone under 100 big blinds now because the blinds are going up to 5,000, 10,000 with a 10,000 big blind ante. Montan, Robek, pretty healthy. Awkward stacks for Viserys, Jakobsen, and Seidel and approaching the danger zone for Heckland and Mateos. Still alive and kicking though. That's London. That's where we are. We're taking a break. We'll be back in 15 minutes. You're watching Poker Stars TV. Blinds 80k, 40k. Put the mic on the button. I think everyone at the table is looking for that busto 100k to try and get that ladder. <laughs> Mr. Treniak, shorthanded, decides to call with a seven. No doubt to try and bust the 100k stack here. I think everybody wants a piece of this. They all want that sweet, sweet ladder as we head to a million for first. Michael's going to raise all in, another 15,000. So Martin pretty much forced all in from the big blind. Hasn't looked at his cards yet. We're going to have a side part, side part between Martin and Mike. Michael is our all-in player. <laughs> Just going to keep that pot in front of him. All right, let's see the flop on the side. All right, well. Six of diamonds, king of diamonds, deuce of spades. Martin this is check. everyone. Check behind him. Which is good news for Martin. Yeah. King of spades. It's now king six, king Such a clean turn. Diamonds and two spades on board. Martin has checked. Mike has checked. Behind. That's right. You don't mind the king hitting again. You just don't want any new over cards to hit. Yeah. They all quickly check. So the four. Michael's turning over eights. Eights are good, right? Mike has eight seven, and Martin has queen. Triple up. Triple up for Michael Martin. He's still in this thing. Mike brings us in for a raise of 240,000. Martin has folded, and Michael says all in. An all in bet of 300,000 off the 240,000 chip raise. It's over to Eric. 
much is it today? 300,000, 220. 220,000 for Eric Tagal, he's going to pass. So Martin Allen again, we saw him get that triple up. He's sitting on 300K now. All in with nines. Tereniak calls with King Seven. Michael has so not quite a flip. Martin Mike has King Seven off suit. King of Spades. Very likely to double up again. Never underestimate the power of a complete Seven free roll. Lions. Jack of Clubs. King of Hearts. Okay. One, Michael is, one Mike has flopped one top and bottom pair against Michael's nines. <laughs> Martin saying it's unbelievable. You do have three big blinds, my friend. That's the seven of spades. Mike on Mike. Michael's looking for one of the two remaining nines, or he's going to finish in fourth place. Let's see the river. GG, USA. Oh! It looked like his miracle comeback was over, but no. Michael Martin rivers the nine to survive again, gets the double up through Tereniak. What a joke. <laughs> <laughs> you, you gotta love having that hand on an EPT feature table. That's yeah. gotta feel fantastic. <laughs> Chip and a chair, my babies. Uh, by the way, Raksha, if you could grab that name for me, please, and just confirm with them that they have a real money account. We're coming up pretty quick, guys. I, uh, the spamming will end very shortly, but I feel like it's only fair. Make it a little bit of a ritual. He's gonna pass with the claps. Aces. How much do I have? <laughs> Wait, Mike Martin has aces now. Yeah. How much do I have, he says. This is legendary. This, this is when the aces get cracked, though, right? Like, <laughs> triple up, then double up. Now you're like, got him. And it's like, nah, king, queen just runs you down. It really feels like the poker gods play with you like that, right? You're like, wow, I made this amazing comeback, and then I still busted in fifth. So all in the 695, Tereniak says Queen Jack is one of his favorite hands, and so he's going to call. Okay, I know I just said the bad beat's coming, but this is an absolute gift. <laughs> this is a courtesy double up. Queen of spades, Jack of hearts. We'll see. Come on, one time. Michael has ace of diamonds, ace of clubs, deuce of spades. Five of spades, three of clubs. Spade. The aces are still in the lead here. Let's see the turn card, please. It's a four that's going to give Michael a wheel. All right. One more. Let's Six. see the river card. A six. <sighs> it's a nine. Wow, what a life. How do you feel? So triple up. Same nine of hearts on the river. Double up. Double up. Wow. And Michael wow. Martin is now a contender again. <laughs> Yeah. I will not have invented all it takes is a chip and a chair <laughs> for another six years, more or less, after this. Had I watched this final table, had I been there live, maybe I would have coined it then. Because this guy is chipping and chairing it with the best of them. It's over a mill, Eric. It's just got all the hands. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> wow. Eric's all in for a little over 1.1 million. I mean, you know what needs to be done, right? You know what needs to be done, sir. Right. You can take your time. Oh. Michael announces call. He makes a call. Can he find another double Michael up? That would be pretty nine. bananas. Eric shows 10 jack. Eric has the jack of spades and the 10 of hearts. Michael has the ace of clubs and the nine of spades. Eight of hearts. Oh. It's a Gut. pretty clean flop. He's just got to fade that queen. Yeah. The all important gut shot for Eric Lou. Let's see the turn card, please. The ace of spades. Michael's got three aces now. Eric's going to need one of the four queens, or he's going to be eliminated in fourth place. Queen on the river? No. 
And Eric Liu exits in fourth place. Cash is for just shy of a quarter of a million. £234,920. That's ridiculous, man. <laughs> Give me a fucking hug. That's awesome. Take it down. Hakim Kadari and Adrian Bonnet. Mark's just going to move all in on the button. Hakim Kadira and Adrian Beckerman. Thank you. Please. Gamma Ledin, Thomas Reed, I'm on, I'm on. Again? It's not Germany, it's Deutschland. Very good. Is this four or five hands in a row that Martin has said the words all in? You, as you stepped away there for a sec, Joe, he also doubled through with ace nine again. Queen of spades, three of clubs, six of spades. And he also uh, exited Lou. Does anyone else think it's weird that there's two Mikes and two Martins and one of them is Mike Martin? Oh, damn. Oh, I forgot. Sorry, I didn't see who he was all in with. Dodge a jack and he's going to double through. Let's see the river card, please. It's a jack! Oh! <laughs> what a sick run. Oh man! What you... How have I never seen this before? This is, this is the sickest run I've ever seen at an EPT before, for sure. Michael first. Well, we've got sixty-one twenty blinds now. King ten for Michael Martin on the button. Two hundred fifty thousand is the raise. Queen four call. seems like a, a reasonable defend hand heads up. Two hundred and fifty thousand. All right, let's take a look at the flop, please. Jack of hearts, ten of spades, and six of hearts. Mike's going to be first. He's going to check over to Michael. <laughs> check. Michael's going to go ahead and check behind him. These guys Mike the Martin turn. flops best with a pair of tens. It goes check, check. Turns three of spades. Yeah. Michael Tereniak, what are you doing? <laughs> Assuming that Mike Martin isn't going to make a pair every single hand. <laughs> A naive assumption to reach. Yeah. Michael's going to make the call of three hundred and eighty thousand. Let's see that river, please. There's a jack of diamonds. Jack ten six three jack on board. And Treniak is loading up. Mike Mars is licking his chops. Please give me those chips. 680,000, the river bet from Treniak, creating a pot of nearly 2 million. I mean, maybe you're not super confident in the 10, but you have to call. And let's remind ourselves that this is a 500,000 pound heads up battle. There's right. half a million quid in difference Michael between calls. second and first place prize money. And Martin does make the call. Mike shows queen four, queen four. Tereniak tables a bluff. Martin shows the winning hand. Michael's going to be first. I can't figure it out tonight. Michael Martin has not had a chance to restack his oh. chips. And he's now shoving Michael on Tereniak, who's got king nine. Hey, 
yeah, King Nines probably is the call here every time. Call. Call. Mike says call. Tereniak calls, and it is a flip. And if Michael Martin wins this flip, he will have won EPT London and the first prize of one million pounds. Let's see the flop, please. Flop is deuce of diamonds, three of spade. It is a low board, a great board for fours. Let's see the turn card, please. Yeah, just not even any sweaty turns. It's either a king or a nine, or it's nothing, and that's it. Mike no, there is a five for a chop. Mike's going to need a five to split this pot. Otherwise, he's going to finish in second place here in London. Let's see the river card. Tereniak looking for a split pot, but it's a deuce on the river. It's the full house for Michael Martin. And what a comeback. Good job, man. Left with Absolutely a unreal. bowl of rice. Triple up, double up, double up. Takes the chip lead, gets heads up. Congratulated by his friend, another EPT champ, Brandon Schaefer. <laughs> and Michael Martin defeats Ooh. Michael Tereniak heads up. Tereniak cashes for 525k, but Michael Martin gets the first prize of Ooh. £1 million. Pounds. If you hold me this hand on the phone as your friend and your backer, I would just hang up on you. I have pocket aces. Don't fold. Wow. I, How did you butcher pocket aces, Stapes? Let's see. I'm hear. under the gun plus one, and I make it $15 which has been my standard raise this entire game, unless, you know, there's been other weird action in front of me. Chris Birchfield, two to my left, three bets to $60. Whaley guy calls from the small blind for $60. It comes back around to me, and I re-raise to how much? 250 250 Yeah, I would James. say about that is good. I like that sizing. How about 1100 um, oh my goodness! That's that's too Can much. I, like, as a <laughs> professional and as a guest on this amazing podcast, I'm gonna stay on. But like, if this was a personal phone call, I would. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you hold me this hand on the phone as your friend and your backer, I would just hang up on you. <laughs> now, I'm I'm not going to defend this move other than to a, a couple a couple of a little bit of rationale, just a little bit, okay? Again, I'm not, I I said it's probably the biggest mistake I made the entire game. One is that it's like we're wrapping things up soon and the guy to my left is stuck like five buy-ins and has been getting it in multiple hands trying to win it back okay so i think that there's a small again i'm not saying that this i could have probably accomplished the same thing by making it 250 you're right so that's one thing and the other thing being that the uh the guy uh is now who flatted is the uh, has also made several crazy calls throughout the course of the night uh and is it has seven thousand dollars in front of him and does think about it for a minute but uh, no, they they both fold. <laughs> Whoops! Uh, and I win a very small pot. Where look, maybe I could have won a bigger one. That is obviously a big mistake. I would uh, genuinely say the real mistake I made in that hand is not knowing how many chips I had. Um, in my mind, perception-wise, everyone's got these gigantic stacks in front of them: four thousand, seven thousand, whatever. My eleven hundred's this. And so when I move all in, I just I'm just doing this. Yeah, but the and the, the, the chips do have specific denominations. You can't <laughs> tell what you have just by the actual physical number of discs. They do, and that is a mistake, and that's something that if I'm making that mistake, I bet other people do too. So I'm yes. just trying to yes. to to let me be a cautionary tale that. Count your chip stack out, even in the moment, right? Take your time. Like, you don't feel like, I have aces, I ship it. Like, I got overexcited. I didn't really under realize how much money I had in front of me. And uh, I, I did made a huge mistake that probably cost me some money. Um, just very quickly, I know that you ended up leaving this game with a profit 
I'm assuming that came by virtue of the forced Omaha flips. Correct. I won the final flip for uh, like seven hundred dollars, and uh, yeah, and, and having I... and having listened, Maria, to the hand histories. And the either lack of aggression or excessive aggression with pocket aces, you're thinking as an investor, thank fuck for those flips. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, like I, I, I obviously wouldn't take Stapes's action if I didn't think he could win in the game. But obviously, I think that there were a couple of things working against him to maybe be able to play his best, like like he said you know the short buy whatever so i mean however he got it i'm happy he came out a, a winner but i definitely feel like there's a few things we can learn from this session Welcome back to London and the PokerStars European Poker Tour as day three of the main event continues. Three levels down, two to go. With the caveat that in the unlikely event that we get to 24 players today, we will stop there, redraw for the final three tables and come back tomorrow. These are the top five players right now. David Doherty still leads with 1.3 million. Another British player, Ben Heath, who started the day third in chips, is still in the top five. Sandwich between them, Nils Bedell, Julian Sitbob. And players returning to the feature table, keeping the same lineup on the main stage where Connor Beresford is table chip leader. Henrik Hecklin and Adrian Mateos are the two shortest stacks, but not super short with the blinds at 5'10 with a 10k big blind ante. James Hartigan with Griffin Bencher. Who are these guys at the bottom of the list here? Martin, Jacob, Son, Eric Siddle. Who are these guys? Adrian Mateos? Never heard of them. And we are joined live from across the Atlantic and across most of the continent of North America by Maria Ho. Maria, we just saw you from the Poker in the Ears podcast, <laughs> chastising Joe Stapleton. And now we get to hear you analyze poker live. Did I come off harsh there? Because no. watching it back, I'm like, wow. No, <laughs> no, you can never be too harsh. I think you should have hung up personally. Uh, these are the payouts for the top 10. Price pool of £3.6 million in this London main event. More than half a million up top. 664 grand, in fact, for the winner. Right now, we are paying more than a min cash. With 39 players remaining, we're paying £14,800. Next money jump, of course, will be when we are down to the final four tables, when we're down to 31, I believe. So players getting back in their seats, then we'll get cards in the air once again. And a question from Lucas on YouTube. Is there a way to watch the table without the commentaries? Yeah, dude, it's called a mute button. But if you're using logic and you've applied that, you didn't just hear me answer your question. Obviously, if English is not your flavor, this stream also being brought to you in Brazilian Portuguese. En Francais. Deutsch. And hi, Valerian. One more. Espanol. <laughs> So, obviously, Maria, the narrative of this tournament has been how stacked the field is and how many great players, how many accomplished players we still have in the field with 39 players remaining. This is one of those feature tables that looks not just like the final table of the main, but like the final table of a high roller. Yeah, I mean... In a way, I'm not surprised to see it so stacked at these late stages of the tournament. Obviously, when you get down to the nitty gritty, the cream is going to rise to the top. But this this is exceptional compared to, you know, when there's less than 40 players in most fields. So I think we referenced earlier on that Eric Seidel's best ever result in an EPT main was a 42nd place finish. He's now locked up a new career record.
Arabic, one of the more active players of the last level. A couple of nice bluffs and some tough situations with the likes of Adrian Mateos. Really just some interesting hands. Calling with the 7-6 suited. Seidel with the Queen-10. Oh, top pair for Eric, but it is the flush for Harabek. Going to be a real tough spot here for Seidel. Because oftentimes you're going to be betting this flop for protection, but it's going to play as a check raise a lot of the time from Harabek. But here we see Seidel not wanting to get thrown in that coffin on the flop facing a check raise, whether it's from those value hands you're you know, pretty much drawing dead against a lot of the time, and then the bluffs, checks it back, and is now going to have to start paying up. 45. This is the point yeah, where I have to ask back. you, Maria, if you're still upset with Eric, or whether you're happy for him to get away <laughs> from this hand and continue his deep run in this main event. You know, yesterday, Eric had a little bit of a rough go at it, you know, having some bad run out. So I've decided I'm Team Eric today. I would like to see him get away from this hand as cheaply as possible. So perhaps a spade on the river. Oh, perhaps not, Maria. Uh-oh. <laughs> a no good two pair for Eric Seidel. And if there's anything I've learned about watching Haravik play, I think in a situation like this, Really going to make Seidel pay the max. Very in tune with how to get value in spots like this, I think. Yeah, I do think that the benefit of going with this polarizing sizing, though, is that Seidel is not going to raise this sizing on the river. He's just going to have to cry call, essentially, because he knows that he's up against a way better hand or nothing. See what happens when I root for Seidel, James? <laughs> I should go back to not rooting for him. Oh, Eric drops below the 20 big blind mark after calling that huge river bet from Roman Harbeck. Eric playing a stack of 182k. That equates to 18 big blinds. Harbeck's just become the table chip leader, by the way. Close to 90 big blinds. Beckenell asks, why do they still use two-color decks? Because there are two colors in a standard deck of cards, and a four-color deck in a live game where you're only playing one table is fine. But it's ugly. We like the classic. We like the classic. What I meant to say is that trying to apply four the four-color deck to live <laughs> poker is trying to fix a problem that doesn't exist. <laughs> Four-color deck is better. It's not worse <clears throat> in any way. Hard disagree. I remember going back seven years, we actually were trialing using the four-color deck in some side events. Joe and I played in a media event in Malta, and it literally felt like we were at kindergarten, that we were, like, playing <laughs> with the special deck. Yeah, Beresford playing this ace-queen as just a call facing the under-the-gun raise from Mateos. And it's one of those situations, you know, facing an under-the-gun raise for playing about 25, 26 bigs. You don't feel really comfortable 3-bet getting an ace-queen in the next seat. Um, better to keep those weaker hands in there and not get it in against, you know, what's often going to be a better hand than ace-queen. And this is a great example of it right here on the queen-8-6. Advantage, Connor. Mateo's certainly going to recognize that Connor has a much stronger range than Ace-6 suited here. 
but still wants to take aggressive action because it's a bit difficult to maneuver if you start playing this as checks. You know, some opportunities to turn this hand into a bluff based off the run out sometimes. You know, setting the price um, against the hands that are beating you when you have, you know, some backdoor ability here, maybe a six popping off or some hearts. Connor's going to go ahead and represent strength right away with the top pair, top kicker. Chaos calls, and this hand goes to the turn. Four of hearts, and Mateos picks up the flush draw to go with his pair of sixes. And Mateos calling this raise on the flop, I think, really reflects that Connor Beresford is representing a pretty thin range with this raise on the flop that, you know, maybe Mateos thinks Beresford could have something like King Jack suited with a backdoor flush draw, something like that. Well then. And then the chances that, you know, he does have a value hand, maybe you can turn a heart and get there, but now it's just like, uh So Beresford shoving on Mateos, all in to call. You got a pair. You've got a flush draw. Maybe there's a chance your ace is live. Obviously, in this instance, it isn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Mateos laying out all his time cards. Probably going to take a little bit of time with this one. I mean, it's definitely tough with the SPR for Mateos to feel like he could have realized his equity there. So now it's really just whether or not he could potentially have Beresford beat. Yeah, and certainly Mateos is going to expect Beresford to have value a lot of the time here. But also sometimes, you know, maybe, maybe Beresford does have those kind of King Ten of Hearts, King Jack of Hearts type hand, maybe Jack Ten of Hearts. And you're doing real well against those. You would just hate to look down at Ace Queen if you called here. So Mateos has already used two time bank cards. He might have to use a third. He has folded the A6 and surrendered the requisite number of cards. So he and Seidel are tied at the bottom. When yeah. it comes to this feature oh. table. Good fold. Sorry. Connor Beresford back up over 900k. 900 and 66,000, 96 bigs for Connor. So what is happening in the mini EPT London online series? So the 558 game is still running. The $330 PKO is still in late reg. And starting in 37 minutes, is an $11 hyper PKO in all of these tournaments, in every single mini EPT London event running every single day, added WCOOP tickets, added value in every single tournament, plus an EPT Prague package added to the mini main on Friday. Three tournaments every single day while we are on air. Early afternoon, mid-afternoon, and in the evening, assuming you're in Central Europe. So how much are you playing? Um, I started with 265, I think. 268. Thank you.
Mayanak Chandola, who's other commentator other than Maria? Well, there's two of us. I think we sound distinct enough, Griffin, that people wouldn't confuse us being one person. I'm not really sure about that. Please, never do that ever again. <laughs> you sound like you're from London. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, people thought I was Libri yesterday, so maybe Griffin and James sounds more alike than we think. There you go. Well, this is a great spot for Mateos. Found the fold on the previous hand. Now has aces. At least we'll pick up a little bit of dead money. And a very strong three bet from the big blind facing this raise in early position. You know, certainly an option would have been to just flat here and then um, play this as a trap. <laughs> Instead, the very polarizing three bet just goes through. So the Taos still hovering around 20 big blinds. Seidel with 18 bigs. Those are the two shortest stacks at the feature table. Of course, there are some players with no chips at all. We've just lost Simon Higgins in 39th place. In fact, we've just had a flurry of eliminations out in the field. Higgins has gone. Fabian Bernhauser has bust. And we have also lost James Williams. All these guys cashing for £14,800. We're down to 36 in the EPT London main event. Oh, that could do with a clean. for Seidel, Beresford with the ace eight suited in the big blind. Quite significantly behind, but kind of hand that has some cracking potential. Not really on that flop. And not a lot of implied odds against Seidel's particular stack size. Just playing about 18 bigs to start the hand. Like Connor is probably going to let this go. It's one of those spots where sometimes you are going to decide to call the call the flop, see a turn because you know you have that backdoor flush equity, like that card that, that <laughs> could slow down Seidel, give a free card. So Connor does elect to call. You know you are going to be ahead of <clears throat> hands like King Queen on the flop here. And even when your opponent has something like what Seidel has, you can find a way to either get there or start doing things like this. This is sort of the price-setting min bet Beresford is going for here. I don't necessarily think this is by design to, you know, start bluffing, but more just to set the terms. Wow. Wow. Seidel doesn't buy it. Yeah, I think against that min bet, he's going to target it with a raise. But a lot of the times, I think most other raise sizes will just get a call out of the queens. Beresford with the nut flush draw calls Seidel's raise. Deuce of spades sees the board brick out for Connor. Seidel's queens are good. Seidel really, yeah. yeah, sorry, Maria, but Seidel really thinking maybe this is a seven and I want to get more value. Hasn't quickly checked back. And Eric is going to win that pot. Slim Chaddy on YouTube asks, what is the best hand of the day you've seen so far? I would say aces. <laughs> um, I would say the best hand we've seen today Oh, probably we did have a full house, actually. That was probably the best hand we've seen today. <laughs> okay, well, the most interesting hand was probably 
Um, uh, Harabic's Ace King Three Barrel Bluff against the Jack Ten of uh, of Henrik Hecklin. That was a great one. Details of Mini EPT London on your screen right now. This is a series I was referring to just now. It's taking place online. If you fire up Poker Stars, you'll see that there is a Mini EPT London tab in the lobby. If it's not there, chances are it's not available in your part of the world. But this is running every day this week and across the weekend, actually. The Mini Main Event takes place on Friday with an EPT Prague package awarded to the winner. Every single tournament has added prizes Mostly W Coop tickets because, of course, when we get to the start of November, we have got W Coop Take Two. We're running the main event weekend again. Boosted guarantees for those main events. We're streaming the high buy in main event, and you'll be able to see it on Twitch and YouTube across the 7th, 8th, and 9th of November. You know what the great thing about the Mini EPT London, James? What's that, Griffin? You don't have to go to London. <sighs> You say it like it's a bad thing. Aren't you enjoying yourself? <laughs> I'm having a great time. I'm just saying. Just get on Poker Stars from a place you're allowed to play. Play it. Wasn't this your home city for a whole two months? <laughs> One year. Went to the London Eye and everything. Yeah, that's what people who live here do. <laughs> <laughs> A loosey goosey open here from Jacobson at the cutoff, probably the bottom of his range. I, I don't know if Jack Nine enters into the picture here with 38 bigs a lot of the time. So Queen Nine got to be one of the worst hands that he'd raise. Caceres here does have a gut shot. Bit difficult to play as a call. Might want to mix in some raises. Maybe a little tough without a diamond. We'll see how Caceres wants to play this. It is such a small bet. So maybe it will just play as a call because you have that equity. So Jakobsen still ahead with Queen High. I definitely think that this is a great turn card to mix in some leads here with a hand that doesn't really have any showdown value. Folds. Nicely done. The power of the out of position lead when the board pairs on the turn. We are going to head to the outer tables once again and pick up the action in a hand between Jack Sinclair and Alexandra Vulamir. We join the hand on the flop, that flop being Queen 10 4 with two spades. A bet of 48,000 from Villemieux, which has been raised by Sinclair to 110,000. You know there's drama when there's already a time bank chip in the middle. Triangle time, all in and a call. Villemieux, the effective stack, all in for 528,000. Sinclair snap calling with Queens. Ace, King of Spades for Villemur, flush and straight draws. Nine of Diamonds on the turn. Jack of Diamonds on the river. That is Broadway. The set is cracked by a straight. And Villemur is going to double up through Jack Sinclair. That's going to give him a monster stack. That's a big boy pot. By our calculations... <laughs> Villemier is now going to have around 1.2 million, and Jack Sinclair will be down to 700k. It says a lot about how many chips that Jack Sinclair was able to acquire. One of the better UK players trying to take one home. Yeah, good point, Griff. 
Uh, you'll notice Henrik Hecklin has disappeared from the feature table. He has not been eliminated. He has been balanced off the main stage. Quite a loose defend here from Seidel, if I'm reading this correctly. As we see Beresford on the button. Yeah, Connor opened on the button to 20k, and Seidel defended with Jack 3 offsuit. Yeah, it gets to real murky waters when you start defending hands like this. So it's one of those don't try it at home situations, but <laughs> Seidel obviously play, plays with a great deal of confidence. And wants to see three. Yeah. Wants to protect that big blind ante. Yeah, certainly going to have to take one off, though, here with second pair. Oh, wow, just wow. folds. Sweet. Well, guys, I mean, Griffin, if if you're going to defend Jack 3 off and uh, just check fold middle pair, then maybe you can defend anything. Yeah, I think it's <laughs> one of those spots where, in my opinion, is wow. maybe an objectively incorrect fold. But as we can see this time around was just the correct decision. A <laughs> uh, few people asking what it means when a player is balanced off a table. So the idea is all the remaining tables in the field, uh, you want to keep the same number of players or a similar number of players. So if a table has too many players, for example, let's say we've got a table of eight and a table of seven and a table of seven loses a player. So now you're playing eight and six. You want to play two tables of seven. Whoever's going to be the big blind next on the table of eight will move to the other table. Oh, I just thought it was like one of the tables. It was like leaning too much in one way. Jacobson or Jacobson, the jury's still out. Raising with the ace king and Fontana. Can defend with the dominated king queen. I always defer to James on this. James, what are we saying? If we're going to say, if we're going to follow the Swedish pronunciation, the closest, and granted this isn't spot on, would be Jakobsen. It would be a soft J. Bit surprised Fontaine is reaching for chips, but maybe just showing a little annoyance, the fact that he needs to fold such a strong, under hand from the big blind. But without a diamond in your hand, too, you kind of got to let it go. More outer table action coming at you. An all-in from Jessica Pilkington. And that all-in has been called by Ola Shemian. Shemian with ace-jack. Pilkington has Ola dominated with ace-king. And it looks like ace-king is going to hold on a queen, six, three, seven, seven board. That means Jessica Pilkington is now playing 270,000. And Ola Shemian will be down to 220,000. And a few people asking over the course of the day if there are any female players left in the field. There you go, Jessica Pilkington. Ooh, and this might be trouble for Arabic. Sometimes you're going to play this as a shove for the 25 effective. And it has played as that and gets a snap call from the ace queen of Seidel. Yeah, you certainly don't like it when you get snapped off in this spot, but not really a mistake to be shoving the ace three of spades from the big blind. So far, so good for the ace queen. Seidel, big favorite to double up now. But now some, as James loves to say, opportunities. That is true.
Spade on the turn would make things sweaty. It's good, Spacey. Oh, oh the eight spade. of spades. Ooh. So many chop opportunities now and a decent chance for Harabek to win the, the pot spade. outright. <laughs> could be singing, could be dancing. Deuce on the river. So this is going to be a chop pot. And you know what they say. Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a chop pot. pot. <laughs> Maria is so adorable <laughs> in the background. Just like trying to Guys. sync up with us all the way from L.A. I don't know anymore. <laughs> no, Maria, you get points. And I'll tell you why. Because you tried. Ooh. You did. Sam Grafton was here earlier. Oh, didn't even, in the booth, didn't even think didn't about even it. Didn't even dial it in. Didn't even, and nothing. Really? Oh, he never does well, it. I'm you didn't glad. know that? <laughs> well, no, I know that he usually doesn't do it. I thought that, I didn't know he never does it. No, he sometimes kind of like, you know, makes a lame effort. Today, <laughs> just kind of, you know. No. Uh, all, all I'll say, okay, is that since he won five and a half million, he's never done it. I'm not saying he's changed. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's the facts. Too big time for the Chop Pot yeah. song. Unbelievable. That is also fair, is the fact that Griffin and I took advantage of the fact that we're in the same narrative space to be in sync. We did not give you the correct pause to allow you to join in. It's on us. More, do you know what? It's on Griffin. It's Griffin's fault. It's 100% <laughs> Griffin's fault. It's about time someone else takes responsibility because I've always been the one to own up to it. And I'm tired of it. I'm no. tired of the backlash from chat as well. She don't, finally snapped. Maria, don't get confused. We're, we're, gi we're giving Griffin blame. We don't give Griffin responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Good di differentiation there. Jakobsen going to find himself in a hold on for dear life situation if Beresford elects to play this set as a, as a barrel boy with the range advantage here in the plus one seat. Vittorio on YouTube says, not sure Eric loved that chop pot. Vittorio, everyone means everyone. And Eric yeah. Seidel falls under the umbrella of everyone. Yeah, I mean, 100%. next time you see him, you'll, you'll have a big smile on his face. Yeah, why don't you ask him? Why does everyone love a chop pot? Because it means no one loses. And that's always nice. You could have lost the pot. Could have been a spade on the river. Exactly. Just a quick comment. I don't want to lose sight of what's happening in this hand. Obviously, Jakobsen still ahead with top pair. Beresford now with second pair. Um, a lot of people referring to the lack of the absence of table chat, you have to remember two things. The EPT is an international tour, and English is not the first language of many of the players. Secondly, they're very focused right now because we're talking about a significant amount of money that they are playing for. And sometimes they'll be relaxed, but sometimes they want to be thinking about their decisions. Really interesting river here. Four flush on the board. Beresford checked back on the turn. So now just wondering, is his hand a little too strong to turn into a bluff? Is okay. he going to be able to? Yeah. Does decide to just check back there. Kind of reminds me of, maybe it's just because I watched uh, on YouTube today, breaking down his f famous roles, but Connor Beresford kind of reminds me of Paul Dano. Um, can't see it myself. No? No, sorry. Chat way in. Do you even know who Paul Dano is? <laughs> Not you. Chat. I told you Seidel was smiling. That constitutes a smile when it comes to Eric Seidel. 
So action has been folded to the blinds. Martin Jakobsen in the small with King 9. Mateos, the effective stack here, has 18 bigs behind. Yeah, and a bit of a weird one because, you know, I think anything under 15 bigs, you'd comfortably always shove this. But 18 is getting pretty deep, but you still, you know, sometimes you just do it and yeah. then flip. So shoves on the Teos, who snap calls with ace-queen, gets it in good. Jakobsen does have live cards and has close to 40% equity. The Teos needs to hold to survive. Pretty big swing pot here. A lot of ways Jakobsen can win. Well, so far so good for Mateos. Queen high flop. Adrian now an 84% favorite. Oh, the king on the turn. <laughs> and we switch equities pretty much. Jakobsen now 87% favorite. And we are going to lose Adrian Mateos unless we see an ace or a queen on the river. Those expressions, it's almost like they've been here before. That okay. deuce, no good. Adrian Mateos' journey towards his second EPT title ends here as he bows out in 35th place. A little run good for Jakobsen, carrying over from the UK IPT event that he won. Mateos cashing out for £14,800. His fellow countryman, Paul Fontan, commiserating that. Yeah, an absolute legend, but now eliminated from EPT London here. Just fallen short. And now Martin's left wondering what next sicko is going to be moving to my left, <laughs> since there are a lot in the field still. So 34 players remaining. We're 30 minutes into the penultimate level of the day. And just a reminder that... I think it is going to slow down now. I don't want to say that. I'm jinxing it. Um, should it not, though, should we continue to see the same pace of eliminations as we've seen across the rest of the day, we will not play the full five levels today. If we get down to 24, we're going to stop three tables. Jakobsen now with a little momentum and some chips. Let's just see here. It looks like that's a raise to 25K. So similar to the principle we saw Eric Seidel utilizing um, with a lot of the but button play was raising a bigger sizing with hands. You don't necessarily um, want your opponents in the big blind to be peeling with their 8.7s and 8.6s or whatever kind of hands. But Beresford recognizing that this King Six suited is still ahead <laughs> oh, of the range <laughs> of Jakobsen's button open and not really Check. wanting to play this as like, you know, some goofy three bet. This hand is really a nice example, I think, of how you know, tournament poker in particular has has evolved and how the ranges have changed with, with players really studying hands and what's yeah what's good enough to call or play in certain situations. I don't think it was very common before to call with King Six suited in the small blind. Um, but you know, Beresford obviously a very well studied player, recognizing this King Six is doing pretty good against Jacobson's button range. bet would probably do the trick here. This is the worst pair Beresford can have. And you are sitting there with that jack, which is some equity. Okay, you win. Nice hand from Martin. Jakobsen playing 70 big blinds. So we've got four very big stacks at this table now. <laughs> Rabek, Beresford, Fontana, and Jakobsen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we've got Bassier playing 45 bigs, and Eric Seidel with 25 bigs. No shorties. And with a 66 big blind average, I stand by my assertion that it has to start slowing down, and I think it would be unlikely that we would get to 24 today.
Folded around to the blinds. Connor Beresford, 10 deuce offsuit. The old Texas Dolly. And Beresford calls. Ace six suited for Vasez. Oh, wow. Trip deuces for Beresford. Yeah, and, and trouble yeah, for Viserys, too, here. Because this is a very underrepped ace, ace high, uh, Maria. Yeah, certainly a hand that he's going to find a lot of continues with. And after Beresford checks, you know, some t good enough to, I think, go for a small bet as well. This is effectively, um, you know, a sort of a value bet from Viserys, expecting Beresford a lot of the time to, you know, check call with those king high and queen high oh. type hands. Don't know if that necessarily means that Viserys would be <laughs> betting with just ace high on the turn, but now with that six... You know, if you are up against something like King 4 or King 3, certainly a 5X type hand, you might expect to get called again here. Yeah, and if Beresford elects to just go for the check raise here with a couple of those draws possible, I think this area is going to have a lot to think about because the ranges are pretty wide open considering mm -hmm. this was a limp pot, blind versus blind. So in some cases where you might not give your opponent a lot of 2X type holdings here, you know, it's very likely that Bearsford could have trips. 92,000. Connor Bearsford does indeed check race. And you just feel sick if you're Viserys here. You just, you know, you decided to check back pre-flop in a spot where maybe you could have just taken it down with a raise. You decided to bet the flop because you thought you had the best hand. You thought maybe you got there on the turn if you were behind, and now you're getting, you know, two and a half X raise, and you feel like your hand is too strong to fold, that you'd be getting exploited too often. And suddenly this pot is almost up to a quarter of a million chips. Always coming seven, which does not change the outcome of this hand. It does change the texture a bit. Three diamonds out there. Might be easier for a series to get away if... Parisford goes for this big bet. One hundred and seventeen thousand. <coughs> yeah, it goes about half pot and certainly some potential combo draws on the turn that would check raise Viserys may not feel too comfortable about now with that river bring in the back door flush draw. But this is Connor Beresford and definitely very capable of bluffing in spots where you may not feel like people have bluffs, but does get away. Connor Beresford up over 90 big blinds once again. And we're going to have to head away from the feature table. We need to get out into the field. I'm hearing that Ola Shemian is all in and has been called by Michael Schmitz. Shemian with ace-queen. Kings for Schmitz. So it's not looking good for Shemian. Jack 5-3 on the flop. Four on the turn. The river card. Is an ace, Barry Greenstein saves Ola Shemian. Oh, and Old school watches out for new school. 
and Shemian will double up to over 500,000 and Schmitz is going to be left with the proverbial bowl of rice. He's going to have less than 30k. He's going to have three big blinds. Oh. Schmitz. <laughs> Jemmy and back up to a 50 big blind stack as we head back to the main stage. 20,000. Once again, quite a loose defend with the King 3 off from Seidel. But clearly this is a part of his strategy. And right now, this time, it's going to work out gloriously. He's Eric Seidel, Griffin. It's what he does. <laughs> and um, yeah, Bears. Yeah, a bit of, bit of a trouble, trouble card here for, for Beresford in, in regards to maybe wanting to barrel off some 4s and 3s, Maria. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, with quite a bit of equity in his eyes, especially if he has, you know, his opponent holding 4X, 3X type hands. Body you want to get them to fold, and you also feel like there's certainly quite a few cards on the river that could put you in a position to win the pot with the best hand at showdown. Now, from a strategy perspective here, um, Maria... I wonder if this plays just better as a call simply because, you know, you have the board so crushed in a lot of ways. You're blocking that king. So it's more likely that Beresford has a bluffing type hand like an ace queen, a queen 10, maybe an ace five, ace deuce, and just let them barrel off what they perceive your hand to be as a sort of jack X range. Now with that jack of spades on the river, that really changes things. It's going to make it tough for Beresford to bluff all in, even though it makes it may be, a, in a way, more difficult for Seidel to call. Yeah, I think Beresford imagines that he would have shed any 4X, 3X type holdings on the turn with that turn bet. So it does feel somewhat likely that Seidel has trip jacks. Check. Connor checks behind. Ship it to Seidel. So Eric, still the shortest stack at this table, but it's not a short stack. Playing 33 big blinds right now. Connor Beresford still playing more than 80, with more than half the level still to play. And we're going to head back out into the field because we just saw Ola Shemian double up through Michael Schmitz, and Schmitz was left super short. So this is not going to come as a huge surprise. Michael Schmitz is out. Oh. Eliminated by Shemian. And Ola Shemian who was playing around 500k is now playing 600k. 60 bigs for Shemian. Yeah, Schmidt was just left with a chip in a chair. Trademark Joe Stapleton. Well, talking of Joe Stapleton, he's back! Hello, my babies, and... Uh... Thank you for uh, quoting me correctly. Yes. So with Schmitz out in 34th, 33 players remain. That means we'll, the next time there's a KO, we'll see a table broken. We'll be down to the final four tables. And again, just to highlight, guys, even though the plan is to play five full levels today, so that's play out this level, level 19, and play through to the end of level 20. If, if we somehow get to 24, if we get to three tables, we'll stop there. This is what I want to see right here. This is the, this is where... Oh, oh yeah. is that what you want Ooh. to see? <laughs> yeah, I want to see war. Wait, who is that? Hello? Oh, you're talking about me. Oh, hey, Maria. You didn't know? Oh, hi there. Wow. 
You got to read the briefing, Joe, every time. Clearly. Whoa, pocket hat in the, the bin. Bow? No right way to play them. You is, can't. That nobody's right allowed <laughs> to make any comments. There's no right way to play pocket jacks. We've gone over this. That is a lot of respect there. When you're so deep stacked, I know that it might feel kind of gross to perhaps just select a cold call there from the big blind, but you know, folding definitely seems like a very, very tight yeah. route to yeah. take. The problem is, is that even though there is no correct way to play jacks, the correct way to play it there is fold and not tell anyone. Yeah, right. Unfortunately, exactly. <laughs> we're all here to chastise you and call you a nit. I am for it. Beresford, 881,000, still 88 big blinds. Can't stop, won't okay. stop. Rabic, not far behind. Fontan and Jakobsen, around 70. This is still pretty, pretty deep. Like Griffin's poetry. All right, Jakobsen, 10-8 under the gun. What are we, six-handed here? Hey, hey, don't get greedy, man. Oh, no, oh my God, he heard me. Wow. Did you see that? That's weird. <laughs> this series, in uh, addition to having a name that sounds like a Game of Thrones character, is starting to more physically uh, into a dragon into costume <laughs> yeah can you believe the graphic dragon sex scene that they had in the finale of house of the dragons it was, you know, it was like hardcore pornography it was yeah is this a fake spoiler i hope it is i've never seen dragon <laughs> get it on before <laughs> I didn't mind that. Oh, really? It's just that they were brother yeah. and sister. <laughs> the the dragons. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Like, yeah, they so, took the incest, in, incest a little far there with the, the dragons, too. I feel like I've seen on the Discovery Channel um, dragons getting it on, actually. So wouldn't be the first That's time for really me. really weird. Dragons aren't real. <laughs> <laughs> dragons are real. Do you think dragons are real? It's a show on HBO. <laughs> Wait a minute. What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I want? I want a subscription to the Discovery yeah. Channel. All right, we're going three ways of this flop. Seidel flatting on the button with seven five suited. Rabic defending, and this flop is Jack High. You know, actually, um, Rabic, little pet peeve is he hates not being able to see what the remaining cards is, like on the on the flop he has to fold. So he asks if, uh, if if he can go okay. rabbit hunting. Okay. All right. I saw where you were going. I, st I was. <laughs> if only I'd spotted sooner, I could have cut his microphone, but. <clears throat> <laughs> Not as quick as he used to be, Joe. In your in your old age, in your B tier days. Deuce on the turn helps no one. Come on, Eric. Yes, Try to I win this pot. Yeah, Seidel so checked behind on the flop, trying to realize his equity, but. If this gets checked to him again, doesn't look like it will. The series mm -hmm. with some of that gut shot equity is going to semi bluff here. Wow, it looks like a substantial <laughs> size bet here. Yeah, well, you, you want to fold out those hands like pocket eights and pocket sevens. And if you're going to do that effectively, you got to, you know, based on the action that we've seen so far on mm -hmm. the flop, you, you know, the kind of hands yeah. that Seidel would check back um, that would be value but have a hard time against a big bet. Something like that. But of course, Seidel, see, yeah, I'm struggling, struggling with this hand. Why flat, I didn't see any. flat I didn't see it and then not bet it, you know? But I guess you don't want to get check raise on the flop. Tough spot. Was it like a double knockout that happened? Did you, did they yeah, from the same table, yeah? Oh, okay. 
Did I hear maybe that guy? Rumblings of a double knockout? Rumblings and bumblings. Yeah, we have outer table action. Maybe we're going to eye in the sky. There's a table breaking. That's why we're here. This is the table breaking shot. <laughs> and I think I see, yeah, like sort of second row, deep in the room, close to the stage, people standing. Good eye, Joe. And we are going to see what exactly happened to cause this kerfuffle. And that is happening. Meow. Meow. So Ola Shemian and Alexandra Villemir again. 500K in the middle. These two got to get a room, I'm telling you. Yeah, Shemian <laughs> less than 300K behind. The board is King, Jack, 8, 7, Trey. Two clubs, three diamonds. Alexandra all in. Ole. And this one is for the champion. And we saw this showdown not too long ago. It wasn't an actual showdown. It was a square off, I guess, because mm. it didn't go to showdown. A bro down. Yeah. Uh, Ole folded to the river aggression after calling on the turn. And Ole's short. What's the rule? You always bluff them the first time, then you have it? I feel like there's levels to these things, though. Maybe they, uh, it's the opposite for these. If I could figure out how to have it, I feel like <laughs> this would be an easy game. Yeah, Ole doubled up not too long ago as well, and now being put to the test for his tournament life. Doesn't look like he has many time banks left to spare as well, so if just going to have to put his thinking cap on. If Ole snaps a bluff off here, do you still get to be proud of the fact that you made him think about it? Or is it no? Do you still, is it just bad? It's never bad. You almost got. I think any time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Any time I don't get insta called when I'm bluffing, is a win regardless of the outcome. Last one. These are the last eight seconds. Ole makes the call, and Alexander shows a flush. Ole with top pair, and it's no good. Ole Ole Oxen free. Ole Shemian eliminated in 33rd place. And if he had just folded there, he would have still be in the tournament. So, Ole oh out. My God, he's whistling to himself like a villain. <laughs> and we are back on the high and wide as we wait for that table. Continue breaking, which means we're going to get new players at the feature table. We should go back to eight handed. Thirty two players remaining. Yeah, four tables of eight. That's how that works. Remember your times tables. Oh, and we're down to thirty one now. Henrik Hecklin out in thirty second place. B tier. And we had to we had to make a real tough decision between Chevy and and Hecklin as to whose bust we were going to catch. And we've got new players here at the feature table. As if this table could not get any more stacked. Benjamin Pollock and Jamie Flynn. Yeah, yeah probably less familiar with Flynn than Pollock. Yeah, so we have big. two top three main events. Huh? No, we have three. <laughs> when, what did Pollock finish when he on the final table of the main event? At least top three. So there are three players that have finished in the top three in the main event. Eric Seidel, of course, famously at least once. Runner up, yeah. Blood runner up to Johnny Chan. Yeah. 
They're just proof that run good can last a long time. <laughs> And Lynn is raised under the gun. Welcome to the table. Ace Jack suited. Seidel flatting with fives. Three, three hundred. That's twice now. Oh, I'm kind of yes, Sorry. really yes. Yeah. Three, three, three. I'm surprised <laughs> about Seidel flatting. I think this is a bit better than the seven five suited. Okay. Um, you know they're they're playing. I mean, I think that like. Around this stack size, you should probably be considering folding a hand like fives, but I think it's okay, you know, around 35 and plus. So I'm not surprised to see Seidel call again. We've been seeing a lot of plays from Seidel that really reflects a level of confidence where he maybe want to, he, he seems to want to call hands and see more flops than the average, you know, big pro. I've seen some big, def you know, some wide defends. But it is difficult to play against very skilled players. I mean, set mining is, is a is a tough thing to do at this stage, not playing a lot of chips. Maria, where where are you putting those those fives at, at 31 bigs there? Yeah, I mean, I think maybe against a, a middle position open, I would potentially consider flatting. Obviously, against a, a late position open, you know, I, I might even consider shoving. But against an under-the-gun open, I do think that this might be a little bit too difficult to maneuver post. And you're not you're not even always getting to post. It's not like the players yeah. behind aren't ever going to find some big hands or some yeah. some squeeze, you know, whether it's value or even sort of middling value that wants to play as as an aggressor like an ace jack or something that can, you know, once you get through the guy in early position. So, I'm not a big fan of the flat, but I prefer drumettes to flats. Maria, what's your wing order? I am a buffalo or like garlic, parmesan, lemon, really pepper type of wings person. Bone in or bone yeah. out? Come on, let's start with the basics. Well, obviously bone in because I feel like the meat is a little juicier and tender that way correct but, correct uh, both correct answers so far and uh flat <laughs> drumettes or mix i like a mix and i'm heavy on the ranch heavy me too i'm I'd... heavy on the ranch i'm heavy on the blue cheese i'm a i'm a, I'm a drum man myself uh, i'm a good I'm, i like the sort of honey and hot kind of wing i i award both of you full points but you were you gave me a face with the garlic. Too. I didn't like the lemon lemon garlic. Yeah, that doesn't really that do was, it for me. That's, almost, uh, yeah. that's sort of weird. But she said there. buffalo first. So I'm counting that. That's true. Buffalo, bone in. I like to get. Uh, first of all, I'm kind of a big boy, so I usually get a dozen buffalo and a dozen barbecue. Yeah. Bone in. And I like a mix. I like a, I prefer the flats, but I like a drumette to make me appreciate the flats more. Have you tried doing the, some of these things? You know, you see these YouTube or yeah. TikTok videos of the people that can just sort of. Like oh, I, the, I just pull it out of my mouth. All yeah, the yeah, and all yeah. The, you can do that. Yeah, can you teach me? I, I've I, I see these videos, but I never remember how to do it, and I always forget when it's wing time. Sure. Can we get wings this week? They're not great. Oh, not great here. <laughs> yeah. There's one place I found in London that had really great wings, but it's not it's not close to here. Okay, I'm not doing anything after this. We can go together. They do something here that they call buffalo wings, and you're like, this is. This <laughs> These people have never been to Buffalo. Yeah. I can imagine. <laughs> it's got like malted vinegar on it and <laughs> cabbage. Action. Uh, folding around two. This guy. Whoa. Jamie Flynn. <laughs> That's not Jacobson. In like Flynn. <laughs> Yes, limping in like Flynn. Connor B. Yeah. Good. Just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Act like you've been here before there, Flynn. Oh, yeah. Limps. Oh, you're trying to induce the raise. It's not going to work, buddy. That's Connor B you're dealing with. You thought he was going to pop it up? Make it 35000 Not today. And top... 
Two pair for Flynn, bottom pair for Beresford. Flynn should make a little something here, right? Yeah, unless Beresford turns a seven or a spade and gets weird. Probably going to think about sizing up a little bit as Flynn now certainly want to charge a lot of those pair with some potential straight draw mm. as well. Those are going to come along quite nicely. Yeah, there's a lot of straight draws out there, huh? <clears throat> yeah, surprise uh, this plate is a, is a check here. Check. You can smell it. Six on the river. He's a little straighty. Just a little, though. You know, I guess it's just one of those things, too, when you have the board so crushed. You just want to give an opportunity for your opponent. Time to win like Flynn. 10,000. 20. 10? 10. 35,000. 35, Sorry, I couldn't see that bottom chip. Whoops. <laughs> oh, awkward. Mm -hmm. We'll say Connor is very balanced with his look of perplexion. Yeah. Yeah, he looked pretty confused with trips earlier. Yeah. <laughs> and now he makes the right lay down. What's your hotness level of the wings, Maria? Not quite. <laughs> Are we going like one to ten hot? What's the scale? Uh, I'd like to use Scoville, please. Yeah, do you know Scovilles? <laughs> <laughs> no. No, one to ten is good. We could do one to ten, sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go like seven and a half. Seven and I a half. I want it to sting a little bit, but I don't want to lose my ability to taste my food. Right. Yeah, I'm more like a 7.6. 7 7.6, 7 yeah. okay. Wow. Wow, really? just had a one up. Yeah, really <laughs> got Maria there. <laughs> I'm like a five. Wow. Yeah. Four or five, I'd say. The problem is, I don't, I don't, I like spicy food. For some reason, I don't like spicy wings that much. I, I kind of know what you're saying. I, like, I, it doesn't, it's not something that I, I'm that attracted to, but I love spicy food. Yeah. Both of you guys strike me as people that would be profusely sweating if the food was too spicy. I used to be like that, but I can handle it pretty well now. The problem is, hey, Fontan with the clangers, if you, um, if you get a mild, which is how, like, the spice, spice love I kind of want, they're usually sweet. It's like a different sauce entirely. I don't mm. like that. No. I definitely order hot wings if I'm not getting, like, yeah. hot honey. I'll usually get, like, half of them hot, half of them spicy honey or whatever. Yeah, I like uh, I like a barbecue or a honey barbecue. Fontan makes a 20,000. 6'5 suited from Krabek. Gonna call in the hard, uh, No, he's hard. not. He's raising three betting. Very good. Very good. Good stuff. Good, good, good stuff. Fontan has been kind of quiet all day, despite being the chip leader on the table for most of the day. Just hasn't really been able to get much going, but still maintained, you know, between that 700,000 to a million. And is just going to play this as a raise. How much would that be, right? And Ravik needs to know how much he's playing for a variety of reasons. Is this a good enough price for me to get weird and call an extra 95000 with my 60 out there? Do I want to do something even weirder and click it back, or should I just get out of here? Yeah, certainly the sizing feels a bit enticing when you're in position, but looks like does give 
Montana. Okay, it does call. I yeah, thought Rabbit thought wants I... to play. All right. <laughs> he wants to go rabbit Let's hunting. See a flop. You keep saying, saying that joke mm. until it breaks Joe down. 10, 8, 6, <laughs> two clubs. Rabbit catches a piece. That is the that is the ticket there. Nice size down. You flopped a pair. One hundred fifteen thousand and a slow, smooth call. Come on, six or five. Just an ace. Ooh. Maybe a card that could get a free one for Rabic. Yeah, if you give Rabic a three betting value range there, then there's going to be quite a few continues on that flop against that small sizing with a hand containing a big ace. thinking, do I ever want to find a way to turn this hand into a bluff and bet bet? Get those jacks through kings to fold by the river? Maybe even fold on the turn? Oh, wow. You kind of have to have this move in your arsenal. Yeah. Um, if you're going to play a hand like 6-5 suited in this fashion, so 3-betting, calling a 4-bet, you have to find ways to win is, when you don't get there. Is this size the move? Well, I think it's setting up the ability to shove for the oh remaining 400,000 on the Oh my god, how do you people do this? Right? How do you do if this? If you want to tell a story, let's start on the turn. Now, the oh, other thing that man. might... Uh, and Maria, tell me if you agree with this, but there is a part of Fontaine that's probably concerned about a full-fledged trap preflop of pocket aces. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I this think... This is the kind of line. Yeah, given how deep they were pre-flop, certainly aces will likely just flat there in position because a five bet there would obviously be incredibly strong pre-flop. So oh my! Does, wow, does get the fold oh for just that my. tiny bet. Wow. I know you're at home thinking, what is that guy doing to that small, small bet? But... It might just be a situation where Fontaine recognizes that whether or not this guy has it, he is going to go for it on the river, and I am not prepared to call, so why give up even this 80000 Man, that's something, too, that i, I got to start considering, is that as the aggressor there, you're thinking about your river move. But as, like, the sort of defending player there, you have to be thinking about your opponent's river play also, yeah. what that's likely to be. Yeah. I don't think this guy's block betting a 10 in this situation. You right. Know? He's not bluffing here. He's never going to give up easily. To not, yeah, yeah, he's not betting 80,000 on the turn to not try to bluff me all in on the river. And I'm not prepared to call. So let's save these eight big blinds. And uh, hopefully I'm not embarrassed on internet television. <laughs> Man. 20,000. Rabic back, the phone uh, back on top, still on top. Over 120 big blinds now. Huge pot. And Connor B has made it. Ace four suited on the button, and Viserys has ace king in the small. Does this have the potential to get a little out of hand? I think that ordinarily. You know, we talk a lot about how in fashion these suited wheel aces are as four bet shoves for, you know, around this 40 big blind mark. So it's in a lot of ways, it's a bit of a trap um, 
for Connor Beresford, but at the same time, you know, hasn't seen a lot of out of line behavior from Viserys, and this really represents a significant portion of Beresford's stack, half of it on a table that he's been doing just fine, playing small ball here and there. So I think this is a shove that Connor Beresford is really prepared to make a lot of the time, but but I think there's a chance he might just fold this time. What do you think, Maria? This is interesting. Well, no, yeah, he's got to go for it. <laughs> I was going to say, we can't read anything from his perplexed face, yeah, though, because yeah. we yeah. never know what that means. And he did go with it in this spot. So things did, in fact, get out of hand. Domination situation. Yeah, important not to be results-oriented here. You know, Viserys could have just felt... In, in this particular hand, if you did have King-10 off, it was like, oh, I, got, I just got to start acquiring some chips some, somewhere. And Beresford's going to raise this button almost 100% of the time. I got to three-bet this King-10 off for this, uh, you know, Queen-9 suited. And look, this is the power of these suited wheel hands, is that no matter what you're up against, <laughs> you can mess mess things up. I got the feel. Street flash poker. Red alert. And that's the face of a man that doesn't like that flop. It does like the turn. Halfway home, needs to dodge a lot of outs on the river. Which opportunities, too. To survive. 8% chance of a split pot. I've only got one chop pot song in me a day, so. No chop. <laughs> Double up. Yeah. The Sierra fades it all. And doubles up. To a quite healthy stack now. 80 bigs. Beresford down to 42. Well, at least can take solace that he is uh, 420. You know, lays it. Hashtag legalize it. <laughs> His stoner friends are going to love this one. <laughs> and you can see the look of relief on the face of Nicola Vasieras. Oh my god, that guy has eyes? Thanking the dealer. Coming out of his cocoon. Get some fresh air in there. No long white hair under there, unfortunately. No. Oh. What a fraud. You call yourself a like the Targaryen? Yeah, okay, I was hoping to get that free roll that you got. What's that? Pretty close to a free roll. That flop. You were saying about Ace Four suited? <laughs> you live in London? Nah, like up north. Yorkshire. What does your little graph oh. say now? <laughs> York of Yorkshire. <laughs> Rusty says it's pronounced Vassier, no S at the end. It's pronounced Yaband with a D at the end. Thank you for your comment. Oh, this is my favorite uh, comment right here. Well, if he had just called, he could have shoved post -flop, flop and pushed him off his hand. I am a chat pro. <laughs> Wrote, I am a chat pro at the end of the <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were adding that. No, no, That's no. much better with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Flynn takes it down. Flynn kind of looks like that the guy from the meme where he's like sweating and thinking about pressing two different buttons. You know that one? What now? Ah, the kids at home love it. There's like a meme where it's like this guy with blonde hair and he has to choose between pressing all these different buttons and he's like sweating. It's like a two, cartoon. Two buttons, yeah. Two buttons, yeah. yeah. You know the one? Yeah, I know it. That's what he reminds me of. So I hope he gets into a real tough tough spot and starts sweating. It'll really make my he day. He does look like that. Guy, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah. You know, Griffin has a reference for everything. And I'm like... 
Do you spend a lot of time on the internet, Griffin? <laughs> Rhetorical question. Okay, good. Yeah, because uh, Maria, are you on? Maria, you uh, want to get I, in my rotation yeah, of memes? Are you, are you on Griffin's list? <laughs> I might have to say uh, something. No, some, but but you know what? Add me, add me to that group chat. It's actually not. It's personalized. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> I, I only send the ones that I think uh, certain friends will like. I'll give you a test. I'll give you a test run a couple days. Yeah. I don't see. I think Maria is a lot better at leaving people on red than I am. Yeah. I, I know from experience. And, yeah, I need uh, I need engagement. Just just emojis is, will suffice. But if I get like oh, two okay, or three perfect. memes in a row with no interaction, even an emoji, uh, you know, we're uh, we're on a break. If. If Griffin sends me three in a row, I'll reply to each of them. I'll give him a little something. It's like I have to have a real backlog for me yeah, to... We, we did have a scandal, actually, once, where I sent him a meme and he said, not my favorite. And I just turned that into a whole bit where I, where I was so outraged that he said that to me. How dare you say it's not your favorite to me. Not my favorite. Not my favorite. It's like... It's worse than saying nothing. How are you supposed to curate to my taste if I don't give you feedback? That's, that's true. I, you know what? You standing up to me that day probably has made it so that I haven't sent you ones that you wouldn't like. I was so happy when iMessages allowed you to just thumbs up or, you know, react to the message without even... I don't even have to send an additional emoji. Yeah. I can just... Do not highlight the message. React to my messages. Not you specifically, everyone. It's so annoying. I don't need a thumbs up from you. So if, I'll, <laughs> if I'm like, I'll be there at eight. And then I put my phone back in my pocket and then it's like, bing, and it's a thumbs up from you. I wish I could disable that. So Robert McQuirk says, ha, ah, just go Google two button meme. Well played, privilege. Apparently they're just calling <laughs> me privilege now. <laughs> oh, God, CYP. It's got a pretty good ring to it. <laughs> Vessier with another Ace Four suited. Sid says, "Got to go with the standard heart reaction." Yeah, but then what if you actually really do love something? Hmm? Think about that. Twenty-three thousand. The raise. Good boy. Frabek with Queen Deuce of Diamonds. Yeah, let's see three. I feel like getting cooler. Let's get some diamonds. Yeah, out so there. far it feels like everything's kind of gone Haravik's way, but this could potentially not work out for him. Or, you know, he might just turn another deuce. We'll see. Pair and pair. Provassier. And Haravik, whose name sounds like a hair. Robert checks. Osier bets 50,000. It's a big bet. 50,000 into 61,000. Yeah, it's the kind of bet you can just oh, fold okay. to, really. I yeah. mean, you know, sometimes okay. you see these standard small C bets, and obviously you just continue with a bottom pair or an ace high. But when you're facing a big pot size bet like that, no backdoor diamonds, you're just like, all right, man. You can have it. I don't, we don't need to get weird. And that was the day Joe started betting big on every flop. <laughs> I've been experimenting with various oh, flop, size, flop, 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 flop bet sizing. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I just like to hear that your uh, C bet frequency is getting a little higher, or you're just your flop betting frequency in general. Is that is that a known problem of mine that I don't see that enough? I feel like there's just some hand histories you've told me where it feels like you play a little bit more cautiously than than you should. You know, yeah, don't want to get some more chips in the pot when maybe it would behoove you to do I don't, so. Well, the problem is, <laughs> oh, I, behoove. <laughs> it's a real nice way of saying you're a nit. Yeah, well, I have no problem 
continuation betting. It's after that that I just like check him <laughs> up <laughs> almost exclusively. Kings for Seidel, no action. You guys should uh, listen to the recent Poker in the Airs podcast where Maria is the guest and we go over some hand histories. Of yeah, I, I started listening I, when I came back from uh, when I first came on air, I listened to the last couple of minutes, but I, did, I missed the hand history. You guys were just laughing so much. Yeah, because I, I the, the hand I saved for last, I just completely butcher it. Like maybe the worst that anyone's ever played a hand. <laughs> okay, I really want to hear it. I'm going to listen. Okay, Maria, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you your first meme right now. Ooh, I am very excited. Are you I sure? Can't find you. Are you People. sure? Or is this like it's relevant? One, you want to? All right. You want to come out of the gate strong. You never have a second oh, chance. Oh, I keep to on writing Mario Ho. Ho. That's not your name. It's Mar Maria. Mario Ho. Mario Ho. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but Griffin, if I see it and I don't respond, because you know we're on air, I'm trying to be professional. I'm <laughs> it's relevant. Focus. It's relevant to the. Offended? It's relevant to like okay. something we just talked about. I'm not just. Randomly, like Look, just meme lording. Maria, while uh, on air. Maria, it's just something you reminded me of—a meme that I uh, reminded me of. Had no problem <laughs> excoriating me over my poker play, and she's gonna give you some live, <laughs> live advice on your meme game. <laughs> All right, that's good. That's good. Ace, ace, four on the flop. Jakobsen defending the small blind with Queen Jack. Seidel, the nonchalant continuation bet of ten thousand. That is it. Well, I'm good. Can I get some five thousand, please? Uh, yeah, just five. Thank you. Fifteen minutes left on this level. Maria, what? you're gonna have to to go in your message requests folder since you don't oh, follow me. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> wow, today is the day, huh? We are just coming after. Do you know how many people? Lifetime have complained to me about Maria not following them on oh, social really? media. It's so many. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I wanted to read this comment. From, speaking of, kidding. here's I a comment, here's a comment from Nick don't Walsh. Don't follow me. I don't, I don't post anything on Twitter. Uh, I want to read this comment from Nick Walsh. Yeah, do it. Maria once told me, you can three bet that hand if you want, Nick. Just don't pull a stapes and miss the C bet on the flop. Don't you have, like, th like uh, isn't there anything else you could be doing, Nick? <laughs> don't like pile four. on. I played four. I got your back, man. Four but nine seriously, nine. you need to C bet more. <laughs> I don't know how anyone would know this. All right, well, I like this. A little one eyed poker. With Benjamin, don't call me Kevin Pollock. Yeah, I did that once. Didn't like that. Kevin Pollock does a great Benjamin impression. And wow, Maria said she loves my <laughs> meme. Did she say that, or are you just making it up? <laughs> and she said she followed me. <laughs> it, uh, it destroyed her internet connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah blew it up. <laughs> well, this hand's getting kind of spicy. Oh, my goodness. Oh, what my goodness. What do you do here? You go you just, all you in quite happily. It. Yeah. And you know what? I know we're playing one card Monty here with uh, Pollock, but very unlikely that he has a better hand than um, Beresford. And why is that, Joe? Because blockers are, are real. In this case, I'll Rabbit you, I has the queen his hand. Less likely wouldn't. that Pollock has queens. He's going to shove the 40 bigs. Now, Pollock, he does even have ace-queen suited of spades. 410. Probably not even be thrilled at this spot. Probably breaking even against the range of Beresford. And then all the other hands out there that could be sharing your outs. Pollock. <coughs> Giving it a think. This much action behind. 
Imagine if he still has queens, like, right. he just has, like, yeah. a queen of clubs okay. under there. That'd be so sick. Ace, queen suited. Oh, did I call it? It's queen spades, didn't I say it? Because blockers are real, right, Griffin? Isn't it just as likely that he would have an ace, that he would have a queen? Hmm? Pollock's going to fold here. Hmm? Pollock's a great player, but he's, he's also just, like, just values his tournament so... He, stick, he sticks around. He's not going to stick it in here with ace high for effectively his stack. I just don't buy it. Even if he thinks Beresford might take ace jack here and shove. It's way more likely to be a pair. And still got to worry about some of these flatters. You know, the cutoff could be trapping sometimes. Probably not. But with all that dead money out there, it does, I guess, make the call more... Interesting. Just, you, you know, you just working off the backs of all these calls, all the dead, all that extra money in there. What are you going to do, chat? You got ace queen suited. You don't know what your opponents have. What do you do? I, I get away from this pretty easily, pretty handily. Maybe too much. You don't. You don't continuation call here. Benjamin, no, I wasn't in the usual suspects. Pollock. <laughs> he knows if he calls here, he's going to go for the whole nine yards. One second, I'm going to look up uh, Kevin Pollock's IMDb <laughs> for more jokes. You could ask the marvelous Mrs. Maria. Oh, nice. That is a good one. Poker commentator says, I'd love some ICM suicide for table three, please. He, he, I think he, See, he, the problem with this ace oh, queen whoa, here is whoa, whoa, Paul, there's, a, there's a, few, a few good men behind. You, you know? Go. Very good. Pollock did, in fact, go for it. And he is going to be flipping like the whole nine yards versus. Uh, 2017's so Axis, guys, where I, I he played the voice of the crew. <laughs> One of these two. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess, I guess <laughs> has a slight <laughs> mathematical <laughs> advantage. <laughs> Sorry, it was, it, war dogs? <laughs> war dogs. <laughs> oh, We're done with it. <laughs> Bits crumbling. <laughs> Big old flip here as we get down to the nitty gritty of this tournament. Potentially for 31st place. But I was suited. No. Two <laughs> spades oh. on the top. <laughs> Out <laughs> city. 50, 50. And and there's Maria. Oh, well, 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 well. A dead heat. Like a whole 10 yards versus... Willow. Oh. And that is the flush. Oh my gosh, he wasn't Willow. Was he played like one of the little guys. One of the brownies. Mm. That's right. The brownies. Beresford can okay. still... You know, it's one of my favorite movies. I'm not joking. Got lots of time to talk about Willow. Yeah. <laughs> Mad Mardigan, man. Ten or a four. Otherwise, Beresford left with nothing. And that is going to be wow. it for Connor Beresford. You know they're making a Willow TV show? Good I luck, guys. I did know that. <laughs> yeah. Connor Bustaford. God, how did I not see that? 30th place. Excuse me, 31st place. 17,000. I don't know my good feelings say no. <laughs> 50 pounds. I'm actually surprised that he found a hand in that spot. Because I can uh, This one looks good. It would be coming so wide then. Because so many people are mm, You know what? I'd rather have a newer one. No, this is mine, yeah. I mean, yeah. Just surprised see, this is why you don't have a black phone. Too many people have black phones. You're not sure. You gotta go. Green. Nobody has a green phone. Viserys with some range expert talk after getting a couple <laughs> of big double ups near that one million crew. 
no? Most more than two guys. Prabic. Makes it twenty thousand. Jamie Flynn with the Jamie Flynn hand. Ace Jack again. Yeah, and on thirty-four big blinds, what do you do? You probably can go either way. Anything with fold, you can call. You can call. You, you can, can just rebet. Rebet. Yeah. rebet. Three bet. It's just weird if you get shoved on. You know, you're playing 34 bigs. Button hijack. So yeah. Dyslexic potato. You were in chat earlier when we answered this question of what's the reason behind no phones in the main table. It's for game integrity reasons. Oh, yeah. So so you can't even find out on the 30 minutes later. If you like can. The, you just have to get up from the table and then, and and then talk, talk to, to someone on the rail yeah, or get yeah, your phone yeah. for a minute. But it is an effort. Yeah. Yeah, and tough for people who don't have friends. <laughs> They're out there. I can, I'm sure you can relate. Trust me. <laughs> Griffin's getting up from the I table mean, to send point. people memes. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of the meme, Maria? Uh, I thought it was very funny and appropriate. And also, Griffin, I followed you. Dude, so. Wow. Earned I a didn't follow. make any of that up. Okay. Earned a follow. I didn't do that. But I do expect more memes for the follow. I mean, it's yeah, no, I not. Not. you know so what? For nothing. Understand the trade-off. You know what? You know, like when you sign up for like a like a yeah, they send you emails. No, yeah, but you have to. They say like, how many emails do you want to get from us? You should tell Griffin now, like, because yeah. he goes wild sometimes. <laughs> I do go on little binges sometimes. Let's start with one a week, um, one a week. and hopefully I don't unsubscribe. Okay, fine, one a week. Wow. I'm going to have to set a timer so I don't jump the gun too much. Joe, how many memes do I send you? A couple a day? <laughs> she thinks I'm a saturating. Couple, a couple a day? No. <laughs> how many do I send you? Like I'd say between six to ten a day. <laughs> I don't send you that many memes. Well, we can, we can settle this right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I've gotten... I've gotten four from you, t <laughs> four from you so far today. Okay. I mean, the number is probably so high. We're glad that it's the human calculator that's counting. Yes. Yes. So in exactly. the thousands. In the thousands. <laughs> I mean, we are at the ten thousand level here, so this is really his Q zone. <coughs> The fun flop, King Jack Ten, two diamonds. The series got that little ace of diamonds. Jack for Pollock and a straight draw. Twenty-four thousand. Continuation bet. Pollock flicks it in. And there Ooh. is a Diamond on the turn. And Diamond Targaryen. Is that is that a is that a uh, seven, eight, nine, ten jack, is this right? Nine, ten jack, king, queen, is this just a double gutter? Yeah, a double bottom belly buster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does feel like this is the perfect turn to continue barreling and probably going to have to follow through on the river, trying to shed a lot of those 
second pair, third pair type hands from the flop. Big bet coming in. Ba-boom. 111,000. Playing just not checkers, but bollock. 111, 130 seconds of this pot. Benji's going to be really aware here that the hand that Viserys has is... Yeah. Just doesn't want to get involved. Nice hand from Viserys. He's allowing him to pick one if he if he decides to pick the, the four of clubs. Yeah, that'd be great. That would have been fun. <laughs> ben Frabek. <clears throat> What's wrong? Viserys. Viserys. Why do you know I was going to say something about Hrabik? <laughs> that he's the chip leader of the table? Is he? Chip leader as we oh. head into the break. Sorry. That's I should okay. let you do your job. You're professional. No, no, no. It's okay. we're, we're looking at this series. I should have been speaking about it. Anyway. Mm -hmm. The players are going on a break. But if you have not been watching all day today. It looks like there's cards out there. We do want you to stick around, though, because there's some key hands we'll be showing while the players are on break. If you need a catch up, if you Master need a, key? a previously on EPT London. We should do that. We, we, we could do that, right? If we have a pre someone say previously on, like make it kind of this fun, dramatic thing. Spice it up. Yeah. Well, James does that at the beginning of the day. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to do it. Griffin's a bit of a ham. Okay, that's all. I'll, 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 Ooh, we are not. I'll sending, send this off after this, okay? <laughs> we are not sending these players. I would let you do it, except for the fact I haven't gotten it right yet today, and I really need this, sh this shot to do it. Really? Yeah. <sighs> okay. Are you going to say previously on, though, or are you going to just do, like, your normal thing that... I'll do previously on. Okay, sweet. Flush draw versus top pair, which is now flush draw and straight draw versus top pair. And no. Full house for Seidel. Pollock with nothing but a 10 high busted draw. I missed. Pollock just gonna wave the white flag here. That's right, Johnny D. Like Joe says, open enters hit trips on the board. <laughs> Pollock. Uh, I played this hand so weird. Okay. Played this hand so We're weird. Gives up the 10 high. Oh, uh, Do I mean, not give uh, Eric Seidel uh, information. Donut entry. Seidel. Ah, he did it. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Okay, now they're going to take a All right. stupid table. Right? Yeah, there's going to be a new feature table when we get back. Eric, don't you worry. You guys have been through enough. Coming back with Jack Sinclair, Ben Heath, and Alexandra Voulamier, who is the chip leader. These are the stacks heading back into the field. Rabek, it's 93 big wide being released. 
Now the players are going on break, but you should stick around. Strap in, buckle up, hang out, and enjoy previously on EBT London. He did it. So Ben Heath is open under the gun with King Jack and Roman Harabek from the Czech Republic has a dominating hand, King Queen. He has called the chip leader, Julian Sipborn, in the hijack with 8-3. Should highlight, of course, that if players find 30 seconds too little, they are given five 30-second time bank cards, which they can use at any point to extend the shot clock. They will get five additional cards at the start of every day. And crucially, any cards you don't use, go in the bag with your chips, you carry them over to the next day. Which? Oh, yeah, 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 with the chip stack. So we see <laughs> Thomas Searson calling as well anyway. out of the big blind. We go three ways to the flop, it and it is domination rotation in Ben Heath's favor. How much I'm going to give you? Everybody thing. catches something except for the best hand. <laughs> really? Yeah, it should be put out here. 7-5 <laughs> off in the big those. blind, obviously facing a relatively small uh, open here, of course, as we come to expect from the modern game. But with the addition of those antis in there, you do get a really fantastic price just to flop and try and see if you can't connect in a meaningful way. So, cyberson has got a pair of sevens is checked. Heath, who's got the best hand, is checked. Action on Harabek, who has just king-queen high. Backdoor diamond draw, backdoor straight draw. Bets into 40k, 12k. Yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head. Uh, the, the nail on the head there, James. Having the backdoor straight draw and the backdoor flush draw and the two over cards is probably why he's going to continue in a multi-way pot here, despite being um, in a bit of a pre pre precarious situation. Yeah. Excuse me. So, Stat Trick tells me that Harabek is one of two online qualifiers at this feature table. Now, I think it's fair to say that Roman Harabek, even though he qualified for 530 is an accomplished player, has more than 400k in live earnings. Interestingly, there is another player at this table who we haven't seen in action yet, Risto Parnat, who is in for just 55 and has no recorded live caches. Whoa. Well, one now. That is true. So with Ben Heath calling the bet from Harabek, we go to the turn, which is the six of hearts. Wait, where'd 7-5 go? Folded. <laughs> Well, that seems dumb now. <laughs> Heath checks a second time. Probably down to 8%. 45. And bets again. And bets pretty big, Nick. 45 into 64. Yeah, chunky. And I was going to say, I feel like this might be more of a slowdown turn, but I don't see any reason why it continue wouldn't be okay as well. I think conventionally, 45. not yeah, yeah. always the snap barrel card, but um, he might it's think it's he's going to get, especially from that position, you know, some 7x, some 4x, maybe some pocket sixes what if you're the flop, but obviously now it's making sets on the turn. I don't know. What if you are already trying to tell a story to get a jack to fold? Is that just a, a silly thing to think I, against Ben Heath? I, 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 think it, I think it would be... Well, we about to find out. I guess we are, but I, I, I think it would be pretty uh, time banks. ambitious to try and get a jack. <laughs> ambitious is a nice Long way to go. Is five. <laughs> nice oh, oh there man, cheaper. I mean, you could just bet back, get there. You, you, you could just bet and just know, like, no, it's always coming. It's not Pizza, often people yeah. semi bluff Let's a queen. Too much. <laughs> yeah, this time. Yeah. Eight, I guess. Eight. Two, four, twenty, four. A queen draw. Maybe three. Six, three at least. So Harabek having well, like the, the ten flop you get and the turn can now eight, manage at the river and potentially get cold. Yeah. Now you have two <laughs> yeah. yeah, for two whole days people are taking that whole time. <laughs> it's not fair, I feel. 90,000. Three streets with King Queen. I mean, in, in fairness to Harabek Oh, no, wait, it's well. not three streets. Excuse me, we're check, check on the flop. Oh, no, wait. No, 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 no sorry. That's why bets are in Bat River, yeah. <laughs> I think, in fairness to Harabek, I think he probably had a plan to bluff the river if it became a diamond as well, which might actually have worked to make a 
Jack folds some of the time, but I think he had a plan outside of strictly hitting the queen. I just wonder if it came, if it comes like the deuce of spades, if he continues here again, that would be a really interesting comparison. Ben Heath has played a time bank card, thinking hard about this. It looks like he already knows what happened. <laughs> He's just like, how? And he finds hey, Do you want to play a show one? We'll show one card every hand we win? <laughs> I mean, Why not? It's fun. It's TV table anyway. We're going to know the hand, so nobody's up to it. Yeah, but you got to wait throw minutes. Stacks and then I'll do it. <laughs> does it change sure. something? Where, where does stacks change something? It doesn't change I mean, anything. I mean, you can sit on the TV table. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. why. That's why it's more fun, like, if we show one. Rabeck opened under the gun. Syverson shoving from the small blind. And looks like a call, and looks like we're going to be off to the races. Flip that coin. Good luck. It is the pocket pair that is actually statistically behind right now. I assume due to folded cards. And Syverson <laughs> is going to need these tens to hold, or he is eliminated. <laughs> there have already be been 11 bust outs today. We're down to 69 players. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah, club. two clubs. Club, ten of club. If you can fade this, if you can do it. anything. Ooh, what? what? <laughs> if you can fade this, you can do anything. You can't. Queen on the river, and that will see Syverson KO'd in 69th place, taking us down to 68. Chips go to Roman Harabek, who's now playing a 100 big blind button. stack. Double button? Double button. Thomas Syverson did get the ladder, though. Cashes out for £11,200. That's what everyone is now guaranteed. Robeck with King Queen, Parnat in the small blind with Ace Nine. He's now playing ten big blinds. I mean, I appreciate Nick. You'd rather be the first person in, but is this a spot where he should move all in? Um, this is a really, really tricky one to get right because, of course, we do have an earlier position open, but he's got it right on this case. He does have the best hand. I think there's a very good chance he gets a call though. Yep, it's definitely a call. So here we go. Qualifier versus qualifier. It is Risto Parnat who is at risk and slight favorite. Live cards for Harabak. I'm blocking both of you. It's good for you. You say you had king queen? Huh? You said you had king queen? No, no I, th I said I blocked both of them. The flop is 10-5 nice deuce, him, ace high still ahead. Five cards for Parnat to fade. Does not want to see a king or a queen. So you had ace king or ace queen? Ace <laughs> <Yes>, king. Ace <laughs> king, wow. Good fall, you're going to make the nine for good fall. Ace on the turn does put a straight draw out there. Yes, it's top pair for Parnak. Yes, he's a 9 to 1 favorite, but he has to fade a jack on the river, which he does. So Parnak doubles up through Harabak. Yay, Parnak. Yeah, that's a big hold. And we are getting it quite deep here in London. Parnak time. Double. Excellent. Only first. So Fontan with aces. Yes, 30 minutes delay. Correct, 30 minutes. 30 seconds would probably not be enough to protect the integrity <laughs> of this tournament. Well spotted, Chad. Well spotted. So clever, so clever, as always. So big blind is going to come along here. King four of hearts. Really, really nice combo to complete with here in the big blind. Or defend, excuse me. 
in a multi-way pot. Lots of dead money in there, especially with that big one ante in play. Okay, so a pair of tens for Mateos. Hecklin pretty much bricks. Fontan still favorite with the overpair. We do see the aces check on this texture, and I think this is a very, very interesting hand to analyze because a lot of players just go, well, I have aces, and uh, you know, what am I, okay, I'm just going to smash in a huge bet here because what about the clubs, what about the straight draws? You get yourself into a lot of trouble on these kinds of textures, especially when you've got players like Mateos um, flatting from that position where he will be flopping two pairs, he will be flopping flushes, he will be flopping one pair of straight draws that are just not going to get out of the way. It is much better to actually have some pot control here once in a while with the aces. You do underrep your hand to a certain degree as well, but you just don't want to end up getting into a huge pot with aces where you've got no redraw with the clubs or anything like that. And uh, sure enough, Mateos did have one of those combinations that can do you a lot of damage if you allow the pot to get out of control. But, oh, all clubs on board. Everyone is playing the flush on board because neither player... None of these three players has a club. Um, so if this goes to showdown, they are going to divide this pot equally between three. I have a flush. Me too. <laughs> Everyone has a flush. And because these players get to chop this pot, you know what they say, Nick? Everyone, Everyone loves to chop pot! Falsetto. I'm glad you picked up on that. I've been working on it behind the scenes. You guys have no idea how much rehearsal goes into those moments. As we rounded to hand number 37, ladies and gentlemen. Cards back in the air. Quick fold from Fontaine under the gun. King three off. Ace Jack for Miller here. And he is six big blinds effective. I think we all know how this is going to go. Are you saying it's Miller time? I'm saying it's Miller. Oh, for a minute, for a minute, I thought he was just going to make the call. Well, he is not all not in. Not all in. Not all in, though. You guys see what he did with the chips there. There's a few little chippies behind. It's a virtual all in from Miller. I think he may have just left the one chip on top of his cards. Chip in a chair? Oh, this is so unfortunate. The king himself, King of the Series. Makes the call on the button. Hacklin's folded the small blind. It's 39. King of the Series, first of his name. King of the Andals in the first man. So Miller at risk and behind a domination situation. What you gonna do? Probably go broke. Ah, uh, yeah. Just waiting for our uh, lovely dealer to get set up so we can see how the runout's gonna go. Yeah, this is going to be hard for Miller to come back from. Oh, he's going to need, what is it, running jacks? Or, yeah, I guess it's just the jacks. It is over on the turn. Adam Miller eliminated. Lunch. And cashes out from the EPT London main event. And I think that's going to leave us with 55 players. So Miller 
will receive £11,200 in prize money. Everyone else gets a ladder. We now see a jump in the payouts. Uh-oh. Mateo's flatting with the snowmen's nom-nom. Hecklin in the small blind with a couple of ladies. A very strong queen, we'll say. With two weak queens on the last hand. <laughs> this is a queen with a queen kicker. Yep. I mean, it, it, here's a guy that knows how to put in a, a squeeze as a bluff as well. So Absolutely. Mateos might be tempted to make a play. Like, does he ever just, like, flat with ace and then just ship this back against the three bet? I would two thirty-three. Very, very interesting spot. Does he ever just flat and try and play the eights from in position? Heckling the effect of stack. Yes, sir. So about 30 bigs, right? Yeah, there. So that. that's after the three bet. Uh, yeah, that's after the three bet squeeze, excuse me. And this is a, a hand and stack size. You are absolutely fine with getting those 30 additional big blinds in. Yeah, this is where you gotta go deep and figure, does this guy even have this line? Early. Yep, we called it. Uh, you called it. Domination time. situation. Mateos in big, big turbo here. Yeah, you can see what he was thinking. Just bad timing running into the queens yeah, here. Yeah, okay, yeah, I know it looks silly when he wakes up with queens, you guys, but this is a man that knows how to three bet squeeze as a bluff, right? You're going to just hit, pick up all that dead with money. With some bluffs and some middling hands that are going to fold exactly. as well. Your ace five suited. Yep, exactly. Your jack exactly. nines occasionally he might decide to do a little three bet bluff with there. And that's a queen on the flop, somewhat decisive. However, that. backdoor spades. You can get the three of spades. Lurking. Oh man, running spades would be so dark at this point. Lurking in the shadows. Ah. There goes the back door. Spades, lock it up for Hecklin. Now don't get me wrong, Joe. Best hand won. We love to see that. Yes. Right? And Hecklin, love the guy. Fantastic stuff. Whereas I, I sense there's a butt coming. There's a butt. The, the spade on the turn for the sweat for the stream. I mean, guys, would have been fairly hilarious. Just the sweat, though. And it's Fontan taking a stab here. Not going to get through Jakobsen. Two overs in the flush draw. It's Thomas. Thomas something. It's kind of the curse of the character actor sometimes, you know, that you get people feeling really entitled to. Boom! Nails the flush on the turn. That's 100%. Martin Jacobson, lock it up. Yeah, you get you do a one roll and then you, everyone remembers you for that roll even when you're yeah. like even when you're like 57. So, the one time I played on a stream on a TV show with Jason Alexander, I said, "Hey man, before we start, I was like, hey, do you mind if I, you know, questions about Seinfeld? Is it annoying?" He says, "No, no, 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 no. ask me whatever you want. Happy to talk about Seinfeld. The only thing I don't like is when people call me George." Okay. I was like, "Cool, fair that's, enough. That's reasonable." Yeah. No big deal. River King of Spades. So Fontan also with a flush now. Not sure how much he will value this flush. I mean, you flush might, is still pretty good. It, it is, any flush. It, any flush is still pretty good. I think a lot of people undervalue some of these smaller flushes in these scenarios, and that's where some of the better players can exploit you. In this case, not looking so hot, but of course, maybe on the turn thinking I've got some sort of a cool combo draw. If the spade is live, I know the three is going to be alive a lot of the time. Check to Senor Jakobsen, now only losing to the queen of spades or the ace of spades, but of course the boat's out there too. Given the action though, I think probably 
if he was losing, it would be to one of the larger spades most often. But he will have the best hand here. A oh, Laura, Laura, Laura. 44. So he will go for some value. A little over half pot. Nicely. A significant amount over half pot. Half is hard. And, uh, you know, once again, I can see the hold cards, and I think that this is a pretty cool bet for the I, four of spades to have to contend with. Yeah, exactly. And this is this is the kind of this is level. Would he do poker. this with no spade? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is this is the level of poker that we're that we're watching, Joe. It's just like you know, knowing that he can get value from more spades here and not being afraid of it. How many times do we see this played live? And it's always oh, I know you got the A's of spades. I believe that was a call. I saw it. Yeah, been table his hand, and wow. I mean, come on. Yep, absolutely mm -hmm. wonderful hand there. For come Jacobson. on. How many people are missing value on that river? How many people, Joe? Missing value as in they like check aren't, behind aren't on the betting river. enough. Oh, I'm trying to put myself as a very terrible player into Jakobsen's shoes. I think that I, I don't think I would check behind on that river, but I don't think I would size up that much. Yeah. Pay us all in here with 9-7. Yeah, and wants to swerve the call here. <clears throat> Jack-9 is right on the line, I believe. Uh, I think actually he probably is a call here with the big blind ante. But, but for be very tournament close. life, it's going to be tougher, right? Um, oh, it's you know, very... 62K left. No, 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 no. Yeah, he'll... he'll I guess with a little bit of ICM, he just, he just folds out. Um, yeah, and... Uh, it looks like he's giving him a thing. He, he realizes that this is close. Uh, occasionally, he will be dominating the tail, as is the case. Yeah, and if he makes the call, he will have the dominating hand, but he will be the at-risk player. Yeah, and you have to imagine Mateos just sweating this, recognizing, too, that a lot of dominating nines would be in the tank here, the queen and the king. Oh, the tank makes it worse in, in many ways. And right? the jack, yeah. You, it's not, <clears throat> not like you're just getting snapped off by A6 off. It's going to be... Oh, wow, does make the call. And this is bad news for Adrian Mateos. If he loses in this spot, he'll be left with just two big blinds. We are now at the 4-8 blind level. But you know what they say, it is always coming at 7. <laughs> Mateos, 24%. 30% survive because there is a 6% chance of a chop. But right now, it is not looking good for the 2015 main event champion, the player who won the Super High Roller at the start of this year in Monte Carlo. And he does have out. Sevens and sixes are working for him on this 985 all heart board. Yeah, and some opportunities as well. Absolutely. And we do get a heart on the turn. So, Mateos needs a six or a seven to win the pot outright. But he also survives if we get a heart on the river. And we sing everyone's favorite song. Yeah, it'd be nice to see Mateos. Wow, it does, does come. A flush <coughs> on board. And, and you've got a feel here for Kojikaru. Um, obviously, makes a very bold and brave call. Not easy to do uh, deep in an EPT. Is rewarded with one of the few occasions he's going to be absolutely crushing. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, none of that matters, Sam, because oh. <laughs> that was a chop pot. You know what they say? Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a chop pot. pot. <laughs> sorry, I forgot the priorities of the world. Yeah, I, I, was, we're entertainers. I was waving my hand. We're entertainers. I was like, what foremost. is this? Yeah, Your yeah. first rodeo? Uh, of course, sorry. It gives me, it takes me a while to warm up. And Eric is opening. Raised to 18,000. He'll be trying to ladder an extra seven positions for his all-time greatest finish. Absolutely. Probably be start tanking with 43 left. Uh, so Vadim, seven's in the big blind, only has six big blinds behind. Seems fairly obvious. There he is. And Seidel snap calls, and we are off to the races. Like fabric versus Ministry of the Sa uh, Ministry of Sound, one of these hands is a slight oh, statistical favourite. Show the last prefer, time I went to a club. By I the way. much prefer Ministry of the Sound. <laughs> Ministry of Sound. 
I hear they spin some good seven inch discs at the Ministry of the Sound. Oh, that's quite a strong flop. Trip aces for Seidel. Kojikaru drawing to a seven, two outs. They say it's always coming. They do indeed. Is it coming seven this time? Is it the year of Romania? No and no. GG Kojikaru. And that takes us down to 46 players in the EPC London main event. Takes his gilet and makes the long walk to the cash out desk. And pick a phone, any phone. <laughs> What's this? A Nokia from 1999? Oh, running so bad today. <laughs> Here we go. Finally, I've hyped it since the word go. Finally, we're going to see some Henrik Hecklin action. And Ooh. It's quite a juicy one, in all fairness. Very juicy. And I think, actually, this is one of the boards where, actually, Ace King gets to do a bit of bluffing. Um, a lot of times, it's a sort of hand we're checking back and showing down but queen jack nine as the preflop raiser especially from the hijack um is a hand that we can potentially attack with obviously on the flop we're just trying to knock out some live undercards or what have you it depends on the sizing yeah and already employing a bigger sizing here you see 35 into 48 obviously hecklin Balancing some time. It's not going anywhere, though. Uh, the spade, the pair, the open-ender. And a brick turn would be a very interesting card. See how the Zurich Raptors want to. <laughs> and now double flush. See, Hrabek has a club. Which provides some river bluffing opportunities. It's going to be interesting to see his strategy here i would kind of like to see him apply some pressure Ninety-five thousand. see is that an overbet or like a pot bet yeah it's an overbet I mean, technically, yeah. 2,000 more than what's in the pot. There's an overback. It's more than the pot. Yes. And you see, this is the only sizing that Jack 10 doesn't really enjoy. Any other sizing, more than happy to get to a river. Now, we're really not loving things. But Henrik Heckland will proceed. Wow. And this is a big river incoming mm. and complete brick. And there's a rabbit gonna ride on the river. Gonna go all in on the river. And it's interesting spot. Hecklin is gonna be left with quite a lot of these Jack X of spades, nine ten uh, of clubs, nine seven of clubs. Uh, queen 10, like pair plus straight or pair plus flush draw. Obviously, if we had a complete, it would be nice to have a completely ace, a clean ace king and ace king of hearts. But this is definitely a spot where you have to think about shoving all in. Some of the stronger hands, Hecklin raises on the flop or raises all in on the turn. And. Oh, all he's right. going for it. He does. He shoves on Hecklin. Griffin, you are the ice hockey expert here. Is this the equivalent <laughs> of slamming your opponent against the wall and hitting them with the big stick? Yeah, and Hecklin doesn't immediately snap fold. Yeah, it's interesting because as you mentioned, Sam, you know, so many of these combination pair straight or pair flush draw kind of hands Hecklin's going to have. and But because of having that, you also, you know, block some of the bluffs that Harabic can have, you know, the ace 10s and what have you. Something has been thrown in. I um, think I it believe it's a time bank. was chip. a time bank card, meaning Hecklin wants to extend his shot clock. 
And is that a consideration that you block like the likes of Ace Ten or? Pocket sure, but tens? you block King Ten and Ten Eight as well, right? So right. It, it, it's it's you know you're blocking uh, Queen Jack. You, you block value just as much as you okay. set of jacks. You block value just as much as you black, block bluffs. It's almost impossible to not have something that interacts with, with bluffs here on the board. Um, yeah, and speaking to the kind of hands that and that look like a... F well, we can't see, so we won't... Yeah, he folded. Yeah. Yeah. And frustration from Hecklin. And let's give credit here to Roman. <coughs> not easy to file all three streets obviously the two big draws two big flush draws breaking off and as we spoke Hecklin an intimidating figure a legend of the game and empties the clip gets it done and a hard earned pot for Roman Those were highlights from earlier now we're back to live action from day three of the Pokestars European Poker Tour in London the final level of the day to be played here in the Health Park Lane, hosted by the Hippodrome Casino. Players returning from the 30-minute break, and these are the chip leaders. Alexandra Vulamir with 1.7 million, and he is going to be headlining our new feature table. Alongside players like Ben Heath, Jack Sinclair, Jessica Pilkington, and Dan Kizu, the Romanian filmmaker. Here is the full lineup as the blinds go to 6,000, 12,000 with a 12K big blind ante. It's James Hartigan with Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And across the pond, as they like to say, Maria Ho. Hi. Across the pond and the entirety of the United States as well. <laughs> Full eight hours behind us here in London. Yeah, it is 20 minutes to nine at local time, 20 minutes to 10 in Central Europe. And that means no more mini EPT London action for you today. Registration closed in all three events, but three more tournaments tomorrow. More chances to win WQ tickets as long as well as rather real cash money. And we have got Big cash money up for grabs as far as the main event is concerned. Big cash at the final table with more than 664 grand up top. Am I right in thinking that we don't have any former champions left? We are going to have a first time winner here in London. We have no more EPT champions left, but we do have at least a runner up. Mark Jacobson. Good point. But it will be a new winner lifting that trophy on Friday. That's when we will play the final table. So here's the thing, guys. This is the last level of the day. We are due to play another 90 minutes of poker. But should we lose six players, we will end there. We will end at 24, have the redraw for the final three tables and come back tomorrow. Maria. Considering how deep they are, average stack of 750k at the 612 blind level, I think it's asking a lot to get rid of six players in 90 minutes. Yeah, it's going to take some coolers for sure, and obviously now with all of the pay jumps that are coming into play, certainly people are going to want to be a little more conservative. There's a lot of killers out there, though. They might be pushing the action. I'm going to boldly predict that we will play the entire level. Mm. I do like a bold prediction. James is just riding the high from getting the exact number of players that we were going to end the day with yesterday. So. I think it's the first time I've ever been right, by the way. Normally I either go way too high or way too low. <laughs> Today, man. <laughs> Mine is this one. No, this is which which possible? Action starting on Ben Heath, folding under the gun. Net. Aleem Kanji folds. Jessica Pilkington has pocket sevens, and that is a raise to twenty-five thousand. Uh, got some maybe, messages maybe. of support for Jessica on my Facebook page earlier. 
Yeah, I can't say that I recognize Jessica, but at least we'll get to see her play. I'm sure that there's good reason why she has been able to get through this tough there's field so far, and hopefully we'll be able to run up there's her uh, 20 big blind kind of stack things. right now. Oh, 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 no. Well, it'll be the ace that saves her here. It is a set for Vulimia, but I imagine as soon as Jessica meets resistance, she will suspect that her opponent has hit the ace. Jessica's Facebook page has a winner's photo from EPT London. Looks like she might have taken down an event earlier. And her friend's Martin Ward. This is the point where I say, Statric, verify. He beat me to it. She won the women's event. Well, you came second right in Barcelona. Was... Ah, yeah, one. Yeah. Follow up in the main might be the first time that's ever happened. My head doesn't compute it as a 1K because of how absurd the top prizes were. <laughs> so she has been check raised. Uh, that was streamed, right? Yeah. Just the final or? Yeah. Millimere just fast playing this, hoping that Jessica has an ASEX type holding, but unfortunately for him, not going to get any more chips London, out of her. In Barcelona? No, in London. Oh, just bigger. bigger than they were. Yeah. yeah. Not bigger than Barcelona. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I'm not sure about this. No. Uh, yeah. no the Whoa. Barcelona. Yeah. I mean, I think they hit the issues with gambling, yeah. like getting money yeah. here. Yeah. And then yeah. it's also just like... How are we feeling about the red and orange you know, combo? Hotels and accommodation are kind of like... Yeah. A little monochromatic yeah. for me. Yeah. Sure. That, yeah. So it's kind that of tough. Also, yeah, people, but I ain't exactly... Monochromatic a, is dapper. very in these days, though. Is it? Yes. I, I have to say, I kind of like it. And I think he's really making it work for him. Well, you really led me down the primrose path on that one, didn't you? <laughs> it's subjective, Joe. No one's right. No one's wrong. Like, what do you think of this? What do you think of this outfit over here? I'm like, I don't like it. Well, oh, I love it. Okay, what do you think about Dan Keyes' hat? Mm. Fantastic. Again, it's working for him. He is rocking that look. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I learned my lesson. You're of Romania. Kizu has opened with King Jack of Clubs. Ben Heath has ace three of clubs in the big blind. Luckily, there's no way clubs can come out because of blockers. No how, clubs. How dope would it be if Jessica Pilkington won this event and there would have been two women winners in London? I mean, she would only become the fourth yeah. woman to win an EPT. Yeah. We know she'd get the shout out from Vicky. Another reason why you need to get yourself to London, Maria. I, w I was just thinking, I'm like, you know who hasn't won an EPT, though? Uh, uh, yeah, lots of people. <laughs> oh, uh, an appearance from Barry Greenstein. Eve was already ahead, but now has top pair. Yeah, this... And just got checked all the way to the river and Heath just gonna check again bluff catching here Does give some respect to this bet, though. Of course, opening pre-flop from the hijack certainly can have some better <laughs> aces. The flush also comes in. I love watching the high rollers play against the relative amateurs. Dan obviously plays a f his fair share of EPTs, but he ain't no 100K super high roller. And I like Ben a lot, but seeing him flummoxed by the 
film director. And for wow. the best hand is a delight. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Well, the good news for you, Ben, is it wasn't captured on ca Oh, wait. Uh, we got it. I guess you don't have your phone. The yeah, overbet from Kizu it's gets the, the job phone. done. I was, uh, I was listening to Spotify earlier. I suddenly realized when you click on it, it tells you what's listening. It was like two people listening, and it's being hosted by some. It said hosted by someone else, and I'm a <laughs> participant in this meeting. I was like, I didn't even know Spotify had a, a like meeting thing, yeah. and it's just like me on my earbuds and someone else who's hosting <laughs> meeting, listening to my playlist. And I'm like, what the fuck? Is this? I don't even know what that. Yeah, Must be a good I don't know what that is. <laughs> that is uh, how do they get in? Unsettling. I, I guess they just search my phone on Bluetooth and join. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> that's 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 so Wi-Fi, I guess, on Spotify. So yeah. an under the gun race here from Jessica Pilkington with the snowmates. <laughs> nom, I was nom. really confused. I was instantly just like, Sergio Coutinho. He is a Portuguese man. Yeah. He's got Queen Ten of Diamonds. But usually it's just four zeros. And then you can just start playing death metal and someone else's car. <laughs> Race for him. I thought that was going to happen, but they just seem pretty content. 10 out of 10 chat pro comment here from Chris 3. No point in playing a weak ace if you're not calling a half pot bet on the river. If your name's not Colin, I'm not interested in what you have to say. And by the way, that half pot bet was uh, one and a half pots. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that when I used to play on poker, I I played as Alexandra Boulamier. Okay, I actually am liking it now because there's like a... I don't... I mean this complimentar complimentarily? Complimentarily? Complimentary? What is the word? I mean this nicely. <laughs> nicely. He kind of looks like the devil. <laughs> I thought you were going to say more like he looks a little bit like a pumpkin. I don't know. The devil seems like a very strong statement. Okay, so two players with Queen-10, both with open-ended straight draws. Uh, we have got street flash poker, though, for Coutinho. Royal flash alert. Look at that. Look at it. Where's his pitchfork? We did have street flash on the stream yesterday. Are we going to go one better? Are we going to go royal? Good point, Raisinator. Red cards. Red tracksuit. We don't ask for some. Loving it. Pilkington yeah. still in with the eights. What is that? What card is that? Last level. Yeah. It looks like a Broadway card. It is the Jack uh, of Hearts. Making a pair. Oh, actually, Pilkington folded the eight. So we have gone heads up to the turn. And Coutinho is free rolling. Four times out of... Sorry. Yes, four times out of five. I can do basic math. Four times out of five, this will be a chop. Now, don't get Looks too like excited. Bill Mayer wants to send my bluff in this spot. Wants to try to perhaps represent trips here. Uh, these are two biggest stacks. Did we mention that? No, we didn't. Both players up over a million. And if this goes to showdown, it will be a chop. And we're going to coordinate. We're going to rush into it. Mm -hmm. Please bet. Please bet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, at this point, I think given the run out, might just become one of those situations where are they willing to try to represent perhaps Jack's full now? Doesn't look like it. That. So this goes to showdown. Maria. Yes. As soon as you hear me finish saying, you know what they say, go immediately. Don't wait. Joe, you and I will give it a beat. We got it. So this is a chop pot. And you know what they say? Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a chop pot. pot. 
better. Not great, but better. I went immediately after. Yeah, I, I could tell. Like, I think the beat was too Didn't even give long. it a millisecond. No, we're getting eights and nines, tens. It's okay, sevens and sixes coming in now, but. <laughs> It put this, started we'll put off this so four in here. Well, uh, you banned. Just a contrarian. That's all. What did uh, What did Colin say? Uh, I think Colin tuned out a long time ago. Colin gone. Yeah. Raise. Two more Broadway cards for Coutinho. And Jack this time. Queen Jack off under the gun, yay, nay. 93 big blinds. Hello. Coutinho making it 25K with the Queen Jack. 8-5 suited for Jessica Pilkington in the big blinds. She's getting pretty short, but this is still a hand that's defendable from the big line. If she gets any piece of it, she's probably just going to have to go with it. Six. Is this enough of a piece of it? Because that could be a disaster, especially... Yeah, certainly not after this turn card. I think perhaps if a low card came on the turn, she would have been willing to semi-bluff with her hand. But in this spot with the check back, there's going to be quite a few king-queens, queen-jacks in Coutinho's range. Ace-queen, of course, another possibility opening from under the gun. Coutinho up to nearly a hundred big blinds. Villamia still the tournament chip leader with close to 150 big blinds. Jessica Pilkington super short by the way, eight big. She's in the danger zone. Danger zone. Sorry. Wayne Huang also pretty short with 15 bigs. Yeah, even though we expect play to slow down as we get to 24 players or the end of the night, certainly the chip distribution will play a part in terms of some of the short stacks being consolidated. There are a few really, really big stacks out there, and if they push the action, can certainly leave the short stacks not having many great spots to put it in the ace queen here really good spot for the shorty no oh, danny uh is that a virtual all-in from wayne looks like it so the opening bet from kizu was twenty-five thousand, and the re-raise uh, is to 180k so yeah wayne's left himself like but i mean i, I always seven thousand behind party on wayne spotify brain link <laughs> oh, oh my no. goodness alim kanji reshoves from the button with aces now, isn't part of the virtual all-in being able to like get away from this I guess yeah, not. there was a, well <laughs> it's more just a pay jump thing I think at this point just maybe waiting it out if that was the situation but didn't seem like there was much consideration for that not looking good hey oh, Wayne ace queen could win and monkeys might fly out of my butt charming <laughs> Queen's world. King 7-4 on the flop. 
Oh, King 7 4, not King 7 Queen. We've got ourselves a glitch. It's those monkeys. Swap it. Swap. <laughs> and Wayne drawing dead on the turn. He is eliminated in 30th place. Ship it to Kanji Club. Wasn't that the guys from the raid who randomly showed up in Star Wars The Force Awakens? Yeah, and it was like multiples. It, it was kind of distracting, right? Huh? That's the look of a man who just busted a player. Pocket aces holding so up. Has he? Yeah, so it's all this right and stuff. Oh, yeah? Yeah. There's like all stream from day one. <laughs> Probably like 40 times or something. <laughs> uh. Did he say no as well? Huh? I think he said no as well. I meant in this one, yeah. Because uh, then you went, are you nervous? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't, don't care. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Action on Alexandra. Holds the King Eight offsuit, Ace Ten. There is Ben Heath in the hijack. I really want to see Ben Heath, Dan Kizu, part two. Did I miss part one? Yeah, when when Dan got him to fold the ace on the river, top pair. Oh. I, I, I felt like that was a smallish pot that I didn't really feel oh, yeah, like yeah, a yeah. big confrontation, but he did get the better of him. A skirmish. <laughs> Like all at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess technically, Ben mm -hmm. Heath just won round slow. two since it was Keith's big like line. 75 bigs average. Right. Eight handed tables. <clears throat> Long tournament. Slow in what sense? So what's the eight of nine? Say 30,000. Looks like it did, but we've got. Yeah, it looks like Ben is looking to raise for the second hand in a row. Oh yeah, re-raise. <laughs> I mean, this time, rockets for Heath. Yeah, from these positions, you're just hoping that Phil Mir from under the gun has a good enough hand to continue with. Unfortunately, I don't think King Jack offsuit is going to be good enough to play out of position, especially when he three bets your under the gun raise from under the gun plus one. King Jack suited, of course, is a different story. Pre-flop victory. Two in a row for Ben Heath, this time picking up at least a couple more chips from the race. Did I miss some Bond talk? I don't know. I haven't been looking at chat for the first time all day. Oh, I just wondered whether you brought it up with Maria. No. Uh, we're out to the field again, where we find Martin, Martin Jakobsen in action against Nikola Vesiers. Looks like Nikola has shoved on Martin, and it will be all into call. We're on the river. Martin calls all in, and oh wow it's the bottom end of the straight against the top end of the straight that's come up a lot today in fact nicola had a seven card straight there as we see martin jacobson 
depart in 29th place. It's a bit of a bummer, I mean, for him, but also for us. Would have been cool. Have Martin go a little bit deeper. Yeah. Redeem those two second place finishes. Correct. I mean, he's done fine since then, let's be oh, honest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, looks like we lost another one. Yeah. We're down from 28 to 27 because Yanis Leparis has just gone out losing ace eight to tens. Kizu's, excuse me, Kizu's sixes doing well here despite it not really looking very good for sixes. And it checks around to the river. And Sinclair connects with the Jable. Yeah, I think Sinclair may try to go for value just because, you know, King Queen does get there, but I think he assumes that King Queen might have bet mm -hmm. on a previous street. And since it got checked around on the turn as well, ace high ace, uh, pair of aces, I'm sorry, would be a little bit unlikely in his opponent's hands. Now Kisu <laughs> trying to size this bet up. You know why? Because Kisu was like, I bluffed Rivers before. I bet not had it, so maybe my opponent doesn't have it this time. Maybe my sixes are good. Again? Yeah. And two hands in a row now. We have seen Dan Kizu, not in a row, but two confrontations, albeit small ones, where Dan's gotten better of uh, these incredibly accomplished players. Hard not to root for the underdog occasionally in those spots. Maria, you think I ever make that call there, two sixes? <laughs> I think it depends on how many chips you have left. Like yeah, if it was 30% right, of your stack, <laughs> probably not. Probably not. If it was 2% of your stack, you might flick it in. All right, fair enough. Good call, good call. Jessica with her eight big blinds, ace nine. Man, you really hate that from this early. But there it is. Through the BB. It's 106. Who is Ben Heath with King Queen? Uh oh. Jessica gonna be at risk. The odds are in her favor. Good luck. <laughs> so Do you really mean it, Ben? I know that yeah. was, I mean, I like Ben a lot, but he like looked away immediately. <laughs> uh. Ah, we got a nine. We do indeed. Pilkington now a 62% favorite. Uh, yeah. Bigger favorite now, near enough a 9-1 to one favorite, and just has to fade a 10 on the river, which would give Ben Heath a straight. Boom. That is a double up. Oh, that's got to be such a great feeling. I think if Ben Heath didn't wish her good luck, it wouldn't have come. So yeah. Thank you, that Ben. That was on Ben. Uh, Un11 Cool says you can pronounce Kizu more like Kishu. You can pronounce your band more like mm. your band. Thank you for your comment.
please. Tino with all the chips. Well, not all the chips, but a lot of them. Second biggest stack at the table. Finds a customer in Aleem Kanji who's got 7 6 offsuit. And the flop is Ace Jack 6. Tino with pretty clear range advantage. Opening from under the gun, plus one. Just an easy continue here. Continue. And <laughs> and for Kanji, you know, you have a little piece of it, but how much are you willing to pay to continue to see multiple streets? Maybe just one for now, but unlikely to get a cheap showdown, especially on this type of board. Two pair now for Kanji. on a board that ain't getting that good for two pair. Check, check. And a pair on the river for Coutinho. This is interesting because Coutinho rivers some showdown value, and with Kanji checking, does decide to check behind. Maybe could have gotten a little bit of value if he decided to lead. Been a good level so far. For Kanji. Yes, he Kanji. Bus swing. Runs down Coutinho. to drop in on the German stream right now. Apparently, Felix Schneider's the ultimate Star Wars nerd is massively, massively geeking off on Kanji being at the table right now. <laughs> Rathtar references are plenty. Wow, that's a little bit of a tight fold out of Kanji from the small one. blind with the suited connector. Counterpoint out of position against Ben Heath. Take what I can get. Yeah, I think you were beating four high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A little bit. When are you back to Madrid? Uh, 31st. Oh, okay. This is Monday, right? Yeah. No, Tuesday. Monday. Monday, yeah. <laughs> on a Monday. Yeah, on a Monday. Monday. Follow. Yeah, I know what day is. Hey. No idea. Hey, we don't know that because I fly there on the first. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Chip leader with pocket nines in the hijack. Raises to 30,000. Tight fold to a loose three bet. Yeah, I like this three bet in terms of the hand that Kanji's choosing to do it with. You know, the offsuit combos don't play quite as well post. You don't have anything hidden, you play 800. Uh, I started about 800. A nice yeah. king blocker. Get 
that look. I love it. Yeah, I think considering the effective stack size, a call is probably the best way to proceed with the nines here. And leave me out with nine still has the best hands. Such a King Jack flop. <laughs> Jamie asks, what is three bet? A three bet is a re-raise. When someone raises and then you re-raise, that's a three Seven bet. Six. And then another re-raise is called a four bet and so on and so on. The way to think of it is if the big blind is the first bet, a, bet. a single raise then becomes the second bet. Two bet. And then if you re-raise, that's the third bet. Three. Three bets. And I think it really kind of took hold when pre-flop raising wars were at their height, probably around 2009, 2010, when we would get up to five, six, seven. And basically, people didn't want to say, there's a re-re-re-re-re-re-re-raise. <laughs> yeah, definitely a lot easier to keep track One. when you say the number. Thank you. You can't just count the re's? <laughs> I think the person saying the re's when it gets to six bet is going to get a little confused. And they might say seven re's instead of sixes, and then we're all lost. Re, re, raise. When the crowd says bow, select her. <laughs> it's funny when James does silly things. Love me some artful dodger with Craig David all over your boing. Tino limping in with Jack Trey. Dan Kishu with douches. <laughs> they never so loses. So we're not even going to verify if this person was correct in the pronunciation. We're no, just I'm gonna sure they were follow correct. Whatever chat says. No, I'm sure they were correct. I just don't like it. <laughs> Did the correction come from someone called Colin? Um, it's actually no. central. Yeah. yeah. I think you'll find it's pronounced yeah. Chalin. I'm not exactly central. That's what it is. Chalin. I didn't book it. That's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Am I supposed to take the word of this person who says, is right pronounce? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, it's very central. It's a very nice area. Yeah. Yeah. Frick yeah. asks, no ante? No? Thank you for your question. Any nice restaurants around there? There's a lot of nice restaurants yeah. around there. Actually, funny that people were calling them a great they said they were there for Madrid a lot longer ago. They said one good thing that they really liked about Madrid was the food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's very good food. They managed to get the swear words out correctly. <coughs> I mean, I think maybe you notice it less. Like, if you go to really nice places, yeah. you probably notice it less than here. But, like the difference just because here you can get really good food you can yeah. pay a ton for it yeah it's just like the really nice places there you'll pay less and then the the quality of the food in just like a random place you right. just walk in without it's just better yeah okay. i tell you mean yeah yeah so you, the average standard's better yeah i think a lot of spanish people are just like well i can cook well so <laughs> if the restaurant's not good what well, i'm not gonna go yeah. I'm gonna it's, one it's of two things like right life, now yeah. Either we need to reboot the graphics machine or our graphics operator had too many burgers at dinner. Yeah, I mean, if he's got all beef poisoning food and have it at home, yeah. like, can't make a bad restaurant and get any customers. England's a bit more like, ah. Uh, like, we're in Mayfair, we'll get away with it, it's fine. 
You heard that where you've eaten too many burgers, Joe, and you have to lie on the floor in pain? Oh, yeah, I have had that, actually. Everyone's heard the story many a time. 42. That happens on the regular with you with hot dogs. <laughs> Doesn't it, it's the drinking the water that... <laughs> that really messes up my tum-tum. I have a harder time with the letters. It's... It's reverse alphabetical order, right? No, that doesn't work. I have no idea what you're talking about. Ace, King, A, K, Q, J, T. <laughs> oh, come on. Well, oh. that's boring. <laughs> it's not boring. <laughs> Everyone loves it. <laughs> Okay, guys, same speed. Should I wait slightly? Okay, so same speed. Fast. We're going to give it less of a beat this time. Okay. <laughs> so this is Sa okay. another chop pot. And you know what they say. Everyone, Everyone loves, loves a chop pot. pot. It sounded like Maria said one word. It was just like, there's pot. I kind of feel like we drowned her out, but I'm not necessarily right. saying that's a bad thing. Right. Maybe that was good. <laughs> yeah. Not getting, not getting the same. Wait, Tom said very close, though. I feel like Tom is a very reliable source on this. He is the most reliable non-Colin we have watching. That was a train wreck. No. Hardly. Raisinator. I might have to just pull a Grafton and bow out gracefully. There was nothing graceful about him not participating. I at least give you credit for, for trying. It's not graceful, it's petulant. Yeah. Dan's called the raise from Kanji. Jack Sinclair, when he caught one of his cards, which is the Queen of Hearts. That's a good question. She knows that rule you have to raise the nuts, bet the nuts. Yeah. Does that count if the nuts is on board? Does it have to go all in and call? I don't know. How's that never come up before? It's <laughs> a great question. We will find out the answer, but nobody knows off the top of their head. It hasn't come up in a really long time at all. Whatever Sinclair has here as his second card, it looks like a great spot to squeeze. Well, he decided to show, and it is ace. <laughs> I do that sometimes. I show my good hands when I squeeze, and then hope that there's no way anybody would think that the next time I do it, I don't have anything. <laughs> Maria, our time with you is over. Um, I would like to make it clear, we're not getting rid of you because of that performance of the Chop Pot song. It has absolutely it's nothing to do with it. <laughs> but we could That's be. what you guys say. Yeah, they told you that there's like five more Chop Pots in the pipeline. You guys are like, let's get rid of her. Yeah, quit, yeah. Well, quit while we're yeah. not as badly behind as we could be. Uh, Maria, always a pleasure, never a chore. I guess we will potentially hear from you again tomorrow. Yes. Uh, I just want to say, and the I... reason why I qualified it with a potentially mm -hmm. is tomorrow we play down to 16, and I do think there is a chance that we might hit 16 players before you're out of bed. Well, I hope that whether I get the chance to come on tomorrow or not, that there's going to be some of these really good players left because that will make for a very interesting play down to the final table. Good point. Well made. Very ho, ladies and gentlemen. Round of applause. Thanks, guys. See you. Yep. Bye.
Why does Maria tolerate you? I have no idea. Oh boy. Look at all these Q's and J's. And A's. A lot of letters. Ben Heath just calling out the big blind. So these players going to the flop. Oh, which is Queen Jack 9. Come on. Spicy. Top, top. Second pair, top kicker, and the two pair for Coutinho. All these things blocked. Are you trying to make some comment about blockers? Mm -hmm. And them not being real. Yeah. You don't say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Love the pose. Five ones as well. Five ones as well, yeah. Part Diablo, part T1000. That's right, El Rabido. Power pose. Has the demeanor of a large bird of prey. But looking down at a field mouse. Catino is no mouse, and it's hard to devour your prey when they are way ahead of you. Mm. Four to one favorite. Catino makes the call. King on the turn. The board gets straighter. Yeah. Not great card either for a queen. Why would you just flat on such a board? Why ask what headset? I think that's a valid question. Okay. 53. Vilumia betting again, 53K. And this is only, this is under a third of the pot. This is small. This is small. I think Villamira knows that there is a lot of danger on this board. Again, Coutinho with the just call. <sighs> That king <laughs> on the river counterfeits Coutinho's two pair. The Lumiere <laughs> now has the best hand. Joe's disgusted. No, that, I mean, that river really, really upset me. We've all done it. It's happened to all of us. Like, I'm so me slow to play this for once. Just, for once, just nope. Bad card, bad card. Bad card, terrible card. Is this where all of the results are into chat pros? Yeah. So he should have raised flop, buddy. Yeah. I'm not saying he should have raised flop. I'm saying he could have raised flop. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. Remember, people at home. Or bus terminal, wherever you are right now. These are the two biggest stacks of the table. Do you really want to get in some cooler situation by raising the flop and getting like 160 big blinds in and you're up against King 10 or a set or the hand you're up against and then it comes King King. Oh, wow. Coutinho chooses to raise now? Well... Is this? This is a move. Yes. 
And I guess on this straighty paired board, this could work. I mean, it's not just straights. There's boats out there, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> when he tilts his head like that, I expect him to be like, I'm going to put in a race. <laughs> I call you to the depths of hell. And the best hand gets folded. Wowee. So, chat pros, what do you think of that? Not a mistake. Oh, what? <laughs> Which one? Oh, you. My flop phone. Oh, I see. The key question is, why did he bet so small? You did it to yourself, buddy. Not a, like, oh no, by the end of the hand, it was not a mistake at all. <laughs> I, saw the, oh. I saw the run out, I just mean technically. Oh, I see. <laughs> so it's better, right? Meanwhile, I saw the run out, it would Man down, right. lost out from one of the outer tables. Paul Fontana has just gone in 27th place. Ran out of wishes. Taking us down to 26, and with half the level still to play, I'm going to slowly backtrack <laughs> Say what you want. from my prediction that, that we well. will play the full level and not get down to 24 <laughs> tonight. Oh, yeah. no, 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 no. You're not wiggling your way out of this one. Wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> Coutinho up over a million, up over 100 big blinds. He was already over a million. Yes. Now with 1.2 million, an opening here with Ace Queen. VJ yeah. Winter, I am with you. That the trophy needs some dusting. <laughs> if we are going to shoot it beautifully lit in HD, it desperately, desperately needs a claim. I love this from Dr. Ham. Fonten out. What about Sproggy? <laughs> Who keeps going down there and putting their grubby mitts on it? What do they clean it with? Fish and chips? So it's Coutinho's turn. And Kanji also not raising the two per on the wet board. Yeah. Yeah, it gets wettier. Straight here. Spade draw. Six How about now? 105. Yeah. Nope. You know, a lot of this passive play could be just a result of ICM, right? Like, let's take the let's take the passive lines. Let's get to showdown. 
Let's not risk decent stacks on the precipice of making day four. So Walls asks, is Hacklin still in? No, he is not. Thank you for your question. For the, once the redraw starts at 24, they won't redraw for the next day, right? Well, first yeah, of all, we will not play uh, beyond 24. 20, and no, there will 11, only be one 20 redraw. 24. No, we're talking about the redraw. Yeah, but not tonight. Well, they'll redraw at 24. Right. It's written 24 ends. Oh, oh okay. yeah. Or level 22. Ah, okay. You, you can follow. You can follow yeah, okay. the. Dan Kishu explaining oh, to the high rollers how this all works. It will be in a few seconds on the screen. Yeah, yeah. So, someone told me that tomorrow we just play 16, which will be fun. Yeah. You play like two levels or something. That can't be. Guys, there is a caveat. You're going to play at least three levels tomorrow, regardless of how many plays you get. 24 to 16, then 16 to 9, and then like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> play final I was thinking. I want to play other tournaments. <laughs> 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 Well, oh, I don't want to do that either. Or get your running shoes on. Multi table. They were saying they should, they should schedule an activity for the afternoon for all of us. You know? <laughs> go, uh, oh, paintballing. We do the crystal. We down to 25. <laughs> yeah. Play a couple of levels. Six, final 16, we all go out. Uh, after the <laughs> well, as I predicted <laughs> at the start well, of this left, level, we will get to 24 20, before the end of play tonight. Yeah, okay. The level ends, it's over, it's 24, get to 24, it's over. Yep, as I've been saying all along, <laughs> we are going to hit 24 oh, and end the play yeah. at the final three tables. <laughs> and that is our 26th place finisher, Ramsey Karam. Cashing for nineteen thousand six hundred pounds. So, as Dan pointed out to the rest of the table, if we do lose another player tonight, that'll do it for day three. Tell him, Dan. There is. B. Heath, King Jack. And Coutinho is going to defend. Six two suited. Two very healthy stacks. One club on this flop, pair of jacks for Heath. So earlier on, Joe, we were talking about the prospects I have of 12, a yeah. two-time champion. I'll I think Adrian Mateos was the last former EPT champion. He went some time you. ago. You mentioned if Mark you Jacobson, a two-time like runner-up. He's now like gone. I, I will never have Mark Tutor's still no, in the field. No, uh, He's a two-time <laughs> runner-up. Run. Yes. I mean, it's right. like cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Let me hope. <laughs> I've kind of rooted against him because I'm afraid With to say his last position. name when I congratulate him. It's not a superstition. It's not a <laughs> twisted logic. Here in the trophy, you know. 
toot sore toot I don't, you know, it's a mess. How about, and here's your champion. I've done that before. I did that recently. Race. <laughs> when I was hosting in Vegas this summer at the Brad Garrett Club, on like Wednesday, I was just really, really off my game. And when I went to introduce the headliner, I couldn't remember his name, even though I could, I'd been hanging out with him and talking to him, introduced him all week. And so what I did was, I was like, let's give it up for your headliner. Hey, come on, guys. I said, let's give it up. For, and I miraculously oh, came to me. <laughs> wow. When I asked for the second round of applause. By the way, his name's Greg Warren. And he's hilarious. He's about to record you, a special you. that Nate Bargatze <laughs> is directing for him. Similar so story. They're just Made making a us play like yeah. nine days, and she didn't style it out <laughs> yeah. the same way I did. Though. No, I was, I was a bit annoyed. I honestly about that. don't know what I would have done. Five times per day is not yeah. her much. shoes either. Now they're just <laughs> coming for two levels. Five Use your five time banks. <laughs> go over now. There, but for the grace of God, go I. I mean, I imagine I'll just try and play final table tomorrow. Just trying to work out if enough time has passed for me to tell that story without actually revealing the names of the individuals. I'll save it for the podcast. We'll do it as a Sandy story. Okay. Eve has opened with a 7 6 of clubs. Jackson Clay in the big blind with Queen 8 of spades. And it is a 10 4 deuce flop. Queen high still the best hand. from Heath is going to win him this part. Which Heath do you prefer, Ben or Hampstead? It's a race. <laughs> I got to go with Ben, but I do like Hampstead Heath. I just keep thinking about the Faithless song. Well, what is that? I mean, I know you can't sing it, but... Insomnia, the one about making mad love on the heath tearing off tights with my teeth that oh one. i like it but i don't know that i recognize it hampstead heath's like a big grassy knoll right yes okay i've been there it's cool Race. nice view it feels like you're out of london for a minute <laughs> hearing james sing that has been the highlight of the stream I cannot get any sleep. Nick Walsh is telling me I do know the song, so luckily James is probably singing it so badly we can't get sued. If I can't recognize it. I will defend my big blind. Nines for Kishu. Not much for Diablo Mier. Keith with the gut shot. Two overs to the nine, although the ten isn't very good. Four. 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 
Yeah, lovely some three-way action, although we have now gone heads up to the turn. Villamir would definitely like to play in uh, some of the P Pagan events. I'm not sure Pagan events is still a thing. No, they're gone. It's all the lamb's blood. It's out. You got people like Ben Heath with their animal equality. Won't even let you sacrifice a goat anymore in an Omaha tournament. What? Ben trying to muscle Kishu out of this pot. He's got 16 big blinds. Second pair has the best of it. Ten. Has some time. No, I don't see time bank cards. He Four. calls. Not going to have a pot size bet left behind on this river. <laughs> The best hand right now still has the best hand. Has the best hand, and obviously, that jack is not really the best for Heath. Dan is going to be less likely to fold this nine now. He does check. She, Kishu's going to get the free showdown. Yep. Check it back, Dan. And, and does indeed. Huge. Winning big pots from Ben Heath. I cannot get any sleep. Okay, I'm, it's starting. All right, I'm starting to ring a bell. Kishu up to 35 bigs now. Has not shied away. From any of these big timers. Well, I mentioned Martin Suso. Here he is in action against Nils Pudel. Suso bet 325,000 on the river. Pudel has raised to 785k. The board is ace, 10, 6, 4, 3. With three clubs. It is straighty, it is flushy. And Susor's just played a time bank card. And Mark Folds. Mm. He's going to have around 500k left. Now, Nils Pudel has been amongst the chip leaders all day. He might be the biggest stack right now. We put him on about 1.75, 1.8 million. Makes sense that a guy's name that I haven't heard even one time. He's been in the top five all day. No, nah, I think you're Mandela affecting this. Two, five, four, okay. Do you think that if your name is Martin, you're destined to be a two-time runner-up on the EPT? There's been at least one Martin who's won an EPT, right, Schleich? Oh, yeah, old Schleichy. My root toot baby is... Oh, sorry, I thought it was in steps now. Hold. 
Oh, yeah. Finger. Martin Finger. He right, won't okay. APT. No, Michael Martin does not count. There's check check in the river there. Sinclair's going to pick that one up. A little bit of a little bit of slap fighting going on right now. Just people taking little pokes. No, no major chip movements. Twenty-three minutes left on the clock. We are at twenty-five players. We will play to the end of this level, or we will stop before that if we get to the final twenty-four. Oh my God! I forgot about Martin Finger or Stakes's finger. <laughs> we just brought that up. Zampa. Oh man, classic game back from when we didn't show the hold cards. We had to fill the time doing something. I mean, you could definitely recycle some of that material on the podcast. That was about 10 years ago. I mean, the game wasn't very good. That's the problem. Martin <laughs> Oh Lord. All right, Battle of the Suited Connectors. So far. Still got the blinds to get through. This is interesting. This is interesting. Jack Flatting from the cutoff of 5-4 suited. With lots of action still behind. <laughs> Got them. Really wants to play a pot against Kishu, I guess. It's the name of the charity. Yeah, I mentioned, but I mean, it is equal rights in comparison to humans, or...? or... Uh, mo most of their work is uh, reducing suffering. Yeah. In, like, the... I mean, it's a lot of this, like, uh, Industries that have oh, yeah, suffering in numbers, nonchalant, sea so bad, in like billions and have zero Kishu. welfare standards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From us. Gets two folds. Give probably like the highest return on dollar for improving welfare standards. Um, so, you know, it's not like there. Obviously, quality with humans would be a that's too uh, much, an unreasonable yeah. aim to have in this current time. <laughs> but they, they are like lobbying in Brussels and Washington? Or? Uh, I, w I mean, I speak mostly with their UK office. They have eight offices okay. in eight different countries. Okay. So, uh, yeah, there's like quite a lot of international stuff when the offices work together. Um, nice. I don't know if this has been obvious the entire time, but someone in chat, thank you for saying it. Chipopotamus. Nice. I don't know how I missed that one. Grace, you're losing it. <laughs> I don't think I could do this job for, I don't know, 10, 20 more years. Cut two. I mean, I could only do it for 10 or 20 more years, is what I meant to say. Yeah, I think maybe those things get too separated sometimes, because, like, everyone who works for the charity is vegan. Okay. But a lot of their work is, like, kind of, I feel like it should be agreeable whether you're vegan or not. Mm -hmm. You can not be vegan and still agree that some of the ways that we make our food is not okay. They're, they're, they're like there's an in-between, you know? And some people are like, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not that, so I some don't people are maximalist, that. yeah. But like, there's a very big in the middle. Uh, in France, it's the same with the ecologist party. They are always uh, fighting between each other. And yeah. It's ridiculous, but yeah. Race. 
Mr. Heath. Raise with Queen Jack. Jessica Pilkington having her from her in a while. She's creeping down. Yeah, she's got that double up, but now is back in the danger zone with 11 bags. Danger zone. <laughs> You get the read. You get the, okay. <laughs> Who's against who? No, he's asking me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Uh, okay. Well, definitely not playing this hand. <laughs> <laughs> no shuffle machine, right? Yeah, just switch the deck. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a prepared one. <laughs> Without the black deck, like. <laughs> Like skull and crossbones on the back of it. <laughs> We're just numbers to him, anyways. Huh? We are just yeah, numbers exactly. to him, anyways. <laughs> right. Kanji's got the spraggy, ace seven offsuit. Raises from the cutoff. Jessica Pilkington with ace three the on the button. <laughs> I hope in the commentary they are. Yeah. <laughs> they just call us the C1. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> not going to get a three way all in anyway. It's going to be tough. Okay, you're fired now. <laughs> yeah. 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 Quite a few raise and takers ah, now. Those small ones, those are definitely yeah. <laughs> no, no problem, no problem. Joe McCaff asks. Are they having a break Thursday? I know it always seems like this, right? Like we're at 25 players. It can't possibly take to Friday to get to the end of this thing. But it does. It, it, it just does. I mean, they're playing ridiculously deep right now, by the way. We've got a 75 big blind average stack. In theory, it could take a fair few levels to get to 16 tomorrow. But realistically, I think it takes eight total levels from here to get to six. Four levels tomorrow, four levels on Thursday. Those are reasonably decent days. Okay, shorter days than we saw in Barcelona, but... Yeah. El Rabido, you're banned. Thank you for your channel points. Do you get a share of those? No. That's a good place. <laughs> yeah. no, I mean, that's use, I come mind you. It's getting better. Yeah, it's getting better. It's yeah. In like one orbit, you can play. In three, four walk. hours, I can get to <laughs> nine, eight, nine. Yeah. Nobody Maybe gets walks anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you just like, tomorrow. <laughs> So, so if we end at level 20 and it's still 25, do we redraw for tomorrow? No. And then they won't do it. No. no. It's written there. No, I, no, I know. I know. But how, yeah, it's a little it's right. a how, how would they do the timing? So that you we'll come back here to the same table. No, I know. It's just usually at the end of the day, they wait. They stop the clock with 10 minutes and draw random hands so that you can't stall. What was we'll the in four minutes? Oh, yeah, for the redraw. He sure was an expert like four redraw. minutes ago. Oh, no, he doesn't know how to do tomorrow. the end of the night. <laughs> 25. At the end of the day, they'll do a redraw. So we have the same table towards 25. Ben Heath asked a question. Do you effectively get two redraws? If they finish at 25, do you get an overnight redraw? Knowing that they are then going to redraw at 24. It seems like the kind of thing that they would just do one, right? And just let it rip at 25. Yeah. Yeah, but we're only on level one. 
20. Yeah. We're on the right level. So this was number 18 there for running. Yeah, for running like two more. No, not two more levels. <laughs> I, actually, I wouldn't mind two more levels. It ev My brain is somewhere else. Stream asks, <laughs> what is a redraw? I don't That's when they mix up all the players where they're sitting. For probably another level. I, can get. I tell you what, it is the law of sod now that we're going to come back we'll with 25 on. tomorrow and after one yeah. hand, we're going to get down to 24 and have to take a 10 minute break for a redraw. Yeah. <laughs> because as I've been saying all along, I do think we will get to the end of this level. <laughs> going to murder you. James, am I taller than Rishi Sunak? I don't know. How tall is he? Mm. Sorry, Wilda Joe. I don't know. I am. I am taller than Rishi Sunak. Or Rishi Sunak, as he was called by your president earlier on. Sorry, Sanuk, that's right. Rishi Sanuk. Yeah, our president's got a little bit of a thing going on. <laughs> I guess I just have to run for president is, is all, the only solution I can think of. Is it, is it supposed to be me? Am I supposed to do it? Do you have billions of dollars? Uh, hold on, I'm just doing a quick carry the one. No. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Ain't gonna happen. James, I have 49,000 Twitter followers. <laughs> I'm just gonna let them. Yeah, we're gonna uh, tell you. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. I'll just get it out on the socials. Makes the hero <laughs> call with a pair of fives. No good. That thin value bet from Coutinho gets paid off. Nice. Way, a redraw, okay? 25 yeah. left in a day. We redraw. We come back five tables. Clock stop. The next person to bust, they just break a table like this. I guess we're going to draw for the last num the last the few hands. The hands yeah. yeah. Oh, shoot. Well, they not just That's what I was asking. Whether, but it could just stay the same table and then redraw. Uh, yeah. Before. Yeah, but then, then there's no need to do this, right? That's what I was saying, whether they yeah, were going to do they, this or not. They, well, I spoke to Raw Man who said if, if there's 27 left at the end of the day or something, yeah. we redraw or something. And, and then they, they just... Do it. Uh, okay. We do it at 16 anyway. Yeah, so. it's just because the, <laughs> the screen says redraw at 24, so that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But misleading. How many redraws can so, one tournament what, have? Answers on a postcard that don't actually send in postcards. Yeah, that's just like today's screen. If that doesn't happen yeah. today... Then Out of table action. Mm -mm. Roman Harabek versus Julian Sitbon. We join the action on the river. It's a straighty board. Queen 7653. Three diamonds out there and a bet from Harabek of 125,000. Impressive face. Makes the call. And is not good. Unless this is a, a slow roll. Not good. So, <laughs> 10 9 of diamonds. The Grafton for the flush. Harabek wins the pop. <laughs> well, can't be too three anyway, hands, so ladies and gentlemen. Three, three hands to be played at every table. <laughs> Unless, of course, we do lose a player. So this is the pre-penultimate hand. Hand number one, pre-penultimate. It's like when under the gun is the button. So, fortunately, I have a hotline. It's actually a hotline bling. Of WhatsApp chat with Toby Stone, the oh, tournament director. The Stone Bubble. He confirms the redraw takes place overnight. And that's it. 
and then again at 16. Oh, no yeah, right. Right, right. That's that's 24. I mean. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean that's it for the whole term. I just meant no 24. I got one right, finally. No, no. They would have which makes me doubt it being the right decision, honestly, if I came up with it. it. I don't know. It might not work. And again, I will remind you that whilst it is the objective tomorrow to get down to 16, if that happens super quickly, we will keep going. This is an abnormally high average stack right now. We do need to play through the levels. Otherwise, we're going to get boop boop on the final day. Right? No. Two pretty trashy hands. Eight six suited with a little playability. Somehow do not connect with the king ten four rainbow. No clubs. Do you think it's harder to hit the card in between? Your one gappers. Mm -hmm. It's probably the same, right? Mathematically. I like to think of it as splitting the uprights. Right down the pipe. So with 25 players, and again, this is assuming we don't lose anyone on one of the last two hands of the day. Read through it straight. If we come back with 25, we will still be at four tables. Mm -hmm. And then very simply, when we lose a player in 25th place, the fourth table will break, and then we'll have three tables and of eight. It's, it's kind of like a redraw, yeah. right? Dispersing those players. It'll mix things up a little bit. One big line. Keep that one big line. I know. Three yeah. straight's hard to find line versus one. Jessica running out of time tonight to pick up a hand. I love everyone watching on YouTube and Twitch. He's trying to rewrite the structure of this tournament and have them play more levels tonight and or more levels tomorrow to get this finished earlier. I would say that Toby Stone will take it under advisement. Do you think I'm harsh? Imagine what Toby would say to some of this. Toby is terrifying. Another blind on blind. Really seems like, I mean, look, there haven't been many big hands dealt. Everyone just kind of treading water a little bit till we get to the next day is what it feels like. Could see a little bit of action here with the open ender and ace high versus the pair of tens. Is that straight? No. It's a flush draw for Heath to oh. go with the pair of tens. I knew it was something. Couldn't put my finger on it. Wow, it's Corey calling for a Toby versus Joe charity boxing match. No. Hard no. Absolutely not. Fast forward to episode 267 of the Poker in the Ears podcast. Hello, my babies. It's James here. <laughs> Joe's dead. <laughs> Toby's a runner, okay? And boxing is all about the cardio. Also, he's much stronger than me. <laughs> Faster. And he's, yeah, he's, he's from the north. So he's pretty tough. <laughs> With trip tens, Ben Heath makes it 24,000. And the ace high Kier hero call from Kanji. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> the falling superhero. Kanji. Early Mister says, what's the matter, Joe? Chicken? It's yes. Very hard Thank you for your question. <laughs> I agree with Wild Joe. If he dies... He dies. <laughs> Hilarious. 
Hilarious, everybody. <laughs> his jawbone's been driven through his brain. So funny. The thing is, I could die from this boxing match without ever taking a punch. You think my steady diet of Big Macs washed down with chocolate milkshakes makes me a... I mean, I'm, I'm more likely to be on the heart donor list than to ever set foot in a boxing ring. Finally. So last hand of the day to be played at the feature table. Obviously, we'll keep tabs on what's happening at the three There's, outer tables. There was no shot Ben Heath was not going to make this last hand his hand. Oh, especially not on the button. However, oh, Kanji folds the deuces. Huh. And oh. a seven, the Spraggy for Pilkington. Jessica, more like Jessica. <laughs> Nice try, Ben Heath. Is he going to give her another double up? That's the question. I want another. Oh, good luck. Two. <laughs> Pretty uh, unlucky for Ben that he will not have live cards if he does make this call. But he ain't. I found an ace. <laughs> <laughs> That's genuine. I don't think I needed to look at the other one to be <laughs> I did, but I didn't need to. Is anybody buying the hundred? Uh, queen high? Who's oh. buying a round? That's what I want to know. The play has concluded on the main stage. Oh, so there you go. Already been Thanks for 25k. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I'm sad I had exactly my starting stack for that hand. What, from the beginning of the day? Yeah. Oh, wow. Now I have 25. Now it's a bad day. <laughs> Before it was fine. <laughs> I, I, Sorry. <laughs> so these guys are going to bag and tag, but there are still hands in progress. There is still play out in the field. And in fact, guys, we need to get to one of the tables out in the field where it's Eric Seidel against Julien Sitbon. Mm. And we're joining the action on the turn. Sitbon has bet 130k. The board is ace, nine, six, deuce with two hearts. Eric calling the bet. River card, king of diamonds, so no flush possible. Ace, king, six, nine, deuce, the board. Hmm. Action is on Sitbon. Sitbon shoves on Eric. It's all in to call for Seidel. He makes the call. Eric has a set of sixes. Sitbon had a set of deuces. Set oh. over set sickness. That is gross. Eric Seidel doubles up through Julien Sitbon. Sometimes you mind the set and sometimes the set minds you. Eric Seidel gets a full double up on the last hand of the night. And looks like we are going to be coming back tomorrow with 25 players. I called it. <laughs> Never deviated from that prediction ever. Oh, Lord. And as we established, the redraw will take place overnight. We'll break a table when we get down to 24. There will be a redraw at 16. 
question is whether we will play to 16 tomorrow or whether we'll have to play a little bit more depending on the pace Please, of sorry. play. But the objective remains to get down to two tables tomorrow. Day four of the main event. And congratulations to all these players who can't get to come back for day four. Congratulations. I think it's messed up they make them write a letter to their parents in case they don't make it, though. A lot of chips need to go in that bag. <laughs> Time bank cards going. Yeah, bag of time bank cards as well. Everything goes in the bag. Oh, five extra. Seven now. iPads and computers out. Take off your belt, please. Shoes in the box. <laughs> and don't lie about your chip counts. We'll know. <laughs> That's not. How it, it was. Turns out we're coming back tomorrow at 24. <laughs> so once he is given a new bag, Alexandra Valemia will come back with 1.66 million. Coutinho also playing a seven-figure stack. Jessica Pilkington will be in the danger zone. Danger zone! She'll have just 10 bigs at the new blind level, which is 10k, 15k, with a 15k big blind ante. So that's how it finished at our feature table. But let's have a look at the tournament top 10. It is Roman Harabak who's going to be the chip leader coming into day four with 1.9 million. Most of the top 10 have more than a million chips. Vito Enzo just shy of a million with 990,000. A reminder, 25 players returning. Got Nils Budel, David Doherty also in the top 10 right now. So day three is in the books. A roundup of the action features from EPT London, available to read on the Poker Stars blog. And of course, we will have day four coverage right here on Poker Stars TV, streaming live on Twitch and YouTube. Tomorrow at the same time, that is 12.30 local. That is 1.30 Central European time. Thank you for watching today. We will see you tomorrow. For now, from Griffin Benger, Nick Walsh, Sam Grafton, Maria Ho, Joe Stapleton, and me, James Hartigan, it is good night from London. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah.